post this online. If you're just watching now, I apologize. Let's get a couple minutes. Welcome back to another episode of Stop Making Excuses, Build Your Prototype in a Day, Make Some Money, and Do Whatever You Want in Life. I'm your host, Ryan Kolb. It's kind of amazing how many things in life for which we need a script or at least some notes to get going if we're presenting or having a meeting. But in this case, I've written no notes. You're gonna see my whole setup. You're gonna see what I see. We're gonna screen share. You've already seen my room. And uh, we're just gonna go for it because this is something I was born to do is help encourage people that, uh, to know that they can uh, test their ideas without as much skill as they think they need. Uh, because I certainly don't have very much and I've tested a lot, a lot of things. So what we're gonna do is walk through an entire app build from start to finish. And I'm gonna show you my four-step process. It's the same process I've used on past live streams if you wanna check those out. It's very simple. First, we're going to make a wireframe mock of what we're building. So really just drawing squares and rectangles so that we get an idea of how many screens we need and how complicated they're gonna be. This is like the UI and basically the UX of our project. Next, we're going to examine those wireframes and look for nouns and verbs. Nouns are going to become database tables, verbs are going to become methods, behaviors, and then things related to those nouns are going to become attributes. And this will all make sense very shortly. The second part of our process is we're going to take those nouns and verbs and turn them into the database. So this is like our database modeling step. And uh, those are gonna be done through something called database migrations. It's really not that complicated. Basically making a database, making tables, connecting those tables is very similar to making a spreadsheet where you have an ID column and then you do V lookups and H lookups and you connect this sheet to that sheet by some shared parameter. The third step is we're going to build the front end. So that's just taking our wireframes and making them high fidelity, high fidelity, high quality, and we're going to put them into HTML and CSS code. We're gonna do that using Tailwind CSS, which is a free open source um, design style guide system. It's a utility CSS design system. There's a lot of names for it. But basically Tailwind is going to make our inputs and our buttons and everything look really nice without us needing any type of design skills. And lastly, step four, we're going to connect the front end to the back end so that when you click buttons, when you hover the page, when you, uh, you know, interact with the form, the verbs 
are the same as we anticipated in step one, the wireframes, those nouns and verbs. So that's the whole process. Let's jump in. Uh, and by the way, if you like that song, it's called Homeroom and it's by a guy named Ryan Culp. So search Ryan Culp Homeroom if you like that jazz song at the beginning of the video. <clears throat> what are we building? This is always really important. I've got a bunch of live streams and the ones that I guess are the most cool apps is, uh, are the ones that get the most viewers. Go figure. So I wanna pump you guys up about this app that we're gonna be building today. We are going to be building a uh, package insert microsite. What is a package insert? It's stuff like this. When you order something on Amazon or maybe from a Shopify store and you get some sort of insert, it could be square, rectangle, it might have a coupon code, save 10%. It might have some clever copywriting. It could be uh, an upsell, you know, hey, go buy our accessories. Here's one for like a coffee, free coffee that I got the other day at an event. These are inserts. Here's another one. And actually some of these I got in a swag bag um, at a founder event a couple weeks ago. Uh, naked wine. This one's kind of cool. It's really simple, though. It just says, you know, here's about our brand and it's addressed to us. Here's $100 off. So sort of like these are coupons or advertisements, but I'm specifically calling them inserts because we're, we're interested in the things that come in packages when you already bought the product, but maybe you bought it on Amazon and now they want to continue doing business with you. And lastly, I'll show you these. Here's more from that same Naked Wines brand. This is a huge piece of paper, I know. That's because they're supposed to be like this, right? They're supposed to be torn out, if I can get one. And this can kind of go over the bottle of wine, right? So this is a cool example of a package insert. And uh, on the other side, it has a gift code. Package inserts. Why am I interested in package inserts? Well, there's a self-promotional reason why, but we can skip that and say, look, package inserts are something that a lot of e-commerce brands are adopting, especially when they sell on marketplaces like Amazon. They are adopting them because they want to um, uh, build relationships with customers after they buy their products. So our big idea, what we're building today, is a microsite where people can search for package um, insert inspiration, right? So I sell wine and I might Google wine brand package inserts. I want them to land on our site. We're going to have uploaded and searchable examples of different package inserts so that they can get ideas for how to make inserts at their brand. I'm gonna check the chats. What's up, Stetson? Someone says, can't, s no sound in the right speaker. Um, does anyone else only have sound on one side? Hey, Anuseo. Yeah, I have a little bit of a Korean <laughs> audience because I spent the last few years in Korea. So hello, you can, you can chat in English or Korean. All right, uh, that's our idea. And now we're gonna jump into part one, which is the wireframing. Now typically, when I get to the wireframe step, and let me switch so you can see my screen. When I get to the wireframe step, I typically use a program called Balsamic. This is Balsamic, there's a web version and there's a, uh, a desktop version. I've been using it for years and years. You can pay like one time and you own it forever. You don't have to pay a SaaS fee, which is nice. And Balsamic has basically a bunch of little icons and widgets so that you can quickly create what looks like a web page. So I can have a web browser, I can grab rectangles and make what look like images, I can add headlines, let's go there, add a title, you know, some awesome hero. I could do all this kind of stuff, right? And uh, Balsamic just makes it really quick to visualize what your website or app might look like and it saves you time because if you go directly into coding, you might write a lot of code and then you hate how it looks. This lets you just drag and drop stuff and once you love it, then you convert to code. So making wireframes is a technique of 
measure twice, cut once. That's essentially what you get to achieve here. With us, I've already gone ahead and made some sort of wireframe, other side, and it looks like this. It's really trash. Let me go back to my camera only. It's really simple. Uh, all you'll see are some boxes. And the reason for that is because for this project, I wanted to work with a designer. So in this project, I hired a designer and I said, here's the concept. We're gonna have a page with a bunch of package inserts, maybe three columns, four columns. We want people to view them. We want people to contribute. They could upload their own insert because we want user generated content. And I need an admin panel so that I can accept and reject contributions. If someone uploads, you know, a dick pic, obviously we don't want that automatically to be accepted. So we need a filtering mechanism, which is just a few screens. We need the home page. We need a page to view all, like a search page. We need a page to look at just one package insert. So let's say I click on a specific wine insert, it blows up and we see more information. And I need a contribution page, a page where someone says, upload my insert. Those are the four screens we need. And then because we don't want dick pics, we're gonna have the admin panel. So five screens total. So I wanna show you this. It really means nothing, but I'm doing that for a reason. I'm showing you this because this is how little, this is how little information you can give to a designer if you have a 20 minute conversation with them and they will create what you need. Um, in tech and project management, it's all about managing expectations with specifications, with clearly articulated specifications. If I was working with this designer remotely, I would have had to do more than that, but I was working with this designer in person. So we spent 20 minutes, we drew five boxes, I explained everything I just explained to you, what package inserts are, why they're useful, and why I want to make a site for them. And this site, my goal, is to rank on Google, right? So that's why I'm calling this a microsite. If 30, 50, 100 people per day land on this site, um, I think I can convert them to one of our other projects that makes money. But this is going to be a free content microsite. So that's what I sent to the designer. Let's check out what the designer uh, gave back to us because it's pretty sweet. I'm gonna open up Trello and then show you my screen again. No sound on the right, yes. Let me double check on my microphone and see if I can make the sound better. Hmm. Testing, testing. Feel free to give comments if uh, the sound isn't getting any better. Oh, great. Hmm. I'll check on the sound a little more. Input. Testing, testing. I don't have a way to make this more mono on my interface. Sorry guys, I did a recording before the live stream and it was uh, coming through both speakers on my end. That might be how it is on the YouTube recorded playback and just not the live. Uh, let's see, I'll try one more thing. Testing, testing. How about now? Is left and right a little bit better? Yeah, I'm seeing left and right. I'm right in the middle. I'm looking at the mixer now. Let's just switch it to mono. All right, how about this? Do we have sound on both sides? Let's settle this once and for all. Testing, testing. Is my sound on the left and right?
Oh, it sounds better now. Okay, wonderful. All right, I figured that out. Thank you guys. Wonderful, wonderful. 오늘 라이브 왜 했어요? 아, Ginger Boy. 오늘 라이브는 왜 나면 뭐좀 일석이조야. 아, 이런 프로젝트 아 해야 돼서 라이브 하면, you know, I get two benefits. 혜택 두 가지 입을 거예요. <laughs> okay, wonderful. We're left and right. We're left and right. So, as I was saying, I gave these very simple uh, requirements to the designer. Uh, why we want this, what it's used for, and a few boxes. Let's check out what this designer um, gave back to us. Because I am not going to, I haven't cheated. Uh, I've seen these designs, but I haven't uh, touched the code. I haven't done anything. I want everything to be live um, on our uh, on our stream, so let's switch back and see what we got. Here's going to be our home page. I'll put this stuff in the middle. Here's our home page. We're calling this tool Insert Booth, and uh, as you can see, uh, it's a website to go look at package inserts. We've come up with different types of inserts. There are requests for reviews, giving people discounts, giving something away for free, and just talking about your brand. So if you look here, um, I can switch back. This is an example of a discount. This is an example talking about our brand. Um, this is an example giving something for free. It's just a $50 gift code. And uh, some of these, if I can find them, are going to say, hey, can you please leave us a review? We really appreciate it. So that is what the home page is going to look like. Let's go to our second page. Remember, we have four main views and then an admin panel. Here is our view for just looking at one, which is pretty nice. You can see that the way we've hacked it here is instead of making a brand new page, it's just a modal. So it's kind of a cheat code. If you're trying to write as little code as possible, it's just a modal. Now, this may not be great for ranking on Google, however, because this isn't going to be a page change. So smart sunglasses insert, uh, package insert. But we can look into that later. Third tab, third page out of our four views is going to be uploading your own package insert. We really hope this works out, right? Because I can't order everything on Amazon. <laughs> when I order stuff once a week, maybe I get an insert, I can upload it. But eventually we want this site to have hundreds of pieces of content, which means we really have to encourage people to contribute. So we've got this big contribute call to action and this nice page, uh, and hopefully they'll be able to click and take a picture from their phone uh, and not just upload from their device. So we'll have to figure that out. And then here they're choosing what type of insert is this, and they can give us their email. Maybe if they give us their email, we will um, uh, let them know what their listing went live. And lastly, we have an admin panel. Admin panel will allow us to uh, mark uploaded inserts as, as um, you know, approved. Maybe we can change them. Maybe there's like a typo um, in the description or the brand name or the URL. So we can adjust that all here. Any of these things that they provided, you know, could be wrong and we might want to adjust them in our admin panel. So those are our screens. We've also done some keyword research and um, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So we can look back at these now. We're almost ready for step two, database modeling, right? I wanted to skip ahead some of the CSS, HTML on this live stream. And again, I have a commercial goal for this. So I didn't want to use my own poor design chops. I've built a lot of things and you can see them, they look okay, but I wanted this to look a little bit better or a lot better. So we worked with the designer. But let's pretend that we just made these. Let's pretend that we made these using balsamic. The next step I mention is we're going to look for nouns and verbs. So let's do that. Let me grab these all out. We're going to look for nouns and verbs. Put these all in one spot. And we're looking for nouns and verbs because, as I mentioned, those become the database tables and attributes and the functions. So just looking at pretty pictures, we're actually doing the pseudocode for our entire app, which is pretty neat. 
So let's put these in order. Start with our home page. All right. Our home page nouns. Nouns. Well, package inserts, those are nouns. Here's a noun, package insert. Here's one. And if we look at it, it has a few different attributes. It has maybe an industry attribute, which we can see here in search. It has a title, smart sunglasses, and it has like a type of insert. So review request or discount or whatever. So that's one noun, package insert, three attributes, title, industry, and the type. Um, that's pretty good. Down here we have an email newsletter. Cool. All of this can go directly to our newsletter. We don't have to store these emails in our database if we don't want to. We can send these directly to MailChimp or wherever. So we got one noun, package insert, three attributes. Let's go to our next tab. Let's look at an individual one. Here we have that same noun, package insert, but we have the title, which we already looked at, the type, which we already looked at, industry we already looked at, but also brand. And if I hover here, it looks like this will maybe link to the Ray-Ban website, this icon. So now we actually have five things. So now we're gonna start recording, um, recording these ideas down in our text editor. I personally use Atom, but it's becoming deprecated by GitHub. Uh, any text editor is fun. Uh, we've got our nouns, we've got package, package inserts. I'll put this in the middle as well. I'm not sure why some people can't see my full screen. Uh, if you guys want to chat on that, what can you see or not see? So I can also tune in, tune the stream parameters as well. And I'll check the chat in a second. All right, so we've got package inserts noun. They have a title, such as smart sunglasses. We're going to give examples here. They have a type like discount or free product or brand, you know, story or review request. They have an industry, so things like electronics or maybe, you know, food and beverage. We have to figure out what those industries are going to be. And now we also see that they have a brand name, so like Rayban. And then it looks like they also have a website, so maybe Rayban.com. That seems to be our noun. And then what we're also missing, the big one, is images. So when we looked at the home page, they had one image. So we could say they have an image or an image URL. But now we see that uh, there are multiple images. So we're just going to say there are images, uh, you know, one plus. Maybe we have a maximum of four. Maybe we have a minimum of three. I, I'm not sure. Minimum of two. Maybe they have to have a front and a back. Uh, but we know there's images. Let's keep looking for more nouns. If I go to the admin panel, let's actually do that last. The next tab is going to be contributing, uploading. This is pretty much matching what we just wrote, right? So images, title, brand, website, industry, type. Now this industry should probably also be a drop down or checkbox. We don't want everyone to type in their own version of an industry because if you go back to our homepage, we want to sort by industry. So we're going to determine 10 or 15 industries, right? Um, so I think we did that well, and then they can give us their email. Okay, so here we have an opportunity or a decision to make. This email, should it be related to this? Like maybe submitter email, it could be an attribute, or it could be an entirely new table like users, and uh, they have an email, and then users have many package inserts. I think this could be neat later, but for now, uh, let's keep this app as simple as possible. Um, not because this is a live stream, but because this is an MVP. This is version one. So whether I'm doing this live or not, I want the version one to be very simple and we'll learn as we go. So we'll do submitter email. I could just do email, but it's not really clear what that means. So we'll do submitter email. That's another attribute. Lastly, we go here, and uh, we're still just looking at package inserts, but you can see that we have statuses of our package inserts. Uh, here's our timestamp. So of course, we'll have timestamps. We can just write the word timestamps, created at, updated at. When you use a database tool, we're going to use Postgres. We're going to use Rails. Um, they're automatically going to give you timestamps when you run your migrations, when you set up your database. So it's not super important um, to actually write down that you want timestamps, but I'm just doing it so we can see everything going into this. We have the submitter's email. 
this is an avatar, but I don't think we're not letting people upload their own avatar. So we're going to probably use something like Gravatar here where it just uses their email and if they have uh, a publicly available avatar, we'll use that. Here's the type, here's the industry. Status, all right, status, pinning, approved, rejected, right? That's something we need to know. So let's do status and that could be like pinning, approved, or rejected. Pending, I guess, is the state when they are submitted. The person hit go and we haven't looked at it yet. Approved is we say it's good, rejected, we say it's bad. And then of course in this admin panel, we want an edit button so that we could potentially fix any typos that they might've given us here. But an edit button is a verb, right? That's a behavior we want to edit. So we want to create um, package inserts, verbs. We want to create them, which is like submitting, edit them, and that's it, right? Because when we edit, we can you know fix typos, we can change the status. We don't actually seem to need a delete button. That could be nice. Maybe someone uploads total trash and we get spammed and we need a delete button. Um, but right now it seems like we don't need a delete button, right? And then of course we want to list them, we want to view them, which is what we're doing on this page. So view them, create them, which is like submitting and editing them. And that is kind of our whole, our whole database. I don't think we need any other database tables. So this is going to be this is going to be a really easy step to database modeling. Let me check the um, live chat and then we'll keep moving forward. <clears throat> oh, wonderful! Seriously. So you're not seeing my screen share? Wow. <laughs> this might be my most, my most glitchy live stream of all time. Screen share isn't on. Wonderful. Sorry, dudes. <laughs> my, uh, I set up a stream deck and it looks like the streaming tool has to be open for the hotkey to switch it. All right, let me go back through a little bit Here's our pages. Did we see this already? Here's our home page. Seeing all our package inserts. Here's viewing one package insert. Here is uploading a package insert. And here is um, managing the package inserts as an admin. So just four screens. And over here, I've set up the database table. We have our noun here. We have our attributes. When were they created? Title, type, industry, brand, website. They need images. The submitter is gonna have an email. We won't have a user's table. We'll just attach the email from this tab. And then we're gonna have a status. And for verbs, which are gonna be the functionality, uh, we wanna view them and create them and edit them. Sorry guys, I thought uh, you saw my screen that whole time. Okay, all good? Only see one fourth of the screen. This is just like the worst thing ever. Okay, let me adjust, uh, let me adjust some more screen settings. I need to cancel this stream. This is useless. <laughs> um, I am using a wide screen. I can't not use a wide screen. Um, I only have one screen, so it's not like I'm trying to use two. Hmm. Don't cancel. Yeah, I don't know. This is, I've done many wide screens with no problem. Um, let's see. 
but I haven't done one on this this device yet. We can do window capture, but you're not going to uh, you're only going to see one thing. Crop the red element around your screen by drag and dropping it. From OBS, Alex. Yeah, no, no. So in OBS, my red, I'm, I'm fully on here. That's the thing. Here we go. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna try to crop. I would have thought the first thing you guys would say is that you couldn't see my screen. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, how about now? Maybe this is good. How about now? Better? Kind of tiny, now make it bigger. If I make it bigger, it's gonna blow up. Uh, I can't, uh, doesn't look like I can manually adjust. It's gonna scale it all equally. I could, kind of try to just use the middle of my screen. Crop the left and right. Yeah, if I crop the left and right, it, it makes the whole thing smaller. Unless you guys know how to, unless that's possible to change. Fit to screen. That's, that's fit to screen. Stretch to screen. This is stretched, so this looks kind of whack, right? <laughs> Move windows to the left and slightly zoom. All right, how about we do that? Let's, um, yeah, let's not use it this way. I can try using the left half of my screen, like it's one monitor. Let's try to set that up. Yeah, let's remove the uh, transform. And I'm gonna try to make the left half of the screen full screen, perhaps. Still not great. You're not gonna, it's really arbitrary which part of the screen you guys are able to see. I think um, I think I gotta do fit to screen and you guys can just blow it up, right? And I maybe won't use this computer next time. This way you see everything. To me, this is, this is what it's supposed to be like, right? <clears throat> All right. Groovy, worst, worst live stream technical difficulty ever. Um, yeah. I zoom in, Alex, and then I'm going to cut off the bottom. Uh, I can't make half of my screen full screen. Half of my screen is a square because it's the wide screen monitor. So it's not like uh, it's, it's two screens. Half of my screen would be a square, so you'd have a bunch of black bars either way. Um, anyway, let's go with this. Let's go with this, and you can, uh, you can go full screen. Uh, I would imagine it wouldn't be that bad, but I got to keep keep moving um, okay so we have our database table we only need one now we're time to run our migration step two and then we're going to take this front end that's already basically done which is pretty sweet and we're going to then hook up our back end for our app we're going to use ruby on rails it's what i use all the time and i have a boilerplate app called um called uh speed rail Speedrail has a few things already installed. I don't want anyone to think I'm cheating too much, 
Uh, it's really probably two hours, maybe one hour of work, maybe 30 minutes of work, depending on how fast you are. I've added the Tailwind interface. I've added users. I've added Stripe for payments. We actually don't need the user authentication, or we will for our admin panel. We don't need the Stripe because we're not taking any payments. So uh, we're not really gonna use a few of the things that are in here, but I'm gonna use this repo anyway, just so we don't have to redo the really boring stuff that there's already a million tutorials showing. So I'm gonna follow this as if I was not Ryan C. Culp and make sure that the installation steps are okay. So step one, we're gonna clone the repo. I'm gonna go into my terminal and I'm going to uh, go to a folder where I can put this stuff. All right, git clone. I'll blow some stuff up since I know that it's smaller for some people. I'm gonna go into the app and then I'm gonna run bundle. So now I'm on step, I'm on step two. Uh, I need to install version 3.1, great. <laughs> this might take a moment, so let's switch back and I'll make sure anybody has any issues. This looks fine. Okay. Whew, good times. Tech bro has technical difficulties. Let's put on my hat. This is not a sponsored post. Let's put on my hat. I just have very long hair today. Today we're working with uh, an iced Americano, homemade, and water. So we're gonna get everything done with those two things. I try to go to the bathroom first, but you know we'll see. This might be like that South Park episode. Like, Mom, I need more Hot Pockets. And he just takes a shit in his computer chair. We'll see. Uh, we're just letting my computer install Ruby 3.1.0. Apparently I don't have it. I think I have a later version, but I'm just gonna use the exact code we have already so that as little is changed as possible for the sake of the spirit of this project to live stream something from scratch. Okay, it looks like it's mostly done. Yeah, good times. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Full-time job, nice, watching the live stream, multitasking. multitasking as well. I needed to build this app for work anyway. Ooh, let's go. Still installing.
Okay, sure. Yeah, great idea. So actually, we've infinite. We've now finished installing Ruby. We can keep building. But let me give a quick reminder or touch up on what it is we're doing and why. So there's something called package inserts. Package inserts are sent when you buy products on Amazon or wherever. And usually it's the brand trying to upsell you or get a review or give you a discount for a future purchase. They just want to connect with you directly because when you buy on a platform like Amazon, if the product was fulfilled by Amazon, that brand doesn't get any of your contact information. They get your first name and your postal code. They know your city. That's it. So I've been saving up these package inserts that I'm receiving and, um, and uh, make sure you guys see me. I've been saving up these package inserts and our goal today is to build a microsite where people can upload and sort different inserts for inspiration for their own e-commerce businesses. And what my commercial goal is, is to um, essentially uh, convert some of these visitors to a product we have that helps them get more reviews using package inserts. Hey Brad, how you doing man? So that's kind of the scoop, Alex. Uh, it's gonna be a Rails app that people can search and sort. And now we're installed Ruby, so I'll one more time show you all the views, and then let's uh, get building. So here's gonna be our home page. Sort by inserts, by different types of inserts or industries. Maybe you wanna look at discount codes for food and beverage industry. Uh, here's what it would look like to view just one. You can download it, uh, sort of like Unsplash, right? Unsplash has stock images. We're gonna have inspirational package inserts. Here's the page where you can upload your own, uh, maybe your own or maybe the one that you received in the mail. And here's the admin panel so that we can make sure nobody's uploading any di dick pics. All right, so we're back to coding. Uh, very good. We've done step two. Now we're gonna try Rails G rename. We're gonna do this step, step three. After finish bundle. We're gonna rename this app to Insert Booth. And the reason we're even renaming the app at all is because when you install an app or set up a framework like Rails, uh, the app will be called application <laughs> or whatever. And when you start having a lot of different code and you start deploying code to servers, you really want things to have a base name that makes sense. So all that this command is going to do, Rails G rename, it's going to just literally find and replace strings of text across around 20 files in the program. So rename itself is a Ruby gem. This does not come built into Rails, but I love using it uh, and it saves me a lot of time setting up new apps. So we're gonna call this insert booth. All right, and see that all it did was G sub, which means global sub substitute. It grabbed the word speed rail in gem file and changed it to insert booth. It grabbed the word speed rail in this file, content security policy, and changed it to insert booth. So really handy, simple tool. Next, we're gonna set up our database. All that this is doing is literally creating a database called insert booth development. The test database we're not gonna use. If we wanted to write tests, we could use that, but we're not gonna write tests. This is a very simple microsite. We're not taking payments from people. People aren't logging in and manipulating items. It's just not that important. So that created a database. Now we can get to adding the features we want. So this is the reason I made SpeedRail so that you can start building your functionality within just a couple minutes. As you saw, that just took a couple minutes. Instead of spending a full hour uh, adding each of these libraries, then beginning your custom logic. So uh, now we can add our database table, which is gonna be called package inserts. To do that, we're gonna run a migration, <clears throat> Rails G uh, uh, migrate, Rails G migration. Uh, and we're going to um, create a package inserts table. Am I even doing this right? Create package inserts and we're gonna add our nouns. I told you timestamps are gonna be done for us. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and work on our other nouns. So those are gonna be title, 
space and then type industry brand website submitter email I'm gonna come back to the images here and status now each of these attributes has a data type uh, data types are things like uh, string integer float or decimal right big integer really data types are just string integer uh, boolean so like true false and each database you use each framework you use might have its own variations so integer here also has big integer um, float and decimal so when you run your migration you need to determine what each of these is going to be but if i'm looking at it because we created these examples in parentheses these are strings, right? String meaning it can be uh, alphanumeric characters. Uh, if it was an integer, that means it can only be numeric characters, right? And we could do something else if we wanted it to be only alpha characters, A to Z. But we don't really care. Someone can have, in theory, a number, an exclamation mark, whatever. So we're just gonna make those strings. Same with type, industry, brand, website, submitter, email. All of those are just strings. Um, even status, pending, approved, rejected. These are all strings. And since string is so common, we don't have to actually provide our database migration um, to, uh, to this command. But if we wanted to, we could. So let's say we had another thing called, uh, I don't know, brand name. I can do colon uh, string, and that's gonna give it a string type. Or colon boolean, and that's gonna give it a uh, true or false boolean type. But when you just want strings, you can simply separate these with a space. Now we also need to add our images, but we're gonna do that in a separate migration um, so that we can see how that works a little more up close. So create our table. Um, here's the attributes we're gonna add. The timestamps are gonna be included uh, for us automatically. and I just needed to write the word migration. Not migrate. All right, so this has created a file called create package inserts. Let's look at that file. Open up our whole code base so we just added. Insert booth. Here's that file. So you can see what it's done is it's created a table called package inserts and it's given a string type to title, a string type to type, a string type to industry. Uh, it's a really good idea to check your migration files before you actually commit them to the database itself. So here we've, we've queued up uh, a new table, but we haven't actually created the table. To create the table, we'd have to say Rails DB migrate and then hit enter. So there's DB database migrate or uh, drop or reset. There's a lot of different DB commands. And as you need to know them, you just Google, how do I migrate a database in Rails? And someone will say online, Rails DB migrate. But we're gonna examine our migration file first to make sure everything's okay. And already, I can tell you from experience, from a lot of experience, this word type is not gonna work. That's because type is what's known as a reserved keyword. This is common in a lot of different programming languages because the programming language or the Rails app itself has the word type somewhere in their code. So we can't use type, it's gonna fail, uh, or it will give us issues. So we're gonna maybe call this, um, you know, insert type. And it's a little annoying because package insert dot insert type, you know, we, we might not wanna reuse the word, uh, but for now, we're gonna just use insert type uh, and we'll just say, you know, as a note to ourselves type is a reserved keyword title industry brand submitter email we're going to want to do validation validate uh, it's a valid you know it's a real email uh, there isn't an email type though an email data type so we're going to do that through client side in the in the browser and we're going to do a little bit of back-end validation status uh, where it's going to be you know pending rejected approved we can actually do this differently we can make this an integer and make it an enum, enumerable, where status of one equals pending. Status with integer two equals rejected. Uh, but it's not that big of a deal. Again, this is an MVP, so we will keep it as a string. 
But these are just some considerations. Uh, as you're creating your migrations, you really have to think about, is this gonna create technical debt? Is this gonna have any issues for me later? Should I use uh, strings versus uh, integer enumerables for things like drop-down statuses? Um, all of these things are important to consider. And next we've got timestamps, which is gonna have that uh, created at and updated at fields built in for us. And as you noticed, we didn't type in uh, timestamps here, they're just done. Uh, so now I can do Rails DB migrate and let's try to create that table. And it works. Uh, and if I now go into the Rails console, Rails console or Rails C, you can actually see we have a user table and we have a package insert table. Um, oh, we need our model. So let's get our model here. The model is uh, the code representation in Ruby of the table. So it's just the same thing, but singular, package insert, uh, and uh, singular, and that's gonna inherit from the application record. This will just allow us to put code in this application record file that all of our different um, sub tables can use. That's all we need. Let's reload with exclamation mark, and now package insert is uh, something we can access. And this is really neat. So now we're writing Ruby code to underneath run SQL commands. And if we wanted to do this whole process a little differently, instead of Rails G migration, create some table, I could have said Rails G model, create some table, a uh, Rails G model package insert, and then type the same stuff, title, brand, this, that, the other. That would create both the migration file itself as well as this model file. So this is something people like about Rails is that there are these what's called generators. So Rails G, that's the same as Rails generate. I'm just using the shortened version. Rails G, they both do the same thing. And these generators allow you to generate lots of different files and commands sort of all in one. So think of Rails generators as like macros. All right, so we've got our database table. Uh, I'm gonna check for comments and then we're gonna go back and look at our wireframes. Yeah, exactly, Alex. It's like an, uh, it's like a swipe file for package inserts. Exactly, and we're gonna be trying to attract e-commerce brands uh, organically, right? So I did some keyword research. We want someone to search wine brand package insert template, right? Something like this, and we wanna show up for that. So that's our goal. All right, so going back to our uh, wireframes, which are really full, you know, high fidelity designs, I have a zip file with all of this code. So I wanna just start pasting in the code. It won't be functional. As you can see, even these drop downs don't do anything. Uh, I can't click on this. Only this second tab has a modal. Um, this, you know, obviously there's no image upload or anything. Excuse me, no image upload. Down here, we have some issues. This is not an email input type of box. <laughs> um, the placeholder is wrong. Uh, there are, on this tab, some typos. Get reviews without a W. So uh, I can't go through these images, right? This copied thing is kind of nice. So you can copy the image. So we have a lot of sort of functionality we have to fill in, um, but this front end is gonna get us a pretty far ways along so that we're not manually you know, writing all the styles to make these border radiuses. So let's grab that code that the designer sent me. It's this zip file, insert booth. And let's see what it looks like on the inside. So this came from something called Shuffle. Shuffle is a really sweet tool. It allows you to drag and drop uh, web pages, but then export the code. Um, you can do this in Webflow, but it's always gonna be Webflow's CSS or styles, and it's gonna have a lot of extra markup, a lot of attributes on the HTML tags. It's really, really gross. They give you tons and tons of JavaScript. You're not sure if you can delete it. Uh, Shuffle is way better uh, if your goal is to design something and have it in code, and it allows you to use Bootstrap or Tailwind or whatever. So I prefer working with designers who either code it themselves or they use tools like Shuffle and Export. All right, so that's what we got. Shuffle has a readme. Uh, we always want to know how to use this. So npm install, npm run build. So let's try that. I'm gonna open another terminal tab and I'm gonna to go to that code in my downloads folder. Npm 
install. We switch to uh, node 16. That's something called NVM. It lets you have multiple node versions. Node versions. And it said npm install. npm run watch. And we should be able to then see it. Okay, let's see if that really works. <laughs> keep the comments over here great npm run watch and sweet that gave us uh, a page we can now look at great so we're running this code locally now so I'm gonna kill these preview pages and just use this server, this little thin server we have. You can see these drop downs aren't doing anything. You know, the buttons aren't going anywhere. So we're gonna have to link all that up. So, first, let's just try to grab this index HTML code and put all these classes and everything into our app. That's our database table. Uh, here we go. All right, we're going to open up both code bases. They're both called <laughs> insert booth. So let's see how we can organize them. Oh, this one's actually called shuffle. And I want to grab the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So that's our front end, right? Sometimes you don't have any JavaScript, but you're always going to have HTML and CSS. Um, these public pages are potentially going to be the built pages. Okay. In the source pages. Okay, great. Yeah, pug. We're not going to use pug. It's a different style of uh, HTML, different flavor. Uh, we're going to start putting this in here. So I'm going to take uh, everything inside of this body and drop it into uh, our home page. Use pages home. And let's go ahead and run our server as well. Uh, so back on our SpeedRail app, it's called Insert Booth. Let's just run Rails S for Rails Server and go to localhost 3000. Mm, I need to set some attributes. So let's continue our readme of our uh, of our code base. We did down through step four. Now we're going to do bundle exec figaro install, which is going to let us have what's called secrets, app secrets. So these don't necessarily have to be secret like API keys, although they are great for API keys. Secrets can also just be switches and things that you want to change without deploying code. So let's say you want to have a 14 day free trial. I think this is a great example. Um, in my opinion, I always would rather use a secret and write the word 14 just one time and have all of my code reference, you know, environment variable, uh, free trial days. And then our marketing site, our pricing page, everything will use this value, which allows me as someone, if I don't code, to log into a server and just change 14 to seven. And now our entire app will update to seven uh, without writing any code. So that's what secrets are for. So we just used Figaro. It's a tool that lets you manage secrets and it created this file called application.yaml inside of the config folder, application YAML. And you can see it's grayed out. That's because our git uh, uh, ignore file uh, doesn't let us save this to git, which means this won't be on GitHub. Uh, we're gonna make this a private repo, but even a private repo, you share it with the wrong person and they might get your secrets and you don't want them to have your secrets. Uh, these comments, this stuff behind the, um, the hashtags just shows us how you can use it. So we already know we need a handful of secrets. But let's continue following along. Here it says copy the sample secrets and put them into the real secrets. So you can see application sample. Here we go. Here are all those secrets and why our server failed. Uh, so I'm just going to follow this command and make sure it's all working as expected. Now if I open application YAML, it's gonna have those secrets. So let's go ahead and rerun our app, Rails server. T 
Tailwind's uses. Ah, I actually need to rerun the app, not with Rails server, but with this other command, bin dev. Bin dev is giving us a new issue that we need the gym foreman. So I'm just gonna gym install foreman. Bin dev, and now our app's running. It's building the front end, it's building Tailwind. It's gonna, sh should fix this issue. All right, so here's our home page right now. This is my default template. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this and put on uh, this code. So I'm gonna copy paste this into our home page. Reload, all right. We don't have images, obviously. The colors are wrong, right? This is not what our other, you know, these pages look different, right? <laughs> we have some colors, the fonts. Uh, that's because we're not done yet, right? So if we go back to our example page, uh, up here in the head, we actually have a few more things going on. So we have some classes to apply to the body. So for that, we're actually not gonna change our homepage directly. We use application layouts. These layouts wrap around all of the pages. So application layouts is gonna go here. Let's grab those classes. We're just gonna make one change at a time. Let's reload ours. Kinda of looks the same. So far kinda of looks the same, all right. Now let's get more code. Uh, we need these things in the head. We might want some, looks like we want Google fonts. Okay, let's put these Google fonts in our head. See if that makes our page a little better. Mm. Still kind of the same, no problem. And next we also want Tailwind styles. Now we have Tailwind on our app, but the Tailwind flavor, um, the classes, et cetera, might be a little different, right, on, uh, on this code that our designer gave us. So let's go into the Tailwind styles and let's get this config. We have a config as well. So we can just try to copy and paste this config into ours um, and see what happens. Now, this content section, I'm not gonna change. Our content is in different folders than the content from the, the Tailwind export. But the other stuff, uh, I'm okay with, with trying. Plugins, we kinda need to keep that. See if this has a plugin section. Yeah, no plugin section. So let's basically copy everything down to theme maybe. And keep our plugins there, and let's just try to replace this. I'm gonna comment it out and leave it. Now let's resave, reload. And look at that, we're already looking way better. I think we've got, yeah, we've got the font in there. We've got a better, a slightly better looking navigation, although this is still junky. Uh, we've got drop downs, we've got the three columns. Uh, the images aren't there, obviously, uh, but we're looking much better already. So now let's go back and let's abstract our navigation. Because if you look at our code, we have a navigation here from my speed rail and we have a navigation from our designer. So let's just grab the designer's navigation. Um, we know we have a contribute button and a browse button, browsing contributes. I'm just gonna search the code for the word contribute. Looks like there's three instances. What's the topmost one, line 130, line 21? All right, this seems to be the navigation, this kind of section. If I get rid of this and reload, yeah, it went away. Okay, so this is our navigation. I'm gonna put this in our, uh, our header section and replace this header. Well, let's see what happens. I'm just gonna actually delete it all. And look at that. Now we've kind of moved our header, that's good. Next, we wanna maybe get our images working. All right. We want these images to work. So let's look for an image uh, and look at where these sources are. So, source, weird folder slash elements, ooh, gross, right? Images, dummy image. So we're gonna try to do this as cleanly as possible. Here's all those images that we're not seeing because we don't have them. We're just gonna grab all of them for now, okay? And move them to our app assets images for now. We might wanna you know, um, 
change them later, change where they are later. Do that. And then also in images, oh, there's also this thing, UNL assets, I don't know, that has more images. Oh gosh, right? All kinds of images. We probably don't need them all, but let's put those inside of here as well. Okay. Now let's try to change some of this stuff. Um, in Rails, we don't hard code to images because the image assets are compiled along with the code whenever you deploy, which means that the actual link to an image is not gonna be this clean. It's gonna be more like um, 56703 dash line circle, and it's gonna change every time you rebuild the code. So to handle that, we actually use uh, the asset pipeline um, image source that lets us type in a direct clean link to an image and then it figures out where the image actually is. So the way we're gonna do that, I'm gonna just take you one example. Uh, do we think this is line circle? What is line circle? I can search for this file now. It's probably this, this light gray line thing. Um, and we can, uh, we can verify that, it's probably that. So first, uh, let's go back here and change just this image to a rail style image, which is image tag, and then we're gonna pass in this path. Give it the same classes that it had up here. Comment out the, the broken one. And there we go. We've now updated and fixed this little background image. So that's sort of our process. We're gonna do this for each image now. We're gonna swap out hard-coded images for images done the Rails way, as people say. And I'm also just cleaning up the HTML. You can see some of the indentation is nice, kind of not bad, and some of it, like here, there's a div, um, this, anchor, I want to move it there. And you can see how as I'm clicking around, the color is actually, the syntax highlighting is kicking in better um, because it just, it wasn't sure how to, you know, how to handle this code. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference, okay? The code is just as functional, it does not matter. Um, but I kind of often clean up code because it makes it easier to, uh, just to maintain. So for example, these are like, um, you know, tabs or these are drop down items. I want the code to look the same as close to the UI as possible. All right, I'm actually gonna even close this file and reopen it. Uh, and you can see our, our syntax highlighting is already a little bit better now. So that's one image. Here's another image. I'm just gonna Command C, Command V and replace the one beneath it. And this might take, you know, a couple minutes. Um, we just comma separate our attributes. And uh, we also don't have to do, we're not gonna do all nine. <laughs> so if we go back to our page, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know. We'll just get one done, maybe, or two done, and then we'll just loop that one. We don't need to uh, go crazy here. Let's see if this made any difference. Image dummy asset, ah. So here, we don't need to use images slash because we've already uh, figured that out. We've already put them in the images folder. All right, and we've got another image here where the classes should be this. And, uh, and the source is just this file name because we've put it in our images folder already. Still working on it. All right, all package inserts. So this should really be dummy asset two. Yeah, featured insert one. These should be showing up, uh, missing an equal sign. What we're doing here, if you can't tell, is we're writing Ruby inside of an HTML file. But that's because this isn't actually an HTML file, it's embedded Ruby, it's .erb, which allows you to write what looks like HTML, but technically, even this div is Ruby. It's just the same exact syntax as HTML. 
But when we write this Ruby code, this is interpreted into an image tag. And when you don't include the equal sign, it, it interprets the code, expresses the code, executes the code, but does not show you the execution of that code. Um, so I added back the equals, and now we've got that image there. Uh, we're still wanting this other background image. So there's probably something going on with CSS classes that's hiding that other background image, uh, but we're getting there. And uh, we'll get a couple of these images down below. Again, I want to clean up this um, syntax, maybe just for one or two, and then again, we'll loop it, right? We're not going to do this for all of them. And look at that, that's kind of just like one maybe. Yeah. And I'll even put a hard space before and after. Um, and let's, this SVG is already done. Okay. All package inserts. Here's one. And here's one. So here we have two ready to go. Uh, and we need to fix these, these images again. Image, full width. I'm just going to literally copy paste so I can go directly to, yeah, there we go, to some of this code that's wrong. I'll check the chat. Try to remember to check that chat. Tailwind plugins. Um, right now we have, if we look at our Tailwind config, go down to plugins. I have all the plugins enabled, but we're not using them yet. Um, maybe aspect ratio we're using, but we haven't tried the, uh, the different scale, mobile, etc. Forms we haven't used yet um, to have you know, functionality on the input forms. Typography we're also not using yet because we have just hard-coded Google fonts in. Um, but in my opinion, it's a good idea to just enable the, the three basic plugins. It's only going to add a few extra kilobytes. And the whole paradigm of Tailwind is that they only compile the styles that you use. So you're not really adding a ton of extra code to enable the plugins. Um, and if you do add a few milliseconds to your load time and, uh, and then you, you worry about it, it's like, you know, we're not focusing on the right thing if we do that. Not for MVP. You do not try to make your MVP as fast as possible. <laughs> under any circumstances. All right. Just trying to make just trying to make one or two of these look nice and then we'll copy paste them. Um, let's see. This is something shuffle does not do very well. They don't export it in a super clean linted way. All right. All right. Did we fix any yet? Still working on it. All right. Here's our first image. Uh, we're going to make this the Rails way. Image tag. First argument has to be the source itself. We don't need source. You just type in what it is. It's image, comma. Then you can add whatever you want in any order. Alt text, uh, width, style, proper, whatever you want. But instead of equals, you just use colon. So it's really similar to HTML, right? This equals this. These two lines are the exact same code uh, when you load it in the browser, except this one's actually going to point to the real image, and this one will be broken. So let's comment it out to make sure. And there we go. We got our working, working image. So it's really looking pretty good. Um, and we can grab just this full, this full sort of div, which we think is maybe here. Is this like begin image or be begin uh, item and maybe this is end item refresh command shift command c and mac let's look at the code there and if i hover over you can see here begin item end item so this is kind of just a really simple way to make sure that I didn't um, you know, grab too much or too little code. Uh, we get it, organic, discount, there's different types, different titles. I don't really wanna fix all of these, right? I don't think any of us do. 
So let's go ahead and just delete some of these other rows. And I'm clicking here at the beginning so that I see where it closes the bracket. So the text editor will do that for you. Click here and then it underlines in blue the closing. And that might be all of them. All right, so now we got one. And now let's try to just uh, copy paste this twice to make sure that the rows and columns look okay. Oop, something happened, right? Yeah, something, something bad happened. So let's go back. Something about these other rows was a little bit different. If I look at the classes here, hit Command D. It is the same classes, but I didn't like it. So I'm gonna try to actually loop this six times. I'm just gonna wrap six dot times do around this and uh, try to generate a bunch of these. Maybe it's just uh, our browser. Yeah, that's all it was. We need to just do a little more CSS later to um, to clean up the breakpoints because it was it did not have the right, the right padding. All right, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go back to deleting these. We don't need any of these. Um, and now we have, great. Now we have less code, cleaner code. Um, and then further down, more package inserts. We might do an auto scroll or you know whatever. Here, this is not full screen. I'm not liking this. <laughs> this container um, is not exactly, you know, it's not as wide as my computer, right? So that container there, you know, maybe max width should just be 100%, or at least for like this footer, right? Maybe this container here should should have a maximum, you know, 1400 pixels, but this container here could be different. But we'll figure all that out later. And then down here we have an email input that we're not doing anything with yet, but we can go and at least make it an email type. So let's look for that form input. That's this right here. Let's start by uh, by adding a placeholder so that we at least know this is working. Okay, we got our placeholder and our placeholder. Uh, Color is crazy, right? This color is like, it doesn't look like placeholder text. It's like black. Um, so we're gonna wanna change that. But uh, I also wanna make it type email. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, we're gonna um, do, that in the, do that in the Rails way. Uh, that will give us those validations where it says, hey, this doesn't look like a valid email. We're also gonna change the placeholder text. Tailwind, placeholder, text, color. Placeholder gray 200. Let's see if that makes a difference. Let me get rid of the dot. Okay, much better, right? And we can increase the number to make it a little, little more visible. All right, 400 may be too much, so 300. And that's good enough for now. Uh, okay, so we've got our home page. It looks the way it's supposed to, except for this image back here that we were seeing on the example, but we're not seeing here. So I think that means in our original file, we're gonna have some CSS, maybe some custom classes that, um, that are not actually included in Tailwind, but that maybe the uh, designer made up. <laughs> now, how do we find those classes is, uh, is another question. Um, so I'm gonna just look for a file that seems it's not created programmatically. The other thing we're gonna do is just reload the other server. The problem is both of these servers wanna load on localhost 3000, localhost 3000, so yeah. So we're gonna um, have to choose which server we're looking at at a time for now. Now, what's the class stuff going on over here? Image. The classes look the same. They look very tailwindy to me. So I might have just missed a spot.
object contain is spelled wrong, but that's how it was spelled in the original as well. So we're not going to spend too much time on this. If we can't figure this out right now, I don't care. We're just going to keep moving forward. Yeah. Uh, it's probably this image and this is going to be one. Yeah, this is one that's for a different screen size. Okay, let's go back to IAN. Let's make a copy of this. Okay, wonderful. We're going to be good to go. And then we're going to move on to our next page. Here's our classes. It's a lot of classes. Here's our source, comma, classes equals all that and then we're going to get rid of this images slash is there another image I'm missing yeah there's one let's see one more image I'm missing Okay, there we go. We've got a working home page. We've cleaned it up. All of our assets are working. We've got a navigation. Now we can move on to um, perhaps to viewing one inside of a modal. This could be easy, could be more annoying, difficult, uh, because the modal view in our preview is uh, also the same as the home page view behind them. So let's go back to running the server. Let's actually make it so we can run two servers. Proc dev. Let's run this Rails server at 8080 and uh, then run our other server at port 3000. So npm run watch, that's going to land at 3000. And hopefully, if this works, this will run this server at port 8080 and let us look at both apps at the same time and really save us a lot of trouble. So here's port 3000. And this should now hopefully work at 8080. Yeah. <laughs> we have to see if there's more spots pointing to port 3000. If not, I'll change the uh, the node app to to run it port something else. Yeah, okay. Back to three thousand. Proc dev back to three thousand, and let's try to make this not run at three thousand. Ooh. Let's have it not search node modules. This might just be a waste of time. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is gonna be a waste of time. I'm not gonna mess with it. Uh, we're just gonna struggle a little bit longer using, um, using both of them. So, what's currently alive right now? Um, if we go to our uh, our individual package insert page, that is going to be browse detail modal. Here we go. This is what we're going to do next. Browse detail modal. You can see that we're able to scroll all behind, and it's sort of like the view all page. So if I go in here and try to kill this modal, here's what that's going to look like. So we can go ahead and get this page in, and we've got this nice banner in between to ask for submissions, view more, view more. So this looks really good. 
Um, let's get this done in two steps. One, the background first to view all, and then we're gonna add uh, the modal. So this is the browse detail modal page. Browse detail modal page. We're gonna do kind of the same thing we did before, except we don't need to grab the head, the header, the fonts, and we don't need to grab the uh, this nav bar. So I'm gonna kill the nav bar, that's gonna be the same. We're just gonna grab everything else inside of the body. And it looks like we also need, okay, these, these bits of JavaScript. So let's see how that goes. Back in here, we need to make a new page. Um, we could just put it in pages for now. Uh, and actually we're gonna make a new folder, package inserts, and we're gonna make an index file. This is the common way to, um, to say, hey, this page is gonna have a list of stuff. So whatever your database is, package insert, package inserts, pluralized, and then index is gonna be what kind of lists stuff in there. And I wanna tighten it all up a little bit. And then down here, this script, this is a relative path. Obviously we don't have a JS folder with charts demo. So let's go grab that here. And for now, I'm just gonna put it in a script tag here. I'm gonna put the code directly in there, don't care. Not even sure if we're really even using this stuff. I didn't see any charts. Did you see charts? Um, but we're just gonna put it hard-coded in there for now. All right, and, uh, and then to actually see this uh, page, we have to make a new route. We're not gonna use billing portal. Um, so we're gonna get rid of this stuff, some of this stuff to do delete okay we are going to use this admin panel though so that's going to be nice resources resources something that's a, a, a database or for now we're going to say something that's connected to a database uh, package inserts it's our database table we only care about the index view which is going to let us list stuff and I'm going to make that controller package inserts and then you have to affix controller and just like when we were making our model if you remember package insert model we inherited from application record here we're going to inherit from application controller and then we're just going to make our index view and uh, this isn't going to do anything now but soon to do it will grab package inserts from the database right so it will be something like package inserts equals package insert dot approved or something like that. And we don't have any of that built yet, but um, that's just one of our to-dos. For now, we're just using these hard-coded images. So we should be able to kind of go to uh, localhost slash package inserts like that. And again, we wanna change that URL. We don't like that, that's gross, um, but we're gonna have to do one step at a time. So first let's hard code the HTML and see what it looks like. There we go. All right, so we got this thing, right? But we've got all this weird white stuff. We're not sure what's going on. Something with the container is off. So let's try to tweak that a little bit first. Uh, if I go back to our shuffle text, our shuffle code. These are the body classes. Let's make sure our body classes and our layout are the same. And they are, okay. Ah, but we have a main we have a main class wrapping around whereas that does not exist in the sample code so that could be the root of our issue and it is look at that we got rid of the white stuff it's centered let's go back to our home page and look at that our footer is now looking good so attention to detail so important i don't always do it all right so now we've got our sort of layout ready to go uh it's finally working the way we expect I'm just going to clean this all up a little bit Again, this doesn't make a difference to the functionality, just makes it easier to maintain. So now we've got our package inserts tab. <laughs> Image is broken, that's expected. Let's uh, use Chrome Developer Console and just delete this um, modal screen so we can kind of make sure this looks good. And it seems, you know, seems cool. Again, image is broken, that's expected. This image, we want to have it working. 
So let's get that image working. Um, then really we can just start working on the modal, fix these drop downs, and we can ignore all this middle stuff. We already have uh, a little widget that's gonna show one of those. We fixed it, we made it the Rails way, and ultimately these are not gonna be a static page content. These are gonna be pulled from the database. So we wanna get to doing that as quickly as possible. Again, right now we're on step three. Step one was wireframe, mock it up. Step two is our database modeling, which was really easy. We made one table called package inserts with attributes like title, brand, URL, status, things like that, and verbs, which is what we're working on now. Uh, viewing all of them, making one of them, viewing one of them, right? And then lastly, we're gonna do the back end, which is where we pull them from the database, uh, we let people upload them, and we have the ability to edit them, again, the verbs. Okay, these drop downs are already totally broken. We could try to tweak those a little bit if we wanted to. Um, review request. Just looking for where this drop down is. I think it's not actually a drop down. It's kind of like a fake drop down. It's like a div. So we're, we're going to probably have to re redo this, but let's at least clean it up for now. Yeah, so here's our drop down. And it's already open. The drop down's open. So I'm gonna just replace this with a really simple drop down. Let's make sure this is the one by just copy pasting it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay. Let's add another option then. Test. Test. Okay, so this is the drop down that we're modifying. We need this to be an actual drop down. We're going to go to Tailwind UI and uh, just grab a drop down. You can also just Google drop downs, you know, not a big deal. And actually, a drop down isn't even what we want. We want just a select form, a select menu. Which one looks good? We don't need anything too complicated. Yeah, maybe this most, yeah, just native, meaning the native one to your browser. So you see how these kind of look really nice? These actually look designed, these inputs, and these are like what you'd see on a browser. We're just gonna go with this for now, right? We're just trying to do this as quickly as possible. Um, so let's put this where this other one was. see how bad it looks and then make it match the styles of the one that was in our design mock okay see how that's all not great right that's fine okay look at this this is just so gross clean this up we can't really read anything when uh, when the code is all, all, all the way over there yeah this whole thing is like gotta go away <laughs> okay for now we're gonna go with that this word location and just say type. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Okay, type. And we can make this big, you know, we can make this nice and big. Uh, we can have, um, you know, a default selected option, obviously. Um, we can even change this to text large, text large. Let's see. Yeah, already looking a, like a little bit better. Um, cool. And I'm gonna kill. Uh, now we're gonna just take these these types and map them over because those are those are correct. Discount free offer. And by the way, these types we decided during the wireframe step. We said, you know what? There's probably a lot of different things you could put on a package insert, but uh, we're just gonna classify it into these four buckets telling your story, asking for a review, giving people something for free, or offering a discount. 
There's also maybe like upsell, you know, so I can add another one, uh, upsell, but we can adjust these anytime. And now let's just get rid of this whole thing. I hate loading this page and seeing this. So I'm just gonna search the code for this thing and just say, uh, I don't know, display none. Uh, there's a class for this in, in Tailwind. Hide. Invisible. <laughs> yeah, okay, invisible is good for now. All right, so that's one drop down. Let's make our other drop down kind of same thing. Here's that. Relative full width, so it's this whole thing I want to replace. It looks like we're going to want to do apparel, health product. Again, we're changing all this, right? Apparel, fitness and health. Maybe food and beverage. Mm, what other types of industries are there for, for e-commerce? Um, home goods, you know. Food and beverage would be like wine, food. There's all fitness and health would cover supplements. You know, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, other sports, but that's kind of like fitness. Either way, we're just getting the most basic things done. So cool. And then we can make this search button. We can either make the search button smaller, or we can make these, you know, a lot bigger. I'm open to either. Uh, for now, let's just keep rolling. And what we see up here is that this looks like this is basically going to be and let's make this clear now, this is going to be like the type, let's call it insert type, which is what our attribute is, and um, industry. So this is like a to-do for ourself. And this is what we're gonna try to be ranking for on Google. I didn't realize that would not keep the string, cool. This is how we're gonna try to rank on Google. So someone will search, wine, right, wine uh, discount package insert, and they're gonna land on a page that says wine discount package insert. So this needs to be dynamic based on what they've chosen here. So we're gonna do that in a little bit. Next, uh, let's fix this image. Do you have an example for us? An example for us, search the code, look for the image. The image is right here. I'm gonna copy paste that do this the Rails way, image tag, move the class after the source, source directly, comma, class, colon, and then we remove images slash, and that's in there now, great. And I think we're gonna be using this banner a lot, right? We're gonna maybe like every six, we're gonna paste this banner in. So this whole banner, I'm gonna close this page, inserts index because I want to reset the syntax highlighting. See how it looks a little bit cleaner now? This whole banner, looks like this is the whole banner. I want to put this in something that's reusable. We're going to call that a partial. We're going to put it in this folder called shared. Um, you have to prefix partials with an underscore. So uh, uh, contribute banner, let's just call it that. Put this here. Okay, now I'm just gonna render that. Render partial contribute banner. I might have done that wrong. I can actually just do render when I'm not passing in values. And then it's in the shared folder. And there we go. So now we've got our banner in there. And if we wanted to like render it every six, we would just, you know, loop some packages. Uh, inserts, render the banner. Loop the package inserts, render the banner. That way we're not copy pasting anything. You never wanna do more things more than once. All right, now of course we've got a lot of copy pasting here. So just in case these are laid out a little differently from our home page, let's just fix one of them, right? So here's one of them. Let's make sure that the code is otherwise like the same. Let's make sure these classes are the same. Highlight, Command D, and that's all the same. Highlight some of this, Command D, all the same. Some of this, Command D, all the same. Grab some of these, all the same. All right, so I can comfortably delete all these other items. 
make sure that these are also the same as that first one. Yeah, so all these are the same, great. This is that closing tag. So if I were to um, make just one of these work, uh, we're good to go. So let's clean up the, the highlighting or clean up the, the linting, the syntax. Like that, and like that, okay. I'm keeping the first one just in case I, I accidentally delete something. Whenever something ends and something new begins, you have to determine if it's a child or a sibling. And we're just kind of YOLOing that right now. Okay, so this is kind of like a cleaned up one. Now let's grab this image, make it the Rails way. Put the source first, comma, class colon classes, close the tag, get rid of the images prefix, images slash prefix. Comment out this one, command forward slash. And we have an image working. Great. So now we can kill this because we we fixed that. And let's do, you know, six dot times do. And let's throw this in there. Okay, now we've got our six things and our banner, and then we can do six more. Um, but if I'm going to do six more, and it's going to look just like this, six dot times do, and then six more below, again, now we've repeated ourselves, right? So let's cancel that, and let's take this thing and make this a partial as well. So let's call it, um, we can actually put the partial in this file, because we, we're only going to probably use it here. And let's call it, uh, you know, you know, package insert or something like that. Maybe it, package insert small because these are this version and our modal version is going to be like the big version so maybe package insert small for now all right and uh we'll now delete it here render package insert small and then our banner Insert small and I gotta do the equals remember so we actually see it <laughs> okay that's a little bit cleaner but then again still six times and then the banner and then six times now we're just copying and pasting this again right so it's still like ew gross so instead what we'd probably do later is we'll do something like having all of our inserts um, and we'll do in groups of six and then in there it will automatically render our contribute banner every six so again it will it will be a lot better but for now um, we're gonna do it like this so for now we just do two dot times do and then in there we do six dot times do so now twice we're gonna render six and then the banner Let's see if that works. Six, oop, 12, banner, did it all wrong because I didn't add the banner. Shared, contribute banner. So we do the six and then we do the one banner and then we repeat the whole process. All right, six, banner, six. That's the concept. Again, we'll make this even cleaner later. This is another example too, where you could use secrets to say like, how often do I want their, the banner to be? Um, you could actually set that up as an environment variable and then change how often the banner is without writing code. That could be good for marketing, A-B tests, you know, that kind of thing. Great, so we got six, banner, six, banner, et cetera. We got drop downs that actually open and close. The search button doesn't do anything. That's intended because that's backend, right? We have to send a command to the backend to do something um, and now we have finally viewing one. Uh, we added this invisible class. Let's remove the invisible class and start looking at this. Same concept, we're gonna have the broken images. Otherwise, the styles look nice. We've got a working thought bubble, that's cool. This is the tool that I'm gonna be promoting with this free website. I want people to look for package inserts and then sign up for our tool, Get Reviews AI. 
Uh, but this video is not a pitch, so that's why I'm not talking about it. I do see a typo though. Get reviews, export to, we need to fix that. Get reviews, all right. Also, I'd like to just go ahead and clean up our code by putting this in a partial, because this is like an individual image. So let's grab this whole section. Remember, I did that by just clicking the top of it and then looking for the underlined part. Okay. Top of it, go to the underlined part, Command X. And let's make this um, another partial, package insert, big, we can call it for now. Okay. And then here, where we were rendering that, render, package insert, big. Okay. We kind of kept it all, but our, our code's looking, you know, much cleaner, right? Uh, and this section even, uh, stay updated, you know, like getting that email newsletter. This might be the same code as our homepage. Um, let's go ahead and uh, make this invisible again so we can test that. Stay updated if you'd like to get weekly inserts. Let's look at the homepage. Yeah, I think this is the same. Right, so I actually want to also uh, grab this stuff, stay updated. This section right here, let's put this in a partial render uh, shared. Um, let's just call it the newsletter, you know, the newsletter box. Put it in here, underscore newsletter. Let's see if that looks okay on our package insert tab looks good to me now let's try to clean up our home page then and also say render the shared newsletter so page is home and this whole section that's like do you want to join yeah drop your email right here let's try to delete it just render in the newsletter refresh our home page looks good to me cool so we're not done with that newsletter right we need to fix our email Oh, I accidentally got rid of the placeholder text thing. So we're gonna have to fix that. That was right here. Where's the input? Yeah, we did a placeholder like gray 300 or something. Should have should have taken the homepage one versus, uh, versus this one, but yeah, there we go, all fixed. So now we only have to modify the newsletter widget in one area and it will be at the footer of all these different pages, which is great. So now we've made use of partials. We've made we made use of looping. Um, we've already begun to sort of clean up the code. We've made it the Rails way with our image assets. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. Okay. Now back to this page. We don't know if we're using these charts at all. I don't see any charts on um, <laughs> the package inserts page. I'm not sure where that came from. So let's potentially kill all this stuff at the bottom. And just look at our uh, console to see if anything is having some errors. Okay, some images aren't loading. That's fine because we didn't update the images yet in our, uh, in our modal. So I think we're fine. All right, we got rid of JavaScript. Look at this, our page is so much cleaner. Barely even have to scroll to see everything. Let me check the chat. Um, this is sort of a vanilla Rails app. Um, I use my own called SpeedRail. Jumpstart is pretty sweet. Jumpstart is cool. I've used it a few times, but uh, typically Jumpstart for me is overkill. So I, I, you know, I don't really use it too often just for a couple apps. Yeah, thanks for asking. All right, uh, next. <clears throat> We've got this modal. So let's go back to our modal, which is our package insert big partial. We're gonna remove the invisible class. We can um, tighten up some of this stuff, right? This is looking really gross. <laughs> Spend a minute doing this. And actually, we might be able to beautify this. So we've done a lot of this by hand, but let me try to find a tool. If I paste in code, sometimes, Look at this. Let's see if this works. Let's see. Look at that. Look how much better this is. There's also plugins for text editors that will do this for you. Uh, I typically just don't really use them. I don't know why. Um, 
but yeah, so now we've we've beautified it. So we don't have to do it manually anymore, but um, if we always use shortcuts when we're learning, then we don't ever actually learn anything. Okay, so there's our modal. We know the images are broken, no big deal. Download obviously doesn't do anything yet. This brand thing, let's see, brand. This should be, this should be linking. Um, so we can say uh, link to, I don't know, let's just say Ray-Ban. Okay, so now we've got now we've got our link. We screwed up the display. I think it S, I think SVGs are by default display block in Tailwind. So I'm just gonna write inline and see if that fixes it. Yeah, there we go. And then we want it to open in a new tab. So we're gonna add target blank. All right. So again, we're just getting the shell. All of this is gonna have to be dynamic, right? Maybe even clicking discount could run a search where it says, you know, discount package inserts. Maybe that would happen once you click this, right? We don't know yet. We haven't decided. Same with industry. Um, these images, we can, you know, tweak the images. Let's change this from ERB type to HTML to see if that fixes our syntax highlighting. Not really. <laughs> Big. All right. Get one of the two of these images to be improved. Image. All right. Pass in our source. Get rid of images, comma, class. See if that gets one of them working. Cool. I don't know why. Um, the other ones look so crappy, I guess, because I have two. Okay, cool. Same concept. Let's just take this image, put it there. It's insert six. Where's the glass? Getting these thumbnails working, great. Now we can just change these to insert five. And insert 10. And weird featured. Featured insert zero 01. Okay. Does that give us all of our thumbnails? It does. Great, and we've still got this nice working little modal. I'm really surprised that this um, <laughs> that this uh, thought bubble worked. Now we need this functionality, right? We want to uh, to click here and probably probably hide it, obviously. Um, but we'll see. You know, maybe we'll make this its own page kind of thing. So that's all cleaned up. I kind of think we're ready to work on the back end. Uh, oh no, we have a contribute page. We have a contribute page. So let's uh, spin down this server, spin up this server, and look at that contribute page. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Is it contribute? It is, sweet. So here's a contribute page, it's a form. This is gonna have to be totally redone because Rails has a way to do forms safely so that you don't uh, have people um, hitting your server with a bunch of data remotely. So it has CSERF protection. Um, but the, the view or the, the layout is cool. It's nice. So um, yeah, so we'll go with this. Okay, contribute. Let's copy paste contribute HTML. Again, we're ignoring the head, we're ignoring this body part, we're getting this. And we can actually ignore the, uh, um, you know, that part of the footer that says like, hey, give us your email or whatever. But let's do one at a time. Let's get this inner body div here to here. 
and let's make a new page. This can also just be a hard-coded page. This isn't connected to like a database yet. Okay, and let's add a route for it. If we don't add a route, it won't work. Pages, let's add it here. And now let's run up our Rails server again. If anybody has questions, feel free to, uh, to chat. I actually made the chat popped out now. So, um, so I can see live as we go. All right, Christian says, lack of autocomplete seems like playing on hard mode. Autocomplete in what way? Like a method name or? Okay, let's get rid of this double header. Let's get rid of the header at the top. I think that's the first section. Because we already have a header. Okay, good. And this footer is pretty good. Do our other pages have this footer? Because if they do, yeah, they do. We should actually make this a partial and make the footer a partial because not everywhere is going to have the email capture and the and the footer. So let's do that. Um, let's go into our um, our what's it called newsletter and let's rip out the part that's the real footer, which I think is this. Yeah. Okay, that's the footer. And then let's now put that into, I think I already have, do I already have a footer? Application layout, shared script tags. Okay, let's make a new one. Render shared footer. Put that file in here, underscore footer, because it's a partial, put that in there. And there we go, now our footer is back, that's the home page. Let's look at the package inserts page. Hiding this, of course. Yeah, we've got both. And now we look at our contribute page. And we've got a double, which means, which is the opportunity to delete the one that's already in there. Kill this section. Okay, we can kill this blue, wherever that came from. DVG blue. That is in our footer. I think we don't need that. Okay, now it looks like that. Home page looks. Ooh, this needs to be. Yeah, okay, I see. So on these pages, it needs to be back on blue. Um, so I'll say unless. Okay, cool. Let's let's do this. We're gonna customize this a little bit. Um, is it five bug? We're gonna debug in here. Um, is it just debug? Oh, I don't have binding pry on this on this app. Okay. Anyway, um, pages action. Let's try that. We're gonna basically just hide the blue unless it's on the right page. This is the home page. If I go to the contribute page, it's contribute. So on the contribute page, it's not bad to maybe have the back. Uh, no, on, the, on the, the contribute page is fine to be white. On the home page, we uh, need it to be blue, right? On on the package inserts page, we need it to be blue. Um, okay, so it's going to be blue unless we're on the contribute page. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in here. We're going to dynamically say um, BG blue unless the page 
is the contribute page. Let's see if that kind of quickly fixes our problem. Okay, hide this. All right, this is the all page. We've got a nice blue background. Home page, we've got a nice wrapper blue background. And on the contribute page, it's just white, which is fine. Okay, so that's fixed. Okay, now we've got our contribute design in. We've further um, scaled everything by just moving the footer to the footer partial. And we need to make this a Rails form, um, a Rails form to create a package insert. So if we were to go back to that um, wireframe step two, where we looked at the nouns and verbs, I wrote that we are going to have the package inserts table, that's our noun. We had all those properties, attributes like title, brand, website, submitter, email. Those are all things that are gonna be taken here, right? Um, and that our verbs were to create, which is like submitting one here on the contribute page, view, which is like sorting, you know, search page, which we've already built, and then edit, which is when admin changes status or fixes typos, right? So that's a functionality, fixing typos, changing the status, pending, approved, whatever, that's a functionality. Searching is a functionality, right? So you see how verbs are like the back end. Um, Attributes are the database table things, and the nouns are what we're showing in the front end. All right, uh, we need to make this a Rails form. So we're gonna kind of do what we've been doing where we copy and paste um, what's here, and then kind of recreate it with slightly different code, and then delete the original. Um, so I'm gonna zoom out here so we can see what there is. It's kind of a lot of stuff. So we, the images part, um, maybe we could do that later. Let's work on the description part. Looks like that's gonna be this div. So let's call it begin description, put a comment. And where's the end of this div? It's down here, end description. Now I'm gonna zoom back in. Okay, this is gonna be, uh, let's just start here with the form. Form for uh, package insert. What this is gonna do is it's gonna make a form that lets us insert stuff directly to the database. Um, however, right now, I think if I, if I try to run this, it's gonna give us problems because we don't have uh, a way uh, to actually create those. We haven't whitelisted a route. So right now, we only allow you to view package inserts. We also need to let you create package inserts. So that's part one. Let's put this whole div inside of there. Let's indent it a little bit. Let's reload our page because our highlighting was trash. All right, package insert. And uh, we also need to give ourselves a package insert. So this variable didn't come from nowhere. Uh, I created this. I could have called it something, right? Every variable, we get to name it. I'm gonna use the Rails standard and use the singular version of our, of our table name, package insert. But that means on this page, I have to instantiate that. So we have uh, a contribute page, and now we're gonna say package insert equals an in a newly instantiated package insert. So, okay, now we have it, but you know you don't see anything yet, right? Title. We could change this input to be the Rails way. Um, so we're gonna say uh, f dot uh, input or f dot text field. Let's see, and we're gonna give it the attribute that we're trying to do title, and then we're gonna give it the class. So it's sort of like when we converted our images, and then the ending of our tag has to be uh, percentage sign, placeholder type type. We're gonna get rid of all that for now. It might not be text field. All right, so now if I look at this, you see how it has a name attribute? We'll zoom in there. Let's move this to the bottom. This input has this name attribute, package insert title, and an ID. We did not hard code that in. By saying it is for the title attribute, Rails automatically generated an HTML element with those. That is gonna then map to those attributes 
in our database. So now we've made this input uh, Rails friendly, right? And now we can actually save this. And if we scroll up further, here's that form we made. It created this form class and everything we made now is inside of it. This hidden input has an authenticity token that will prevent people from trying to hit our server with this data remotely. They won't be able to do that because they would have to load this page and get this value. So a little bit of basic security built in by just adding one line of code. Uh, next, we can convert a couple more fields. Let's convert this uh, brand field, which might be the same, same classes. So that's why I copy pasted the whole thing. Yeah, same classes. I just need to change this from title to brand, kill it, reload. And now we can see that the brand input is also ready to go. So I kind of want to just see if we can make it submit. Um, let's go below the bottom of our form and make another, you know, another uh, input that's like a submit type. And this is gonna look bad, that's okay. F dot submit and give it like a label uh, upload, you know, for now. Let's just see what happens. Okay, looks like crap, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna click to submit. It's gonna hit our server with this data, but it's still not gonna save. And I will explain why. Um, started a post to package inserts. The action create could not be found for package inserts controller. So we go to our controller and all we have is a way to list stuff. We need to create, okay? Now let's try it again. It's still gonna fail, but we're just gonna go one step at a time so you can see why it's failing. Title here, brand, all right? Hit upload. It hit our server with that authenticity token, which is awesome, and then it gave us these attributes, the titles that we typed in. I typed in title here and I typed in brand, and then I uploaded. No template found, it doesn't know what to do, 204, nothing happened. All right, back here, we need to whitelist these params. This is something Rails calls uh, strong params, and you just take the singular of uh, your item. Package inserts is our table, package insert is singular, and uh, affix underscore params. And again, you don't have to do it this way. You really don't have to do it this way. But when you do it this way, you write less code and you're done faster and you can build apps in a day, which we've done many times on this channel. Um, we're gonna say, if package insert dot can create one with those params, meaning it passes any validations we have, um, you know, maybe we just go to the, to the, the home page. And then if they don't, maybe we go to the, uh, the contribution page for now and we'll, we'll fix this error uh, or alert. Let's go to our flashes, flash alert. See if we can make any of this fire. Root page, root path. That means it actually worked. See, we got to this code, so it actually worked. Let's just do it again now. Let's go to contribute page. Let's hide some of this. Um, Ray bands. <clears throat> Let's call a new Wayfair. I should have uh, made sure my my voice was here. Ray bands and uh, upload. And look at that. We got this nice little message. Thanks for your contribution. Okay. So now we're inserting into the database. We're not inserting all the fields we need. We have a few more inputs we need to Railsify, right? So let's just do that now. We need a website here. So I'm gonna just go on underneath here. This is gonna be the website. Uh, I might wanna add a placeholder, rayban.com, right? Delete the fake input. Let's go back to our contribute page. And we're just gonna go one input field at a time. See that? And here we actually have a placeholder gray text. I didn't have to hard code the class. Looks like that was, yeah, placeholder gray 200. We kind of like placeholder gray 300, I think. A little bit, a little bit darker. We should probably add placeholders for all the other ones too. Placeholder, Ray-Ban, and so on and so forth. Uh, new, uh, you know, sunglasses, I don't know so that people kind of understand, like you don't have to type in the exact product name if you don't want to. You can type in something kind of generic or new Wayfair sunglasses. And I'm probably not spelling this right at all. Okay, 
industry. Now this is where we want to change this from an input to a drop down. So we're going to go back to uh, to our um, our view all page and get that drop down that we already made. Let's just grab let's grab this one. We don't want the industry to be text field. Uh, actually, let's let's grab the the same industry we were using, right? Uh, insert index, the one that we already started writing industries. All right. How does that look? <laughs> okay. We don't actually care about type being like over on the uh, top. We can keep the type thing on the side. Let's get rid of this big input. And there we go. We got industry and a drop down. For now, good enough. Again, we'll change the color so that this has the green border. In fact, we can even try that now. Border two, border green 300. Border gray, no. Any other border words? And there we go. Now we got the green look. The radius is a little different. Radius is like how much the border is curved. Uh, rounded 3XL, okay. This one is not rounded 3XL. It's rounded medium, okay, let's kill that one. And look at that. Now our border is the same. Again, still not as big. Uh, PX6, PY4, okay, we're PY2. PL3, PR10, I don't even know what that means. Why would we do that? All right, look at that. It looks really a lot more native now until you click it, uh, but I'm not too concerned. Here you click and it's blue, here you click and it's purple, okay? So now let's go back to that. We're just looking for a class that handles outline non-text black, focus ring. Ah, let's get rid of this focus ring. Focus outline none, focus border indigo. We're gonna get rid of the stuff that's not the same. And now they're the same color on focus. I guess like indigo. Same border radius, looking really nice in my opinion. Um, and this is probably gonna have a, a prefixed one, you know, like select, select one, right? So now we wanna make that the Rails way. Um, same thing. Let's try to put it right below. F dot think select uh, we're selecting the industry and then we're going to provide it a collection and let's try just to apparel uh, food and see how badly I I did this okay objective form for uh, selection form for select Select option and tags. Select tag. Let's see if that fixed our page. Not yet. F dot select. We can also try to get rid of this collection word. Oh, got rid. Got to get rid of the comma. Okay. And look at that apparel and food. Great. So now we've got it the Rails way. Let's add, add back the classes that will make it look nice. Okay, we're not looking nice yet. good at all because oh, I added that to the to the input got it I need to add it to um, to the surrounding div okay a little bit better but still not still not right uh, but this is what we're sort of what we're wrestling with Input HTML might be the way to do it. And then this might put it around the, the full thing. We don't want it to be on the on the drop-down options. We want it to be on the uh, 
on the surrounding select class itself. Oh, good times. Okay, select ID, name, class, location. This one is on the select, the classes. And this one, the select itself does not have any. Real select add class. Uh-huh. See if that does it. There we go. Just take some Googling. All right. Now, we want to control all of these um, industries and we need to control them really from one centralized location because as we see, we let people select industries from the contribute page. We let people sort by industries on the search page and we're probably going to want to be able to change industries for uploads from the admin panel. So that's three places that we would need all these different options. We do not want to be copying and pasting them around the, uh, around the app. So we're gonna go ahead and put them in here. Maybe industries equals, and then we're gonna write, um, put them all in here. So let's take that, put it in here. Command D and delete. Delete, um, should have kept it there. Now comma. <laughs> Now I can that, that. And uh, that gets us a little bit closer. Okay, now we have an array of industries. And if we want to uh, access those at any time. Let's go into our Rails console, Rails C, package insert. We know that accesses that, that model industries, and we'll just grab those, right? So naturally, now we can just um, make options for each of those. So our collection is going to be right there. And now they're all there. So that's really nice because now anytime we want to add more options, we just go in here and add them. Or again, we can make this an application secret so that someone could just open up wherever we host our app, type in a, a, a new industry, hit enter, and everything would update on the app automatically. All the drop downs, everything would just work great. Uh, so I can kill this, this one and we might not even need this empty div surrounding our select either. So now we have a way to, to add a nice drop down. All right, we've got three string inputs, a nice industry drop down. Now we need these checkboxes, right? These, uh, these ones will work okay. These big green ones that look nice are not actually connected. So let's see how we can fix that. Got these SVGs, inputs, type checkbox, yeah. So I think, are these buttons? Um, it's actually, uh, Let's actually beautify this on one of those tools so we don't have to do it ourselves. Hey, Ryan, what's up, man? All right, Let's copy paste that. Now we've got it beautified. It'll be a little easier to work with. Groovy. Make sure we didn't break it when we beautified it. Okay, and what are these big green ones? These are SVGs, right? So we can kill the SVG and kill the button and then we won't have that issue. <laughs> kill the button, kill the SVG. See if that fixed the first one discount. Okay, still kind of like weird, um, you know, spacing, but uh, that's what we're gonna do for now kill the whole button in SVG. We'll try to add, we can add, try to add back that style later. Okay. All right. Um, 
we need this to be, uh, you can make these check boxes, you know, but then that lets them choose multiple. And if you look at our homepage design, we don't have a way to show more than one type here. So I think we should just let people make people choose one, which makes me think we should just go ahead and make this another drop down, because that's how our search layout is going to be as well, right? So insert type, and we need to now set those up here. Insert types, discount. We have a free offer, review request, and you know uh, what do we call it? Brand building or whatever. See if that looks okay. Back to our contribute page. Scroll down. Industry. Okay. And let's just change the label. Type. So I think that's how we're going to do it now. We don't want people to select multiple drop downs for now. We just don't have a way to handle it. So we're we're overriding a little bit. All right. And I don't think we really need these colons. Uh, nitpicking here, but three, four. Get rid of them all at one time. Done. Okay. Cool. I don't think we need all of that extra junk. Optional. Oh, brand website. We can just make it optional. All right. So now we can um, test out our form again. Let's do brand two, you know, uh, another product, brand two, brand two.com. Now we want this to definitely be a website. So we're going to. Um, actually change this uh, to type URL. There you go. When I try to submit, it says enter a URL. So that's good. Uh, these can be strings, whatever they want. We can make a minimum character counts, but for now we don't care. We're going to make them required true. Required true. Now if I reload, I try to hit submit, enter. You see it tells me uh, please, you have to fill out this, okay? Enter, try to submit again, and that worked. That's all I needed. But if I do put in a website and hit enter, it's gonna say it has to be a valid URL. Right, close enough. Uh, industry, these are not required, but we should make these required. The website is not required. You can simply just not add anything, and you're good to go. If you want it to be explicit that it's not required, you can say required false. What did I break? <laughs> Probably one of these it has to be in a different order. Yeah. If I want to make these required, I might have to do it in here. Let's try. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's how you make those required. You put it in there. And as you notice, that also took away our default, which was never really a default. So let's do, uh, I think it's called, it might be called default. Uh, default ASDF. Let's see. No, rail select form, not default value, but like uh, placeholder value. That's right, include blank. Could be include blank. Let's try it out here. There we go. That's how we get our like default value. Okay. Please select dot dot dot. And let's put that down in this drop down as well. Okay. Now these are required. Title, brand, website not required, but industry is required. Types required. Uh, let's call it uh, product three. Brand three, hit upload, and that uploaded. So now we can actually try to, um, to go ahead and modify our search page to show these things that we're able to add. We still haven't added the email, so we can obviously quickly add the email input, and we haven't added images. We'll do that in a little bit. 
Let's go back to our uh, full search page though. And uh, let's actually make sure our full search page does not render this visible. Let's make this invisible again. It's kind of annoying. Okay, instead of loading these hard-coded uh, hard ones, we can load um, ours from the actual database. So if you scroll down on here, we have uh, this little bit of code, package insert small. Package insert small is this little square. So let's open package insert small. We can keep it loading that hard-coded image because we are not uploading images yet, but we can change these types and whatever to be, to be dynamic. Um, so let's make those uh, variables. So let's assume we have a package insert in here. Package insert, and that is the, uh, what's the first thing gonna be? The type, right? Insert type. This next field, we're gonna make it, instead of electronics, it's gonna have the industry, right? And this next one is, instead of saying just smart sunglasses, is gonna be the title. Now, it doesn't know what this is yet, our app. We have to pass this package insert object into here so that we can access its attributes. So let's go back to our list view and we're gonna to need to pass in a, lo or a what's called a local. Let's say the package insert equals a package insert. Now even this, where are we gonna get this package insert here? Well, instead of six dot times do, um, we're gonna actually need to render through our, our um, package inserts. So now we're gonna say we're going through package inserts, right? Um, Okay, and we're gonna call those package inserts. If a lot of this stuff is really confusing, that's fine. I teach all of the Ruby stuff in a free course called Fundamentals at founderhacker.com slash fundamentals. Um, totally free, you can learn all of this important stuff. And, uh, and then after you finish that, you can join us in 24 hour MVP where we're gonna be doing things like this, building three different apps, easy, medium, and hard in five, six hours each, like we're doing today on the live stream. And uh, through that, I'm gonna teach more in depth, you know, why I'm doing things a certain way. We're gonna look at more documentation. We're gonna work with APIs. We're gonna do all kinds of cool stuff, tick payments. Um, so if this is confusing, that's fine. This video cannot really substitute as learning to code on the, the fundamental level. For that, you're going to want to uh, just take our fun at free fundamentals course. All right, package inserts. And, uh, to get that, see how we're working backwards? We're starting from the front end and we're working backwards to the back end. Um, we're gonna do exactly this, look at this. I put to do, package inserts equals package insert dot approved. For now, we don't have any way to say what's approved, what's rejected, so let's just grab them all and let's see what breaks. <laughs> Did you mean package inserts? Uh, package inserts, right. So because I, uh, this is a really weird thing, but when you, want to pass values into your partial, you have to say that it's a partial. I'm not sure why. Um, all right, cool, look at that. Title here, new Wayfarer, ASDF, right? Product three, these are all things that we added, which is pretty cool. And the reason why we're not seeing our types and industries, is you're thinking, hey, we plugged in industries, right? We made those required. That's because at our controller level, we are only submitting, we are only allowing these things to pass through. Now we're adding title, uh, industry, you know, insert type. So now we're actually gonna have to create some new ones. Let's go to our Rails console, package insert, and let's just get rid of them all. Cool. Let's go back to our contribute page and add a couple. New Wayfarer, <clears throat> Rayban, Rayban.com. Mm -hmm. Apparel, and it's a discount. Cool. Now let's go to our our uh, package inserts page and look at that. We have our new Wayfair. So now we're reading directly from the database. We can even go back to our home page and make sure the home page is doing the same thing. And let's just see without checking the code. Let's see if we can render them on the home page the same way, um, the exact same way. <laughs> Uh, with the same partial. Maybe the code here isn't any different, right? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Electronics food. 
go to our home page all package inserts smart sunglasses where did we put that smart sunglasses ah, six dot times two right what if we got rid of that We did the same thing here. So we just grab package inserts. We get rid of the six dot times do thing. Package insert. Because mm. it's in a different folder. We want to be able to access this package insert from everywhere. So we're going to move it from package insert small down to shared and then here say that it's in shared and it actually looks right right so i guess you use the designer use the same code so that's kind of sweet um that's pretty sweet let's even add a few to make sure the columns look okay and they do okay great now we need to go back to our list view and make sure that we say hey this is actually in the shared folder now um, now we can go back to package and search list view. So as we're building here, you're seeing, we just keep deleting code, which is awesome. So now we have one bit of 40 lines of code, right? Package insert small, um, that is going to dictate what this little column view looks like. Only one, even though we might render this on multiple pages, we only have to mess with it in one spot, which is awesome. I don't know why this would be, uh, a, a link. Just a class is good enough. Sweet. Well, I guess the title should, eh, it should be a link because we want to open up that individual one. Okay. Codes, codes cleaner and better. Okay. Printify this. Printify. Okay, we are loading from the database. We are saving all of those records. Um, we can now make our uh, drop downs cleaner here as well. So on this package inserts, see how we're still hard coding it? We really don't want that, right? Uh, we want it to look the way it looks on contribute, uh, which is just loading from our backend. So we want it to look like this. Um, so let's try that. I'm going to take what we have here. Um, we're not going to use a official Rails form, I guess, because we don't care about we don't care about that. We can just use JavaScript to grab whatever someone's choosing. We're not inserting into the thing into the database, so I don't care about using a Rails form. Um, but we do want to have that select form. So we're going to um, make our select. And this ID location, we don't care about any of that. We want the options to be from there. So we're going to grab these and loop through these. Dot each do industry, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And we're going to just make an option, option HTML tag. OK, let's take these classes that we used on our other thing. See if they look good at all. Here we go. Look at that. We're already looking better, closer to the original one. And if I delete this, does it fit in there OK? OK, and we don't think we need these classes either. Great. Okay, that looks cool. And uh, now we're just going to put it down here too. Except instead of industries, it's going to be insert types, right? All right, 
Not perfect, obviously. Maybe we can make this um, one fifth. Yeah, maybe we can make this like text align left or something like that. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But for now, at least we are loading things dynamically. I think this just shouldn't be one third. I think they shouldn't be set up like that. Yeah. Oh, and this definitely shouldn't be absolute right. Maybe that's why. I'm using the same classes. I don't even think they need to be absolute at all. Okay, there we go. Now I can get rid of the, the right zero not being used. That's when you have absolute inside a relative. Okay, looking pretty good. And then, um, you know, again, we probably want to have a, a default. And this can be the one that's selected. And select an industry. Let's see if that works okay. And then in here, select a type. Groovy. <laughs> oh, it's like loading every single time. Duh. Okay. Forgive me. All right. All right. Okay. No more. Uh, no more copy paste code. Every file keeps getting smaller, and the app is uh, now actually loading from the database. And we can even make this little uh, this little banner, this contribute banner. Let's go ahead and make this link directly to um, to the right place. Um, upload. Similarly, similarly, or the same way that there is um, a Rails way to do images, there's a Rails way to do links. And so instead of doing a uh, anchor tag, you do a link to tag, and then um, you can you can pass in a relative path like this, like contribute path, right? And as long as we name that path, yeah. Um, you can later say, hey, I want the contribute page to be like slash upload, right? And you can decide that in one spot of your app and everything that's pointing to contribute path will go to that new slash upload page, which is really nice. So upload now, boom. Now we're going to our contribute page, right? Groovy. We fixed our banner. Our contribute page needs to add images. We need to put this probably in the center not sure why it got why it got um, weird when we added our form but something about our form made it not made it not centered anymore so let's look at that maybe this needs to be like higher width but you know what we're going through today which I haven't done in other live streams usually we code every single thing from scratch here we're grabbing styles and HTML from a designer. Uh, and as you're seeing, there's new challenges. Um, when, you, when you get the designer work, we don't have to figure out pretty pixels and decide what colors look good or border radiuses or even the general layout, which is really great. But we do have to spend time just matching up uh, the designer's work with um, the Rails way or whatever framework you're using. So we, we kind of just figured out how to do that. We just need the form class. Um, let's just fix it for now, like hard code with 100%. And I might not have done that correctly. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Tried to give the form width of 100%. It didn't do much. 
and you can see it's not in there. So that uh, this form element does not have my class. I'm going to do this. Still does not have my style. Does it have a fake class? Still didn't take my new class. Might be HTML. Yeah, there we go. Great. Now it has my class, my style. Let's give it a class of W full, which I think is the same as style 100, and see if that's good. And we're still good. So, you know, we're kind of just <laughs> literally one thing at a time. Let's get a style to show up. Let's modify the outer form uh, element. Let's make a hard coded style, and then let's convert it to what we're using in this case. Uh, tailwind W full is the same as width equals 100. So that's good. We can make our button look a lot better. Our button actually should be down here. So let's do that now. This is the, the submit button. Uh, we want to use this nice looking button that says submit. However, this is just a, an anchor link. So let's uh, put this down here. But because we're going to be clicking a button down here, this form now also has to end below that. You can't end the form and then do your button, if that makes sense. So let's put this all the way at the bottom. We could also put it here. It doesn't really matter. I like to just have my form be wrapped exactly around what we're looking at. So I want my form to be right below this one, which is maybe this one. All right. After submit, here's uh, the, the classes we want. And the way we wrote it, the designer wrote it, is just the word submit. So let's comment out the hard-coded button. This is now, this should now be, look at that. This is actually an input of a value of submit. So now, if I try to click this, there we go. So new brand, uh, or let, let's call it cool app. Let's use my old company, FOMO. This is uh, sports. <laughs> and uh, review request, submit. There we go, there we go. And let's actually go ahead and make our nav work. Let's go to our header, underscore header for the partial. This browse button needs to go, needs to be a Rails link, so link to browse. And it needs to go to the um, view all, so package inserts path. That should be the list view class. Or underline. Okay. Let's see if that fixed our nav. Browse. Boom. We landed there. And now we've got um, this FOMO thing, cool app, and everything. And our homepage should have that too. Homepage has both of those as well. So awesome. Back to contribute. Let's fix that in the nav. Here's another, right? Broken link. It doesn't do anything. Make this the Rails way. Hi, Norm. Thanks for joining. Link to contribute. And this is going to be the contribute path. Yeah, we're two and a half hours in. Had some technical difficulties for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, so we'll see. I think this will be like around a six hour build, but maybe, maybe it will be longer. So now contribute goes to contribute, browse goes to browse, and that's working on every page. Awesome, because it's one partial, one header. It's a really nice way to do it. Some of this other stuff, there's images. Oh, there's a logo, okay. We can get the logo to work. Take a quick break from some of the backend stuff we were already getting into, and let's make some more things work. But see, you wouldn't want to be doing all this if we were hard coding the header in three different pages and hard coding the footer and hard coding, you know, even when we figured out that the single package insert fits is a partial and we can reuse it, that was a big win. Um, so you have to not just say, yeah, let's abstract the code or, or let's fix things. You have to determine when is the right time to do that. And it wasn't the right time for us to do that when basic things weren't even working. Okay, we're looking for a logo somewhere. Maybe we don't have it. 
do we have this file? App assets images. We do have this file, but it's an SVG. It's an SVG. Maybe we should just load it as it is. Oh, this might be only on mobile. Mobile's got to get fixed. Okay. Nav bar. This is a hidden nav bar. Okay. If it wasn't hidden, what would it look like? Ah, look at that. Kind of like a side nav. So this might be, yeah, this is like the mobile side nav, and we're going to have this as the logo. Okay, cool. And this might not be working correctly either. Um, so I might want to ask the designer about it. Here, 2022, uh, I want to quickly look for all instances of 2022, uh, not in app assets. So let's do bang app assets. It's in the footer, it's in the header. Schema, let's also ignore. It's really just footer and header. Let's open these up. And we're going to put embedded Ruby here, date.today.year. And then we'll never, ever, ever have to remember to log into our website. And, um, and change things. There we go. Now our footer's got the year and it will always have the correct year. Groovy, it's kind of amazing how many people don't do those basic things. Even great developers, they, they just hard code in certain things and then they realize two years later that they haven't updated the year in two years. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of things you can do well, even as a new developer, that are better practices than people who have been coding a long time. I'm gonna switch back to camera mode for a minute, webcam only, and have some food. So feel free to take a break yourself. Someone just brought me this, so we're going for some spicy eggs, bacon, and sausage. If there's anything you guys want me to talk more about, just let me know.
We're ready for round two. Bacon and eggs destroyed, sufficiently destroyed. Uh, if there's anything you guys want me to slow down on or speed up on, happy to adjust this. Uh, we've actually got a lot of it done in terms of, you know, like all of the front end. <laughs> and uh, we need to make our modal work and then we need an admin panel. <clears throat> Modal, admin panel, and uh, and image upload, obviously. Um, so we can work on image upload next, I suppose, and then at least just finish off that form, finish off the form with uh, emails as well, the submitter email. So let's jump into that. Okay, we have started tweaking the images here. Might have a couple more images left. Yeah, here's it. Another image for our logo. Let's zoom in. Logo for the nav. Let's get that done. Rails way. Nothing beats, with coding I think, nothing really beats repetition. Um, what we're doing is really monotonous uh, in many ways when you're taking someone's existing design code. But uh, if you kind of have the muscle memory to convert uh, a static image to a Rails style image, a static link to a Rails style link, then uh, you're gonna save a lot of time and it will make you more encouraged to work with designers. Otherwise, you're always gonna say, well, it's faster if I do it myself. Then you'll be doing that forever. All right, Let's see if we have anything visible in terms of a logo. Yeah, there we go. And now we've got this nice logo. So I can browse, click the logo, back, go back to the home page. Um, link to uh, root path do. Put that image in there. Boom. Great. Contribute, go back to the root path. Great. I think we've pretty much fixed. Uh, let's add the same thing here for the mobile for the mobile menu, which we haven't tested yet or fixed, but um, you know we'll get to that later. Mobile menu is like a finishing touch thing in my opinion. We don't really care right now uh, about that. Okay, let's go to contribute and let's add the submitter email field as well as the image upload. Submitter email, really easy. Let's do that first. Contribute page. We're gonna make this a rail style image, right? Rail style input. F dot text field, uh, submitter email. We're gonna do type email, that way it tries to validate the email. And that should be it. We'll add a placeholder, of course. Might be missing a comma, type email, and I am. Placeholder. Um, I don't know, jkim23 at gmail.com. And we don't need a type attribute, we already added that. We got an email, we have two now, right? Um, let's kill the first one. Placeholder looks a little bit too gray. Yeah, let's make it placeholder gray 300, a little bit, a little bit darker. Um, and let's make it required. Oh no, sorry, it's, it's not required. In case of following edits, um, okay, let's tweak this text. Um, additional info, we only are asking for their email. Um, so I don't really need to say additional info. In case you'd like to be notified when your submission goes live. For now, that's all we're gonna do with their email. You know, We'll message them if their notification goes live. So if I hit submit, it's gonna complain I don't have a title. If I hit submit, it's gonna complain I don't have a brand. It doesn't care about website. It doesn't care about email, those are optional. But if I hit submit, it's gonna care about an industry. And if I hit submit, it's gonna care about a type. Once I hit submit now, it will work, and then it will show up on both, of our, both our homepage and our search all page. Next, next let's add images. You also notice this whole time we've been coding, 
We have not done any git commits, just don't care. It just doesn't matter. Uh, we can start doing git commits after we deploy the first version to a server and people use it. Then of course I wanna do small changes one at a time. I wanna track them all. But right now, just don't care. Um, to do images, we actually first have to add it to our database. We're not even adding, we don't even have the ability to store images right now. So we're gonna run a migration. Might as well shut down our server because we're gonna to need to reboot the server anyway whenever you change a database table. Um, Rails G migration, we're gonna add images to package inserts. And the syntax I'm using here is just a special syntax that will figure out what I'm trying to do. But if, uh, if I just said, add some images to the package inserts table, I can certainly type that. I would just have to modify the, um, the database migration file to actually point it to what I'm trying to do. So there's lots of flavors here. Um, let's try that. So it created a migration file. And you can see, it's gonna add a column to the package inserts table called images, and it's gonna make it a string. So again, this is not what we want. We're gonna actually do active storage images and uh, get that quick guide. We want mini images, so let's go here. Um, Rails generate model images attachments. Let's see if that works. I'm not sure if that will work at all run the migration, we'll know right away. Yep, attachments not exist. Um, image attachments. Migration, I know how to do a migration from scratch. We're trying to do a uh, migration when we don't have the table, when we already have the table. Images attachments, okay, let's actually delete this file and do it again. It's going to be in our DB folder. Uh, really just do the same thing. Images, attachments. Let's see what that calls it. It didn't get it at all. Okay, add column to package inserts. Attachments. I've actually not done it this way. I've never really used active storage, which is the Rails built-in way to uh, attach images and stuff. I typically just do, um, uh, I, I point stuff to S3, Amazon S3, and then I add it that way. Storage blogs, storage attachments. You don't have to create an image model, image table. Take care of. Oh, interesting. Maybe that's what we're missing. Yeah. Okay, Rails active storage underscore install. Let's kill this other thing we're not using. Let's see. Okay, and then let's go to our package insert and try this. Has many uh, attached images, something like that. Has many attached images, yeah. Okay, well, let's run rail C. Let's get our last package insert and see if it, yeah, okay, it's got like images, which are blank, because there's none. But it seems like it kind of kind of worked. So we didn't actually have to add, yeah. We didn't have to add an image attribute to our package inserts. We just had to add this concept of attachments to our overall database. And then inside of our package insert model, we're saying, hey, the package insert model wants to use that, that feature. All right, and uh, 
let's see, let's go back to our insert controller. We have to whitelist this, right? And since we're whitelisting multiple, I think we just do this. Images, yeah, like that, just like that. Okay, and then on the form, on the form, uh, form, file, form for image. See how we had form for it. yeah f dot label f dot file field that might be what it is. Let's try that. We're gonna put that at uh, the top of our contribute page on one of these one of these things right here. Click or drop an image here. Oh, and then we gotta rerun our server. Let's see. Right now, we're just gonna be storing these images on our local server, but obviously we are gonna to want to put these somewhere public, uh, like on Amazon or something like that. It's complaining about the form, that's because I don't start the form until way down here. So let's move the beginning of the form till, uh, to somewhere further up. There we go. Okay, just choose file. Okay, sweet, sweet. Um, now obviously, I don't like how that looks, so let's see if we can actually, I don't know, click, let's see if I can just start changing these one at a time. Choose file. Um, maybe we can make it, we have to decide if we want to try to make this form field thing look like this nice box, or if we want to hide the form field thing and have this nice box, which is already designed for us, Maybe this could like secretly click the form field thing, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, might be faster to do what I just mentioned, the hack, but probably better coding to just do this right. So um, for example, if we, if we make this class the other class, what would happen? Oh, this got a big SVG. Mm. What if I try to do, do, let me try to put this whole thing in there. Okay, it disappears. Okay, the thing we're looking for is this div inside of the button, which is what we did. Okay. Rails, what's this called? File field? File field style. Display none. Oh, you just throw it in there and you make it hidden, I guess. Let's try that. It's kind of what we started to do. So I put it inside of here. Okay and then just hide it. And then we need it we need everywhere to click on that thing. This word file field. Upload image. Okay. insert image visible okay it's hidden now but because it's hidden <laughs> uh, we can't click it seeing it at all. Okay. 
All right, then let's just say if you click anywhere on this div, div, let's say upload image box. Let's make a little JavaScript and then we'll clean it up that it's just going to trigger a click on this um, on this one. Let's see if that did the trick, does the trick. Okay, cool. Um, JavaScript get element by ID. Yeah, then let's just do that. Um, I'm not going to do this. We're going to do on click equals um, start image upload, something like that. All right. And then in here, we're going to have a function start image upload. And it's going to trigger that. And it's going to get the package insert image and click it. And there we go. Now this isn't as sexy as drag and dropping. So for now, click to add an image. We're just gonna keep it really simple. Click to add an image, right? And really all of those can be the same way. All of these can have this on click, start image upload. And again, we might have to really tweak this and let's put this script down at the bottom. Start image upload. On click, start image upload. Um, each of these really are. On click, start image upload. Image two, three, and four. Okay, let's see if that kind of does the trick. Click, upload, click, upload. Great. We'll make at least one, I guess, required, right? So required true. If I try to hit submit now, it's complaining about title. I really want it to complain about not having an image either. Okay, it didn't let me submit, which is good, but yeah, uh, package is not focusable. Right. Um, because we have it displayed none. If I were to get rid of this, would it give us an error if I try to hit submit? It does. Please choose a file. Hmm. Maybe I keep it not display none, but I give it a low Z index. So it's behind that stuff. All right, now if I click. Oh, great. Look at that. Look at that. So it's not hacky. We're not displaying none. We're just putting it underneath. And then we get the benefit of these client side validations. Uh, maybe input HTML and then a style. Hmm. Actually, might be a way to do Tailwind CSS Z index. as a class. Using a negative Z dash one. Let's see if that does it. Okay, I still see it. Negative Z dash 10. Don't see it, okay. Let's hit submit. And it goes up here and says you have to add an image. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, now let's, uh, Let's try this with real Ray-Ban. These are my glasses of choice. And again, this isn't a package insert, right? Uh, Ray-Ban, I don't know, coupon. Yeah, something like this, right? We want something like this. Ray-Ban insert. Okay, now, the image I think is in there, but we're not previewing it. So we're gonna do another little search, T 
to see how to, you know, to how to preview that in the way we like it. Industry apparel. It's a discount, right? Um, okay. All right, since it's there. Okay, new Wayfair. These are probably it. Something like that. Oh, we're repeating the same ones twice, right? These are probably it. Um, let's go ahead and go into our, our database and grab that last package insert. Dot count. There should be, oh, there should be one and there's none. Uh, so the image did not go through. The image did not go through. That's fine. Let's go back to our uh, stuff here. Which is params. Image did not go through. And let's look at our server logs to see if an image data was actually sent. So let's look for a post request. Here we go. Here's parameters. You can see image data was sent. It inserted a package insert. Here's the image data. See if it's anywhere in our in our server. Doesn't seem to be. So it's in there. Package insert controller. Okay. Let's try just image and see if that makes any difference. Okay, contribute. SDF, I just want to see if this gets anything in there. Let's clear our server logs before we hit submit. All right, unpermitted parameter submitter email. Okay, that's fine, ignore that. An attribute image, right? So images is correct. Images is correct. Um, package insert. All right. What's gonna try this? We're going to grab the params and try to do it by hand. Params. Here's our params. All right. Params. Um, we're going to. Um, debug this. We won't have to touch this again. Right. Right. Okay. Here we go. We're going to submit again. <clears throat> See why this image isn't going through. So here's our params. Now we get to work with this in real time. We should be able to work this in real time. Binding out break. And let's go ahead and whitelist our submitter email as well. It's complaining about that, but that has nothing to do with what we're working on. Run just the real server. Let's go ahead and re-grab this image. Submit params. There we go. Now we're working with this stuff. Package insert params. You can see the images are not in there. Params. Params.keys. Params. Package insert.keys. 
image. It's just one image. Um, so that's probably what's going on. And that's what's going on. So if we were to actually change this to, has one attached image, we're just gonna make it work and then add more. if I should actually change this to images instead of image. All right. Let's rerun this. Servers are running. Shut down some servers. Gross. Okay. This is something not so fun, but uh, okay. Okay, I'll see if I can run the server. All right, let's keep that up. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. We've now changed our file field to images instead of image, and it didn't error on us. So I think that might be what was going on. And now I need to change our click listener to, uh, to click on the one that's got the ID of package insert images. All right. Ray-Ban, new ray -Ban. Uh, package insert params. Does this include the image? Next. This debugger, this new debugger in Rails is like total trash. I hate it. And uh, it's making us do what you just saw me do. Um, might have figured it out. <clears throat> Looks like uh, we were using image in one spot and images in one spot and uh, so the the parameter was not being acknowledged. It was not being uh, approved by our security setup. Apparel discount. Okay so something happened. Now let's look and see if there's actually anything in there in our database if the image was stored. Transaction created an insert, but yeah, see, unpermitted parameter images. Package insert images. Um, but it is permitted. So. S 
so no images okay it's inside of here rails active storage parameter images this is good times Direct upload false. Images. Do you need to touch images? Images, multiple true, direct upload false. Hmm, let's try that. Good times, good times. Whoa, whoa. I think I can also make this not false as a string. Let's see. Did a lot more stuff there. Look at that. Insert into active storage attachment. Looks like we saved our image. Um, so let's grab our last one. Package insert.last pi.images. And there's one. Dot first dot URL or um, you know. Please set active storage current URL options. Can I generate URL for using disk service? Okay. Great. Wonderful. Um, now we can just go configure how we're storing the images. I think it's in config storage, temp storage. Is it in there? Yeah, it should be in there. Okay, great. We're saving our images. And we could go ahead and put these on S3 so we're not figuring out how to do storage two different ways. Just uh, Put them into S3. So let me change to webcam only as I uh, get us logged into our S3 account and create some type of credentials. Doobie -doo -boo. Alex, the yeah, so in a controller permitted parameters, when you're going to do multiple, yeah, you, you, uh, you do it that way. But otherwise, yeah, that could be a problem because it does need to be symbolized if it's a single key. Get reviews, AWS. I'm just logging into AWS now. And um, if this was a brand new project from scratch or like not a company, I would just let you see the AWS keys and then I would swap them later. And I mean, I guess I can still kind of show you what's going on. Um, yeah, let's do... Let's do a, a couple things here. Let's go back to screen share. We're going to make a bucket. <clears throat> insert booth dev and like insert booth prod, something like that. Don't block public access. Easy mode. Okay, let's make insert booth dash uh, prod. And that's what we'll use on um, production server. Might change these policies later. S3 is just gonna be like a Dropbox folder. <laughs> We're just gonna put images in here. Um, management. Okay, now I'm gonna go to uh, make some new credentials, and that's where I'll probably turn off the web camera really quickly. Um, let's do that. Let's make...
Okay, great. Credentials. Great. Create access key. to make a new user and then make an access key. So just another moment or two. <clears throat> okay, cool. I got new credentials. just adding the credentials now and then we should be good to go and we should be able to start uploading. Amazon S3 secret. Amazon S3. US East 2, I think it's US East 2, let's see. We're almost done. I just can't, I, sorry, I can't let you guys see the password. <laughs> uh, US East 2. And it is insert booth dash dev. Okay, let's switch back to uh, to screen share. Make sure nothing's uh, showing up. Okay, back to screen share. All right, so in here, uh, this storage YAML, we're saying, hey, we're creating a service to point stuff that's going to be stored. In this case, images for package inserts. So I've set up this bucket. And we're gonna go here and say that the service I wanna use is the one called Amazon Dev. Later, we're gonna make this um, you know, point to dev or prod you know, uh, dynamically. But for now, we're gonna do it this way. So let's see if I can uh, go back to our place, upload, um, we can delete all these pages, contribute the Ray-Ban again, not configure service Amazon dead dev. I might need to uh, to reboot the server because we added a new config. S three. Oh my. Um, ah, I see. Yeah, we need to add uh, S three. AWS. Yes, I need to add this gym. Okay. I used to keep this included in uh, the speed rail, but I didn't. I built a lot of apps without requiring anything uploading, so I didn't want to uh, always add all of this extra code. But now we're adding it back. Yeah, it adds a lot of little libraries. Okay. Now we've got the S3 adapter, I believe. Put our Ray-Ban insert. Okay, something happened here. It access key provided does not exist in our records. 
Hmm. Okay. So I guess that means the image did not get pushed up here. I might need to double check my my passwords, turning back off uh, the screen access so I can just double check that. Maybe I pasted something wrong. <clears throat> Amazon S3 secret, Amazon S3 access key. Oh, I think I know what happened. this in in YAML. My uh, my storage passwords file isn't accessing the um, Let's see if this works. Okay, back to screen share. Okay. Let's see if that does the trick. All right, rebooting this, <clears throat> rebooting the server. Live streaming uh, something with any type of password is uh, non-trivial. Maybe I should have a third monitor, okay. Let's get this all filled in. Another little tip that I'm not using, I'm not using my own advice right now, is to make these fields not required when you're trying to test something really specific, right? We, um, we, uh, we're just trying to test images, so I could turn off the requirement for all those other fields. And look at that. We just, I think, have a working upload. Let's look at the URL. Okay, we wanna to try to get a direct link to the image. S3 URI, that's gonna be the same thing. Let's get this open. There we go, should be public. All right, very, very good. Now let's try to see if that image wouldn't show up um, in our package insert, package insert small, partial. Uh, here we're just hard coding this image. Now we're gonna start putting in a direct link to the image. So let's go to, uh, let's grab our last package insert Images, grab the first image, image dot, I don't know, URL. Does this image work if I were to go to it in the browser? <laughs> Looks good to me. Looks good to me. So we're just going to grab the package inserts uh, images dot first dot URL. Let's see what happens now when we go to our uh, browse page. Image tag, package insert, images that first URL. Ah, they don't all have your images. They don't all have images. Um, so package insert dot last dot ID. Package, so let's delete all of them except that one. Dot where ID, where, where ID is not 15. Where not ID is 15. How many is that? We're gonna delete seven. 
we're never going to have a package insert without an image. We're going to require images. So we can just go ahead and delete it. And look at that. Now we're reading directly from our database. This looks a little whack, right? We might want to do something where we, we stretch the image and like fit the image. Here says object cover with full. There's probably a better, there's probably a better object fit option here. Yeah, look at that. See, this gets us like stretchy, scale down. Scale down is not bad. Uh, revert, hmm. Contain, maybe we just go with object center, object contain for now. Okay, look at that. So now we're inserting images. We can upload, add email. We got required fields. Let's try it one more time and see if it's even possible with our current setup to add multiple images. I'm gonna uh, do more Ray-Ban you know, coupons and let's just add like a coupon back. Okay, we got this one. Let's say that the back one is like this, something like that. Ray-Ban insert back. I have no idea if, uh, if this will override our first image or actually attach multiple images. We're about to find out. Rebird insert back, Ray-Ban insert front. No idea. New Wayfarer, you know, 2x, I don't know. Ray-Ban apparel discount. And just for kicks, let's make sure that my email can get in there. Okay, so now we've got two. Um, I think that the back override overrided the front. Let's see, package insert.last, pi.images.count, just one. Yeah, good times. So I think something about um, the way I'm doing the form on the contribute tab, we're only grabbing one. File field images, multiple true, direct upload false. Active storage, multiple files. File field photos, multiple true. We've done all that. Ah, uh, you know what? I think Painfully straightforward. Oh, that worked. We can't remove an already chosen file. Okay, so the user either has to, watch this, the user either has to select multiple images here. That's what that multiple true flag provided. Let's call it V3. Look at that, this will now have both. So we can get the last package insert, images.count should have two, it does have two. Um, but we'd rather kind of do a live preview and then let them do it and you can do it like this. You can just have, still can't remove an already chosen file in order to actually show files, it looks terrible. Blah, 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 okay, I can copy paste some code <laughs> to um, data action. Nice, maybe I'll add this. But I'm okay with just uh, simplifying and uh, adding it multiple times for now. It's really not a big deal. And letting each one be multiple, cool. So images, and then down here, we're gonna do the same thing. This SVG. Span and then that. SVG span and then that. Okay. Let's go to contribute. Let's try to. Mm, that Z10 is not good enough here. Maybe it needs to be some other even lower. Negative 50, negative 100, negative 
negative 1,000, negative 10,000. Huh, it is not hiding it there. Interesting. It is not interested in uh, loading behind there. Inside the button, inside the div, inside the button, inside the div, to the button, inside the div. In either case, we can copy paste this file um, and keep adding images. What does that look like? This one is an input package insert images. Package insert images. Hmm. You know, we can YOLO swag this out and have one big image thing. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Save this for later. Now we've got thing four images below. Side images, front, back, etc. We're gonna really simplify this. Okay, click to add images. We're trying to live stream and build quickly. So front and back. Um, new Wayfair, front, back, let's make sure it worked, apparel, discount, okay, Wayfair, front, back, let's grab that last package insert, there should be two, and there are two, we're happy, all right, now let's get our modal. And then we'll get our search, which gets us into the back end. And that's really like the whole back end for the consumer experience. We've already built upload and they can search. Then we just build our admin panel, which is a little more copy paste front end code. Fake filler. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, right on. Thanks for sharing. So I guess it kind of like scrapes the page. You can click a field, type in what you want, click a field, type in what you want, and it will just repeat it. That's pretty sweet. That's sweet. Um, okay, yeah, maybe I'll try that sometime. All right, so we got all that debugged. Let's add our modal. Here's the not so fun part. So if we go to our package insert uh, large, we called it like a large, right? That's our package insert big, okay. We have it on invisible mode. Here's what it would look like, okay. Uh, we have a few options here. Uh, one would really be to just make this a modal that only exists once on the page. We pop this up and we fill in the attributes. And I think that's kind of the way to do it. Um, so to get us started there, let's set it to invisible. Let's call this the, uh, the modal, okay? And then let's make it so that when you click one of these, it removes the invisible class and starts filling in details. There's a few ways to do modals. It knows the contents of the field creates a fake. Yeah, right on. That's sweet. All right, um, we're going to start adding new attributes to to these fields. Not new things that the user sees, but uh, some event listeners. So if we go back to our package index file, which has them all listed, we have our our insert small little thing. We're going to just work on our small, and we're going to look on our big. So we're gonna add stuff to this small so that the big one uh, opens up when the small one is clicked. So first, let's just give it an ID. Um, maybe we don't even need that. We just need to on-click, actually. On-click, it could just pull in, um, you know, open modal, okay? And we can pass in ourself, pass in ourself. Um, and then uh, we can give ourselves a data, 
package insert ID. This could be anything, but there's a thing in, in HTML and JavaScript, data attributes, where you just prefix data and then you can do anything you want. Package insert uh, dot ID. All right, and then back on our index page, uh, package index, we only need JavaScript once that says, hey, there's a function called open modal. That is going to take the modal document get element by ID modal, and it's going to uh, remove class classes dot class list maybe dot remove invisible. Let's see if that does anything. Click, and you saw that the modal showed up. Great, great. Um, on click of the div. Okay. Um, I can remove this link so that really when you click anywhere in the div, right, it should just sort of be a link. Let's see. Cool. All right. Now, of course, the modal itself, we need to have a way for it to go away. <laughs> um, this is the part that needs to be invisible and it will make everything go away. So um, let's let's basically say... If you click anywhere on this modal area, well, not the inner area, but if you click on the outer area or the X, for now we'll just make it the X. Or if you click like the escape button, something like that. Okay, SVG, let's grab this SVG. And uh, on click, let's say close modal, okay? And this can be in here for now. And all we're going to do is grab that same thing, grab the parent modal, classless, and then just add back invisible for now. So I click a thing, opens the modal, click anywhere, nothing happens, click the X, closes the modal. Very, very simple. And then uh, we probably also want to let the escape key do something. So um, maybe add event listener key up, maybe. Okay, escape key. Escape key is code escape. Sometimes they have like key numbers, IDs, key code 27. Okay, so now we're gonna also trigger close modal if they click the escape key. Uh, and that we can only, we only need to set up once as well. So document.add event to listener. Um, on, uh, on key up. We're gonna say key if e dot key code equals 27 because that seems to be the escape key then we're going to close the modal okay let's see escape close escape close or click and this close great i think it's a really simple way obviously it'd be nice to like click this gray area but if we do that the gray area is apparent to all of the non-gray area so we have to add some blockers so that we get the outside I've done this before, it's not a huge deal, but for now, I just don't care that much. And so we'll just go with this uh, escape key or clicking the X. Great, open and close. Now we wanna actually put the right data inside the modal, right? Because obviously clicking here is just you know grabbing, grabbing the same stuff. Now we could take all of the stuff that's here, so these three fields, and we can pass them through, right? But we'd also then have all these image URLs that we have to pass through. We could try that. The other option is to click and then have this make an API request for that modal's um, content. I guess we'll try the simple way first, but if it feels slow, then um, we'll switch. Uh, because the way we have to do it if we, um, if we don't make API requests is when we load this page, we have to grab all the images for all of the items. We don't have to load the images, but we have to 
load the images from our database. We have to fetch the images out of our database. So it's just a slightly bigger, um, slightly bigger database retrieval uh, operation. But let's just try that. Uh, so yeah, um, okay. Open modal will then have, let's see, open modal is now gonna do a couple different things. Um, first, let's just make a modal, package insert modal, and just grab it once so we're not grabbing it all the time. Modal.classlist, invisible, stuff like that. All right, when we open the modal, we want to also fill in these details. Um, here's our modal. So this like type discount brand, this needs to be all changed. So we're gonna make these empty. And then, um, oh, brand is good. Start adding IDs. So, you know, modal uh, brand. Right. These are going to make these uniquely identif identifiable. Modal, uh, I'll just call it insert type so it matches our database. And up here we had like an H2 here, right here. We call this modal uh, title, right? This is going to be ID modal industry. And about right type brand uh, we probably need a URL to that brand yep link to so that means this is now going to need to be not the rail style because we're not loading the data from the back end we're loading it dynamically so we just need to go back to making it a regular link we don't know what this is going to be yet so we'll leave it blank and we'll say modal uh, website right so here's how this is gonna work. Someone's gonna click. We're gonna then dynamically with JavaScript fill in all these fields. So you can see how this is gonna work now. Get element by ID modal title. New Wayfair. Right? So we're just gonna do that kind of thing on this open modal command. Very simple. Um, let's get our modal brand, modal website, modal insert type, modal industry. And what it's gonna equal over here is gonna have to be taken from the thing that clicked it. So this open modal, open modal, we're passing in this, right? Why are we passing in this? Because we wanna be able to have access to all that stuff, data, um, modal title equals like that we don't actually use the id for now we don't care maybe later data modal title uh, data modal uh, brand data mobile website data mobile modal insert type and then industry okay and then of course we're just putting in the same data we're already showing, right? We're putting in package insert, right? Dot insert type, package insert dot title. So I'll show you how this what what's actually going on here. Let's refresh the page. You won't see any difference, but if they look at this, this parent div has all of those attributes stored twice. So we see new Wayfarer discount apparel. Here we see new Wayfarer, Ray-Ban discount apparel, right? We see it all twice. And then when you click, it's gonna dynamically fill those in. So now let's do that on this open modal. And this is gonna be, uh, you know, package insert. It's gonna be package insert. Um, let's actually debugger this. So 
We can make sure we see how we're getting the data attributes. Click this. Now we're in debug mode. Package insert. Huh, look at that. Can't touch it. Package insert. Dot. We're going to get the data attribute. Data set. See that? Now we've got all these fields that we can access. And you see how they turned in from dashes, modal dash website, to to this camel case, and that's what JavaScript does when it uh, parses HTML or, or really anything. Uh, dash modal title. Okay, so that's our sort of format. Modal brand, modal website, modal insert type, modal industry. Let's see what happens. Let's get rid of our debugger. So see, we open the we open the modal and then we fill in these details. Look at that. Our types are missing. Uh, I think type it says not set property of null inner text. Okay, we're not seeing our industry or type. Modal insert type. We might not have done that correctly. Modal insert type. Yeah, should be fine. Let's look. Type is ASDF. Okay, so it had a problem with that. Modal insert type, and it couldn't get our industry. Maybe I didn't put it. Um, insert small. Maybe I didn't put it in here. Data model title, brand, website, insert type, industry. Data model, industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have to probably insert type like that. No, that should be right. Okay, let's debug her again. Type and industry are coming in blank. The data set. Modal industry, modal insert type. Modal industry, modal, oh, you know, it's because some of them I think we might have had blank. Modal insert type. That's right, modal industry. Modal website. Okay, let's open up the most recent ones. Cannot set properties of null. Huh. It's having trouble finding setting inner text. Okay. Let's get one at a time. Modal title, brand, website are working fine. Title, brand, and website. Uh, we maybe didn't have a website for some of these. Yeah. What about this one? Do I have a website? No, no website. Ah, and our website is actually supposed to not be in a text. Got it. <laughs> Got it. I think this, this one's breaking and it's halting the next two. Okay, our link is not an inner text, it's an anchor tag, so obviously we need to replace the ahref, not some inner text. Um, let's do brand, and we wrap that here. Modal website, href needs to be replaced. Let's try that again. Modal brand, document. I think I need to do property dot um, href element by D modal website. Ah, typo. Oh, oh, oh. yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, wonderful. All right, look at that. Now we've got our type. Everything was fine. It's just I had a typo. Typo halted the uh, halted the uh, the execution of the JavaScript because I didn't have a try catch error in place. Uh, and most of these don't have websites, but this one might. Um, 
some of these maybe I just didn't put the websites in because we were testing okay yeah let's add one more make sure the website is working Wayfarer with site Ray-Ban all right Jim Bob at Gmail submitted this excellent package insert. Okay, Wayfair with the website, and that goes to rayband.com. Um, failed to execute, not a valid selector. It wants to go there, rayband.com. Let's make sure it's also going to open in a new tab. There we go. Groovy. And we got all, uh, and then our images, right? However many images we have. So uh, here we've hard coded the main image. Obviously, this is going to be the first image. But earlier over here in our package insert small, we did uh, images.first.url. Pretty gross. We want to have a better way to grab the first image or like the primary image. So we're going to just make a new function primary image URL and images.first.url. And uh, now we can just replace that here. And let's make sure that's working fine. And still works fine. And likewise, we're going to then put that primary image URL in here. Data modal um, primary image URL equals, you know, package insert primary image URL. Okay. Okay, and then in this modal itself, we're also going to put that modal primary image URL, uh, not dot uh, href, not inner text, but source, and it's going to be primary image URL, modal primary image URL, and then let's go up to that image in uh, in this modal. And again, we have to now make this the old school way, not uh, the Rails way. Class can be the same. Great. And I give it an ID. Modal primary image URL. Let's see if this puts that one in there. Great. Put this one in there. Great. Put that one back in there. Great. Another thing we can do is uh, might speed up or not speed up, but make the UX a little bit better. Is first put all the fields in there, and as the last step, remove the invisible class. So we sort of prepare the modal. Um, we'll see. All right. Now we've got these small images. Small images we had just hard coded four, right? But there won't always be four. Um, so here we're going to actually have to basically say like thumbnail container or modal thumbnail container and then create an element underneath um, make sure that these elements are like the same one fourth don't know why this has let's, if I get rid of those and just duplicate this two more times will the modals look okay let's see yeah those look just fine all right so we're going to have just one element that we recreate and we insert in a new image. So again, we're going to go back to, uh, to images here. Add the same classes. Okay. Um, we're going to try to create that kind of image. We could put in handlebars here or something so that we can sort of programmatically in one line of code create um, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Mm. But the other thing we can do is, yeah, maybe we should just use handlebars. Close modal. Let's see. 
images. Let's make a new function. Populate thumbnails. And we're going to pass in again the package insert, which is going to have all those thumbnail URLs. All the Amazon, AWS, S3 URLs. Mm, we're going to first uh, let thumbnail container equal that that area we just made here. Mm, let's see. And uh, package insert dot data set dot modal I don't know thumbnail URLs for each. So in other words, uh, we're going to put a bunch of uh, these other image URLs in an array inside of this small thing here. Up here where we're putting all those other things uh, on package insert small. I don't know why I keep deleting that. Could even make this look a little more easy to understand. That should still work as is. Okay, everything's looking good. And now we're gonna do data modal uh, thumbnail URLs. And now we need a new function. So we're gonna go back to our package insert model and make a new function called thumbnail URLs. And we're gonna say images.map URL, uh, maybe minus primary image URL. Uh, so we're going to get all of these, because see, if I do package insert.images, um, there's too much stuff. There's all these fields, like the title of the image, and if it's a JPEG or the content type, see all these attributes. So we're going to just do map and just give us the direct URL to them, but then subtract the URL. Um, Package insert dot five eighteen. Let's see if that does anything. If you add new functions and you already have uh, something saved, it's going to give you errors or something in your console. You have to sort of regenerate it. All right, no new version string into array. Ah, wrap that in array. Okay, maybe this will work. Yeah, dot count, yeah. So now our thumbnail images could actually be everything but the primary, or we can just have it be all of them. I guess we can have it be all of them. That's sort of in the spirit of what the designer did. Um, so cool, package insert dot thumbnail um, URLs. Let's say thumbnail image URLs. So primary image URL, thumbnail image URLs. Just, I think this naming's gonna be a little bit better. Thumbnail image URLs. And uh, we also have to probably make sure that that's going to look like an array that's parsable by JavaScript. So we just added that in, in Ruby. If I go up to this here, data, modal, thumbnail URLs, it looks okay, but um, let's see. Let's go into debugger and see if we need to, uh, to parse it differently. Uh, let's populate thumbnail URLs and um, debugger this to make sure it's parsable. All right, okay, package insert, dot data set, modal, thumbnail, URLs. You see how this is like a string? This is not an array. So if I were to say type of, it's a string. So we want to, let's see, there we go. Now if I do type of a JSON parse, it's an object. Um, and then I can do length and get stuff in there. Okay, cool. So uh, we're gonna first turn that into array. Let thumbnail URLs equals json.parse. Um, really just this whole thing. Get rid of dot length. Okay, now we wanna do thumbnail URLs and we wanna loop through those. Uh, 
now let's make sure this works. There we go. We can keep um, we can keep this console. So the, the, the poor man's way to debug in JavaScript is to just console out everything you're doing. So we can say like setting thumbnail and then pass in that URL. This is all junk, okay. Let's see if that kind of gets us closer. Setting a thumbnail, great. Let's get the one with the images and see if it says setting thumbnail, setting thumbnail. Great, so it's trying to set all the different thumbnails. Great, now we need to actually do the thumbnail thing, which is gonna in entail package big, um, regenerating one of these divs each time. Okay. I think this whole thing, this whole button thing. All right. Let's see. Uh, I just really don't want to use handlebars for one tiny thing, but maybe we'll use it somewhere else in the app. Handlebars is like the Rails partial, like this, how we're loading it in the partial. But Rails partials only load once from the server. Um, there's new ways to sort of make Rails partials load client side as many times as you want, but um, that's what kind of must uh, handlebars is useful for. You can um, load handlebars once on the page. We'll just put it here instead of on our whole app. Now we can have our own little partial, yeah, template. And um, you'll see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, let's just load, yeah, script. No, let's put this in here. Bar. Uh, let's put this inside of here. Thumbnail template and we're just going to give it all this code from our big insert so this whole like button thumbnail thing I think it's all this let's see if this does the trick or not mm. Okay, and then our attributes are mapped in with this double curly bra bracket. Um, I don't know, thumbnail URL, okay. And I think because I did double quotes here, I should wrap this whole template in single quotes or it's gonna uh, cancel itself out. Okay, and now we're just following along. Um, if we wanna paste our template, I haven't used this in a while. Let's make sure that this did what it's supposed to do. Console log out our template. Okay, so in here we're gonna say our template is called thumbnail template. And our attribute is called thumbnail URL. And the value of that is going to be this URL that we're iterating through. So you can see, look at that. We're trying to plant that whole button. All right, great. And now we want to actually insert it onto the page there. Insert template to div. Not attributes. Bum -ba -dum -bum, bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -bum -bum. Template. Okay, let's actually do that. Let's actually now get our um, our thumbnail container. 
and append this filled out template and see if that just appends the raw code and if it does the job. Okay, it appended, uh, but it didn't interpret it as raw HTML. Here's our thumbnail container. Here's our button. And yeah, it did this one as a string. Okay, JavaScript append. I think it's not append. Insert adjacent HTML before end. That could be it. There's a lot of ways to do this. We're gonna see if we're just trying to do it as quickly as possible. There we go, look at that. Look at that, we're adding it all. Okay, cool, and then um, we need to go back to our big one and kill this like dead image. So this was our template. We don't wanna load an empty template every time. This is gonna be empty, right? And here is where we, you know, dynamically insert thumbs. So front, back, and there we go. Uh, now, of course, we need to make it so that when you click one, uh, it makes this one big. So our big one, modal primary image, okay? We need to add an event listener on each of these. Uh, to do that, uh, let's just modify our template here. On click, uh, we're gonna say uh, set as primary image. Uh, set thumbnail, I don't know, as primary image, okay? And that function we also only need to really define once. Uh, pass in itself. Um, and let's go ahead and data image URL. Let's again type this in twice. We're gonna have a URL here so that we're storing it, something we can pass around easily. And then we're gonna have it um, uh, thumbnail. We're gonna say thumbnail.dataset. What is it? What do we just call it? Data image URL, image URL. All right, and we're gonna grab the main one, the, the primary one, get element by ID. And the ID, the main one is this one. Source equals that. Let's see. That one's got just one. Okay, something went wrong. Let's try. See, I'm clicking this. Data image URL equals. Mm, it's not passed in. Thumbnail URL, that's why. There we go. Let's try. There we go. Working thumbnails. So it's not fancy. Uh, we don't have a bunch of like animations and stuff, but it like does what it's supposed to do, right? I guess this one we added four. Ah, you know what it is? We are adding and adding and adding. Look at this. I'm adding more and more thumbnails. We have to reset when we close the modal. So this, uh, Thumbnail container, which we use here, we also want to use it somewhere else. So let's, instead of making it a let scoped variable, let's uh, make it a global variable and thumbnail container. And then as part of our close modal, thumbnail container, inner HTML, let's just set it to nothing, right? Okay, one image, one image. Got the front and back, that works. Just the front, front and back, great. No errors either. Now we can get rid of our console logs because those are kinda no longer needed. And let's uh, kinda show a little more of what we're doing. Make sure nothing, nothing s jumps out at us. See no logged errors. The errors are this logo in our footer that we haven't fixed yet. Um, really no problem. There's just like supposed to be a logo down here. So we'll fix that later. Oh, and there's a mail icon. So we can fix the mail icon now. Uh, newsletter, underscore newsletter. 
email. Let's replace this image with the Railsway. So now we're really uh, we're we're really humming. This is getting into more of my territory, <laughs> um, particularly backend. Messing around with CSS is is really not my jam, but uh, we kind of got through the painful parts, and uh, now we're making it look cool. Let's get image tag. Need a comma. Great, fantastic. Now there's just one or two more errors remaining. It's two, yeah, dummy logo insert booth. Okay, where is that? We can do is just search, where are we looking for dummy logo insert booth? One of them is uh, not correct and it's right here. Okay, make it the rails way. Be cool if there was a little utility that just would convert these like that. And there we go. Now we got a little logo here. Still one more missing. Oh, because it's the one right above it. One more little error. Get reviews logo. Let's fix that. And this obviously should go to the actual get reviews website. Groovy, and again, make this the Rails way. Great. Look at that. We've got our, our, uh, our host, <laughs> uh, the, the tool we're promoting. We've got our logo for this. We're loading data dynamically from the back end. We have a working modal. We have working thumbnails. You can get in and out of the modal two different ways. We have a way to upload as up to four images. I guess we need to later add a max of four, but that's why we have the admin panel, right? So if this was a total free-for-all, we'd put all kinds of additional validations here. We'd make sure that there's no curse words in the title. We, we you know, I don't even know how you check for dick pics uh, with a simple app like this, but we'd have to add a lot more filtering. Um, but because we have everything go into a pending state, um, that allows us to be a little bit more lax in accepting user inputs. Now we do wanna make sure that people only upload images, not videos or PDFs. We don't want people to upload like a 20 megabyte image. So all of that we can add in a little bit. Um, but for now, I think um, uh, you know we're, we're chugging along the way we should. And here, if we go to browse, we have a working, not yet working, but we have a functional-ish front end for the search, but on the home page we don't. So I kind of think we want to just take that same thing. Type industry is nice. I actually really prefer that. So let's go back to our um, insert index, the view all page, and change that to just type, right, and uh, an industry. industry type okay and now the home page though is like really nice and big let's see what we can learn from that uh, what if I put that into what if I put that into this no it didn't help at all okay that's fine um, Text large. Text two XL. Maybe we can try to make it even bigger. Not give me anything there. There we go. It's because this was overriding it. We need to put this first. Small screens and bigger text small and then um, or mediums. Let's just let's just say it's default text small and medium screens and bigger. It's text two L. All right. Type and likewise we're going to take that same concept and throw it here. 
not bad. Even though these, yeah, now these are even a little bit bigger, not bad. This could be wider with full PY, PX, maybe PX6 to PX10, just to cover those additional words. And it didn't make a difference. That's just the other padding, all right. Mm -hmm. With 56, all right. Let's try those, changing those. I'm not sure if 64 is a size. Uh, you can't just make up any number here. <laughs> so Tailwind has their own. There we go. That's cool. All right. I think we can basically use this for the search on the, the home page as well. Uh, this should be a partial, right? This should not be its own separate thing. So let's see how much of this is reusable. Starting at MB16, let's go to our home page. MB16, yeah. Let's try to literally grab this whole thing and put it on the home page. And if it works, then we'll move it to a partial. This is that search area, right? Okay, let's put it underneath it. Reload the home page. Looking good. Okay, then that's what we're going to do. Delete both of them. On the home page, make a new partial, render partial, shared, uh, search, right? And let's make a new file in app views shared with all of our other partials. Throw our search bar in there. Make sure the home page looks okay still. Home page good, clickable, great. And then let's go to our page here and have the same thing as the home page. So now our browse page. Awesome. Awesome. And the reason we're kind of doing this, even having two pages, obviously the home page, it's great UX to be able to just start searching right there. Um, but the reason we want this full page is so that if there's more than, you know, six, 10 results, uh, we'll kind of redirect you to this page. And this also lets us do these custom URLs. So we can say, you know, um, wine, discount package inserts. So it's all sort of part of the SEO goal, marketing goal. So this is where marketing is is uh, impacting the developer's job. Okay, what should we do next? Uh, we could make our search kind of work, but that's gonna impact using the backend as well. So I think we kind of can just jump to backend or we can work on our admin panel. Um, let's jump to backend. Yeah, this goes to upload now. Okay, so all this stuff's working well. We could add a little preview to this when they upload images, it's nice. Rails active storage image upload preview. Somebody else I'm sure has done it. Previewing files. No, we don't want like that. That's not what we're looking for at all. <laughs> Displaying images. That's cool. Okay, let's let's give that a quick try. Okay, let's see if there's images in here. Let's see where they actually are. Okay, so you see that there's um, there's some kind of image there. Yeah, 
cool. We'll see if that will grab things that change and then um, I don't want to document get element ID. Append. Ugh. Create element image. Okay. All right. Let's try that. Let's go back to our contribute page and then we're going to switch to the back end because obviously people are going to want to um, view what's going on. And on page load, we want to actually run this preview images. Um, the file is package insert images. And since we're now using that twice, let's go ahead and make it um, an image uploader. Okay. Console.log source. I think this is going to be wrong, so we're just getting things done one at a time. Preview images. Okay. Source blob. Okay. Okay. This dot files. Log. Make sure we get all the files. This dot files dot length. Might be giving an issue because of uh, file count too. Okay, great. All right, now we're gonna loop through the files and maybe make some previews. Mm. We could use the code we already had up here that I commented out. Let's get rid of that. We don't really care about any of that. Let's actually just grab one and put it underneath here. Yeah, we can kind of just throw them in there. We can get rid of the, uh, the SVG and just throw the image in this sort of box and give it a little margin to the left so it's not touching our main one. Uh, we can hide it this could be another or this could be another template a uh, handlebars template that's fine uh, or we just say we go ahead and make four of them uh, not making them clickable yeah so we could do something like that and once they click to add them we fill all of these in that could be neat so let's go back to just caring about one of them we need to put an image inside of it and uh, yeah, we could have and we even even just hack it where if they upload six, we still just grab four or whatever. Um, let's just make it really simple. Image preview one. Okay. This dot files. I need to turn it into an array, or else you can't run for each. And it's a file. And let's see what we're working with in terms of images. Um, try to upload a couple. What do these files look like? Okay. A file looks like this. What other attributes does it have? Maybe we need to use this tool. Source. And if I were to grab that image, 
get element by image. Preview image one is that one we just made. Image preview one. Dot source equals source. I think we need to make a blob. It's not exactly how we want to do it. Yeah, input except. We might need to make a blob from the data. Create object URL. Image source, window URL, create object URL. URL, create object URL. It doesn't seem like it wants to. Uh, Window.url, create object URL from the source. Let's see. There we go. Look at that. All right, let's see if that, well, it's going to keep replacing the first one. Um, there might something create object URL on URL. Maybe I don't need to do. Okay, I just grab one. Source is not defined. Oh, got it. File. Let's grab just one. We're getting closer. Source is not defined. Oh. Okay. That's one, and then um, we want it to do that for all of them. So great. Uh, okay, great. And let's do loop by index. I don't think we can do for each with index, but if we can, why not? Yeah, you can. Index. Index is going to let us know which thing to grab. Image preview. IDX. All right, so the first IDX is going to be zero. And then it's going to be one. Let's just see if that does something really simple. Let's just grab two images. There we go. Um, we have that like contained thing, right? Yeah, like we're making them contained images. Or no, we can we can add that class. Object. Yeah, we can make them a little bit bigger. Object. Uh, Fit, no object position. We can like center it, like center it, object fit. Cover doesn't seem to be doing much. I think this, yeah, there's a lot of, look at that, there's a lot of padding in here. Okay, sweet. So let's get rid of a lot of the padding. P12 to P2. Let's make these object. What did we do it on the other ones? Object contain, object fill, contain, object center. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, preview's nice, good UX. Okay, now we're getting there. Um, let's make it a little bit better, right? 
possibly we need to make it centered from the, the parent class. Not justify, maybe. Oop, there we go. We were there. There we go. On line item stretch. That actually shouldn't really be what we're doing. <laughs> Let's see if we can make this one work from uh, bottom, unset. Hmm. I want to play with this one. I think something's not right. Yeah, something's not right. Okay. Do you use only one screen while well, Devin? Yeah, I recently switched to this wide monitor, and it's uh, you know, it's cool. I don't know. Um, I used to use two screens, I guess. But for a long time, I mean, the last few years, I was using just a laptop and, uh, you know, I would sit at cafes all day. So, what did we do here? We did a line items. Kind of was weird. Center. Okay. On the parent div, a line center. Let's see if that works like this. I did not do anything. I think a line center might not be it. It might be like items center. We're gonna have to Google if we can't get it from here. There we go, item center. Cool, and uh, you know, we want maybe up to four of those. And then on the back end, we can, we can require that they don't, we can make sure they don't upload more than four. Okay, now if I were to upload one, two, I wouldn't even have more images. Let's do more Ray-Ban coupons. Here's another one. Ray-Ban insert three, let's call it, and Ray-Ban insert four. All right, here we go. If I do this one first, back, third, fourth, I wonder if it will actually go in that order. Not really, okay. This is another reason why we want the admin panel. We can say, you know what, regardless of what they uploaded or in what order, we're gonna make this one the primary image, right? So again, admin panel sort of like solves all these issues. Wayfarer four images, we're just calling it that so we can uh, assist us in debugging. Let's give a different type, free offer. See, it's taking a little longer to upload those, which makes sense. And Wayfair four images, click this, and we got nothing. Maybe we change something. Insert adjacent URL. Ah, I think when we, f when we made our, um, Hmm. There we go. Okay, there we go. Groovy. I think the reason why that failed, we were just on the home page and we clicked browse and then we tried to open. I think it failed due to turbo links. So we're actually gonna go up to our uh, our header and uh, it's kind of a long story, but this will sort of like force load the page. So it makes it a little, little slower. Say data. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing it a little differently. Um, Turbo links is something that makes pages load a little faster. Kind of like, kind of like, I don't know, AMP or whatever. But uh, it can have unaffected. See this? We're getting errors because it's not really loading everything. So I want to make sure. Oh, this is the mobile menu. That's the mobile menu. Let's go down to our main menu. Where'd it go? Browser. 
browse right here. Link to browse. Here's the new classes. And now it worked. So you can kind of see when I click browse here, it's more of like, a, see, that, see that with the blue across the top of my browser? Just watch the loading. Kind of blinked. Anyway, that's gonna uh, make sure the page loads all the way, which is what we need. It's gonna otherwise lazy load our JavaScript and then some of that modal fill-in logic might not work correctly. And then lastly, we probably want it to be cursor pointer on all of this, uh, kind of look like, feel like a link. So let's go to that insert index. We're loading all these little things. Um, package inserts, rendering insert small. So we can just go ahead and put it in the insert small. Um, we could put the classes first if we want up here. And let's just say cursor pointer. Now all of these should kind of feel like a button. There we go. Anywhere in here feels like a nice button now. I like it. Okay, we made a lot of improvements. We just added preview. Um, yeah, we fixed some stuff and we improved the UX. So look at that. Boom, it's uh, on the home page. All oh, right, on the home page, we're not, ah, that's right. On the home page, we're not doing the whole modal thing. Um, we could do the modal from the home page or we require them to go to a full search. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, maybe, I guess for now, we'll just make the, the modal work. So package insert small, it's already got the open modal kind of trigger stuff that it wants to have. Um, but here, which is modal related stuff, I think all of this is modal, we can go ahead and make this into a, uh, into a partial, even this handlebars, all this stuff. So we're gonna say, um, this is not super clean, but render partial um, modal JS, all right? And we'll put this all in there. Okay, render partial. We're gonna put it in the shared folder, modal JS. All right, let's make sure it works on the contribute page where it already was, or excuse me, the browse page. Oh, got an issue. I think that's just because of, yeah. Okay, great. And now let's uh, load this modal JS on the home page and see if that's enough. Might not be enough, might have to do more. Actually, we definitely have to do more because we're not even loading the um, the big thing on here. Let's see. We could put this package insert big inside of modal JS. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, modal JS partial. You can load other partials inside of there, which is fine. And now we need that to be in shared because we're using it in more than one spot. So, as far as I know, might even be able to just load it like that. Render. Okay, modal on the home page. All right. Uh huh. And then here, save that. And modal on the search page. Great. So again, we're just continue deleting code and adding functionality at the same time. So here's our entire search page now. Okay, you've got our header, um, the search bar that's abstracted, the small miniature thing that's abstracted, the contribute banner after every, you know, a few. We haven't actually figured out, decided if we want six or whatever. Uh, we should actually do in groups of six. False that each do. Um, and then we want to do. I think we want to do like that. Might be breaking it again. That's okay. Um, I 
We're definitely breaking it, <laughs> but we're trying to make this correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, banner. One, two, three, four, five, six, banner. Wonderful. In groups of six. And now we can get rid of this two times do. And instead, we'll just from the server side only allow like 12 to load. Yes, we only had maybe how many package inserts do we even have? Yeah, we have exactly six. We can make sure this is still working correctly with our new little designs by just adding seventh, you know, our seventh Wayfarer item, Rayvan. Another one, brand building. Let's try that. Six and then seven. Yeah. Great. So now we got rid of like a lot of even more hard coding. We're just doing it in groups of six and then we're having our banner. That's what the six is for. If we wanted to show three and then a banner, we could just say three. Right. Now we see three, banner, three, banner. A little bit overkill. So we'll just go back to six. And then from our server side, package insert controller here, we'll say, you know, um, limit you know 12 or, or you know whatever we want if we wanted to have four rows or whatever for now we don't care uh, we don't have that many items but we will to do limit to eg12 add infinite infinite scroll etc we have to decide get rid of these okay redirect to and we don't have to use hard coded we can use our contribute path All right, very, very good. Um, did anybody have more questions? Maybe redirect the browse page and the form is submitted. Yeah, good call. Let's not do the home page. Every single time we go to the home page, we, uh, we don't like it. We want to go to the browse path. That is the package inserts path. One more time. Way, way. See if it goes to the. Great. Thanks for your contribution. And now it's on here. Way, way. Wonderful. Um, we haven't added download. We haven't added copy image. Um, copy image. JavaScript to copy image. I understand clipboard right. Will that do the same thing with images as with text? Copy an image. Okay. Fetch. Create a show page per contribution, it would benefit you SEO wise, I guess. Yes, exactly. Um, that's the current problem is we're not creating a show page. We're not creating a different show page. Um, I kind of like that this is simple and it lets them really, I think the UX is probably better this way. They can, they can look at a lot of them without hard reloads. Um, what we could do though, we can try, let's go back to our modal JS where we're kind of handling all of that, opening the modal. What if we try um, setting the window that path name equal to something? So let's see. Open the modal. Sorry, not path name. Um, search. Is it search? Look at that. So here's search. We can add hashtags, and that might give us some SEO benefit, um, right? So if you have a page like this. Um, Ray-Ban discount package insert, let's say, right? So we take like the brand title or something like that. We do like title of our insert, package insert, and you add this after the hashtag. As far as I know, this is sort of respected as a separate piece of content by Google. So this becomes a keyword that will make it searchable and then it will open this modal, as far as I know. If anybody has different content, I'm open to learning. Uh, a hash, right? So what if we tried that, like hash ASDF, right? 
So here's where we could take um, package insert data set. The title is probably how we'll kind of want to. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we want to rank based off the brand or based off the title. If someone says sunglasses package insert, that's kind of maybe going to have more searches than Ray-Ban package insert. But if someone uploads 50 different sunglasses, we'd love to be able to do it by brand. So um, not sure. Modal brand, right? So plus, um, you know, again, I'm doing really simple here. Package insert. Let's see what this looks like. Now we've got Ray-Ban package insert. Let's get rid of this junk that's not really happening. Ray-Ban package insert. So now, as far as I know, if we do it like this, um, you know, we're kind of good to go. But we'd have to make it so that this page can be visited like this and actually open up, you know, it has to actually open up that, um, that modal. So perhaps what we should then do is go back to our small one and go ahead and make that SEO its own custom thing. Data modal SEO hash equals. You can fake the routes the way they're linkable. Yeah, so someone asked, what is this app? Um, I used to always put a document, what are we building, right in the description of the video. In this video, we just jumped right in. We are making a package insert inspiration microsite. Package inserts are things like, where did all mine go? I had a ton of them. Things like this, you order on Amazon and you, uh, let me show myself bigger. When you order something online and you get something like this in the mail, in the box, that offers you some money off of the thing you bought or they ask for a review or whatever. Here's one where they are giving us a gift card, you know, a voucher. Um, here's another one, 10% off. You get these things in the mail. And, and that's because the, the seller wants to connect directly with you. If they sold on something like Amazon, they don't have your contact information. So we have a, a tool that helps people build package inserts and use them to get reviews. And that tool is called getreviews.ai. It's something we just bought about a month ago. It's a SaaS app. And so we're building this microsite as lead generation for that. So this is a free SEO style tool. Um, so we'll see. I hope that helps explain it. I, I'm trying to be brief just because some people have been watching and uh, have heard me explain it a few times. So if our SEO strategy is the, uh, is the modal brand plus package insert, brand, let's actually even make it SEO, SEO title, and then go put that in the back end. So we have just one spot, we can change it. SEO title, and that's going to be brand. Yes, thanks. All right, so we're going to make this an SEO title on the back end so that we can just modify to one spot. Brand, maybe package insert, or brand and title. Now we get a lot of indexing, right? So Ray-Ban sunglasses, Ray-Ban blah, blah, blah. Ray-Ban black sunglasses, right? Something like that. Brand title. Uh, and of course we need this to be parameterized. So if the title, for example, is um, new Wayfair, that's title, title.parameterize is gonna make it lowercase and have dashes in, in place of spaces. Make sure I spelled that right. Yeah, year to it, not bad. What if they upload something that's really old though, right? Like if they upload one that's from three years ago, we could just use the ID, you know, where it's like ID. So it's gonna be like Ray-Band, Wayfarer, package insert, seven. And like, because we put the ID at the far end of it, that will be the least impactful, right, keyword. It kind of goes left to right. Um, I don't know what you guys think. Just the current year for more CTR from SERPs. Yeah, that's cool, that's true. Package insert, then maybe I do it like that. Put the year at the end. Ray-Ban, New Wayfarer, 
package insert 2022, right? I kind of like that. Let's stick with that for now. SEO title. And then, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, we gotta be honest. <laughs> I understand you can add years. Like I understand a lot of these hacks, the black hat, gray hat hacks. It's just not something I do. You have to know the rules and then break them. All right, this window location hash is we're gonna just do uh, SEO title. That's nice and clean. We're not determining all this stuff here. SEO title, SEO hash is SEO hash. SEO title, SEO title. Okay. And uh, so let's first just test that if it adds the hash correctly. Undefined. <laughs> okay. Undefined. Okay. Package insert SEO title. Data modal SEO title. Did it set? Right. Modal SEO. There we go. Ray-Ban, Wayfarer, four images, packages. Right, that's that's correct. Wayfarer with site, package insert. New Wayfarer, package insert, 22. Good. So I think this kind of gets us halfway there with SEO benefit. Um, and we're going to get more SEO benefit from, from these searches. So we haven't done that yet. But these will create new pages as well, uh, actual pages with new URLs. Um, okay, cool. Now we need to actually make it load that. So if someone visits this page or searches and visits this, it should open that mobile modal. Is that what you were going to say? Is that what you were going to say? <laughs> you decided to create show pages, the permalink should be the same. Yeah, I just right now we don't really have a show page. We could make a show page that is the modal. Um, let's see, and, and like really try to not change any code. Let's just see how that would look. Let's grab the modal um, big code and throw it in here. And just sort of see what that looks like. Package inserts, let's say six, or we're just gonna, tweak this right now but um, yeah I think we're I think we're just like over over optimizing you know we're doing a live stream to build MVP and see what happens um, I think what's better is actually to go back to this strategy where they maybe land on the index and then in our controller we see that they have a hash in there you show page of a different URL. we wouldn't have uh, yeah so we wouldn't have a different um, different URL. So they'd, they'd land on package inserts like this. We'd see that they are trying to look at a specific package insert and we'd render that in the modal. So like I want to visit this URL with this hash and I want it to render that one, right? Let's see if we can make that work. Um, and it would sort of be like a show page. Right. So like if um, let's go back here to running the regular server. Binding break doesn't work when you run all of this stuff at once. Don't know why. Um, okay. And it already broke again. Okay, here we go. Ray-Ban new Wayfarer dash 2x. Rails and controller get window URL hash. Request that full path.
Do I have to get that from the front end? Might have to get that elsewhere. Uh, I don't think hashes work the same as URLs. You get canonical issues duplicate because all the other content is being loaded. Right. No, for sure. Don't get me wrong. Um, a hard coded, a hard URL is you can't beat that. Uh, never. You know, it's the easiest to, it's the cleanest to write on the back end. Um, I'm just saying we don't have a show view right now, so we can we can jump into the show view and not go over to uh, not go over to our admin panel yet. We can do that. Seems like everyone's not happy about this, <laughs> so let's do that. Let me just close some tabs. Mm -hmm. I gotta grab the server and wipe it. All right. We'll make a show page. Here we go. Show page. Now we have all this other stuff, though. So we need to add um, some new things. We could add friendly ID, or uh, we can just kind of make our own callback. Friendly ID is a cool library for this that will sort of parameterize things and make SEO friendly, like vanity usernames, that kind of thing. But we can just uh, we can just do before create. Uh, generate slug, something like that. Generate slug, and then let's put this, yeah, we'll move this later to be somewhere cleaner. And we'll take that SEO title. We'll say update, right? Uh, or no, we'll say uh, self.slug equals SEO title. And then we'll just load the slug in our uh, code instead of the title. So that's that's kind of how we could do it. Yeah, cool. Generate slug, and then this will use you know the the data was uploaded. So if someone uploads in twenty twenty one, and then a year later they uploaded twenty twenty three or whatever, uh, we won't be overriding the old ones. And now we're getting our honest marketer components in there. Yeah, we can do this. All right, so let's add a run a migration. We need to start adding slug, Rails G. Migration add slug to package inserts slug and it's just going to be a string so all good we can double check that migration file great I haven't tried VS Code yet no all right now let's go in here and package insert dot all dot each um, Let's uh, generate those slugs. Whew. Uh, my backspace is not working. PI. PI dot generate slug. PI dot save. All right. Package insert dot last dot slug. All right, now we've got our slugs, and we need all this to be lowercase. So let's actually um, dot down case. Don't know why that didn't do the trick. Uh, brand dot parameterize as well. Okay. Lowercase Raven. All right, there we go. Now we've got a CO slug, so I hope everyone's happy. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it's fine. You know, it. maybe it's better. We're doing it now. Okay, let's go back to our routes and add our show page. Okay. Now let's go to our insert controller and build out that show page. And uh, we're going to say uh, set package insert before action, before our show page. Uh, we're going to set package insert only on the show view. All right. And here we're going to um, package inserts. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
basically package insert dot find by slug params uh, ID. Uh, so we're going to go back here and we're going to see what happens. And let's see. Insert found. Package insert. And then redirect to. Uh, we don't have it yet. We're just going to make sure that we're looking them up and finding them. Yeah, all, all these pages will be programmatically generated for sure. Uh, we're going to definitely seed the database, right? We're going to seed it with uh, some that have been, you know, we find online, just like this, you know. We're also going to ask our customers to upload their own, things like that. But if you Google, you know, for some stuff, some of this, excuse me, some of this is available. So that's cool. We can, we'll use those. But I don't want to steal anybody's content, you know. Again, it's, it's really easy to do stuff the wrong way. It's really hard to do stuff without cheating and stealing. Uh, and that's how we always do it. All right, here we go. So if in theory we were to do package inserts, is this going to find it? Did this find it? Here, let's try that again. Started get package insert found. OK. That found it. Now let's um, make this URL a little bit sexier. So we don't even really care about this for the show page, right? We actually really want um, package dash inserts to go to package inserts index. Let's make sure that works. Actually, we don't even care about this resources thing at all. We only really need it for create. Because show and index, we're going to use our own custom routes. Search index. All right, now our, our uh, did my server shut down? Yes, it did. ID to show. Okay. See if that works. Okay. Contribute, browse. It's kind of it's trying to go back to that. Uh, we need to add it as package inserts. We need to rename the path. There's already used package inserts. Um, Yeah, because we have to, we have a create path, create package insert, and now let's go to our contribute page, form for um, URL create. Oh my. My server just keeps shutting down. Okay. Okay. Trying to do as little hacking as possible. Um, view package inserts. Okay. Package inserts path. Let's update those to view package inserts. Okay, and then back to our contribute page, we're gonna not change this.
Okay. Get them. Okay. Link to browse, view package inserts, uh, view package inserts path. Duh. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Browse them all. Wonderful. Contribute. This form should be pointing to the same endpoint it used to. Package inserts. Okay, great. All right, now we're set up to do our show page. Insert controller. And um, let's make sure that it works. So let's grab our last one. Grab a slug. So it'll be like this. Did it find it? Yeah, it found it. Okay, cool. Now let's actually make that page. So we're gonna take the show page, which we have, and uh, we don't really need all of this modal stuff. It's just gonna be that page, I guess. And let's see uh, if we can at least load the blank page. See how bad it looks. Okay, it's not horrible. <laughs> All right, and let's make it not invisible. Okay. All right. Hope you guys are happy. <laughs> Hope you guys are happy. Um, we don't really need the modal class or anything like that. Now we do have extra code here, which I don't really like, or double code. You know, we have double code. But, um, you know, this is what you guys want. So let's get these thumbnails in there. And start loading the data the Rails way. Images.h2. Yeah, sure. It'll be good UX, just make our stream take a little longer. <laughs> you know, the Call of Duty came out today, so it's kind of like, you know, and stuff. Just, you know, saying. Just saying. Just saying. All right, we need that. We need a little bit of JavaScript functionality. Um, okay, cool. Is that load thumbnails? Okay. Now we need our main image. We've already made that up. Primary image URL. Let's see if that works. Okay. And now we just swap in. And I can abstract some of this code later so that, again, we're not doing it twice. But maybe we want the show page to look dramatically different. Yes, I'm playing Call of Duty as part of Ryan's retirement for sure. Thank you for... Uh, Guessing that in Battlefield, obviously, 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 industry almost there. We're almost there, and then we need the URL. But the URL is optional. So, you know, um, we can go to the URL website or hashtag. That way maybe if it's blank, it should just stay on the page and not load anything. Okay. We still don't have the download working. 
but um, I don't think that's a big deal. Package insert images, like package insert download controller. Something like that. And then we have a new controller. And we're gonna to do uh, send image files as inline attachments. Still also need to do the copy paste image, but we got carried away with our SEO. So anyway, this is cool. It's a hard link. It still looks like the same feel as when they grabbed one. We can even grab, uh, make a share link, right? Why don't we make like a share link that shows up in here? So let's do it from our modal um, underscore big where the way we like it, uh, the way we might want to see it. So let's go back to all package inserts. And then that share link will have the slug version. So like right here under industry. Um, we could have all that margin or we could not do all that margin. could do like a one of those like text boxes or an input that's read only maybe an input that's read only if that's how that works we've all seen it mm. See if that works better. How have I done this before? I could also do pre. Just seeing which looks the best out of the box. Oh, we could do text area. Doesn't like that. Going on. I add a text area and I think I have to close it. All right. Go to rows equals one. And then like a click to copy. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we just. We've all seen this a million times, just debating which uh, element we should use to build it. Uh, background, like black, I don't know, background. Input field with the border class, yeah. Let's just try that. Let's actually just copy paste an input from Tailwind Forms. Input with disabled state. Okay. Here we go. That's kind of right on. We don't actually need the disabled, but yeah. The, the f looks nicer around, around the border. Okay. Input 
read only. Oh, it's just a, it's a property itself, not a type. There we go. Okay. We don't need the dumb margin top. Share this. Okay. And it should be one click to copy, obviously. But um, yeah, we'll figure that out. Rails.info.routes. Let's see. Rails info. Rails route helper. Always forget the long URL for this. We need the full URL. Come on, all right, we'll just do this. Um, it is the package insert as package insert. All right, package insert URL, and the ID is going to be this package insert uh, slug. Okay, but Slug for nil. Oh, because I'm modif dang it, I'm modifying the um, the non-modal one, or the modal one. Okay, that's fine. Input ID, modal, uh, share URL, something like that. And now we go back to index, all of ours. Insert index. Nope, modal JS, and we called it down below industry modal um, data set modal share URL. Share URL, and now we need to populate it. All right, modal share URL. Now we need to populate it on the small one. The share URL is just going to be the uh, share URL is going to be package insert URL ID package insert slug data model share URL. Okay, and this is going to be what we use on the other one. Okay. Let's see if we're getting there. Now we have to do everything twice and a little bit differently. Any tweak we want to make now, we have to um, we have to make it to the modal and the show page. So, eh, I kind of still hate that we did it, but let's see. Modal share URL. Mm. Instead of inner text, it should be value. And there we go. Package inserts, Ray-Ban, New Wayfarer, package insert. All right, now if I go to that one, that works. And that one needs to be done a little bit differently. That one needs to be done on the show page. Let's get back to the, the modal one. Underneath industry div, we have this new div. Underneath industry div, we have this new div. And the value is simply package insert ID package insert dot slug let's see if that works of course not oh, package insert URL great same page and uh, this could even be the next page the next um, the next thing down this doesn't have to be flex. We could get rid of flex like that. Let's get rid of flex. How's that look? Okay. And let's get rid of flex on the modal as well. All right. Now we have a show page. Maybe here, close modal is. Um, 
Closed modal does a couple different things. On the show page, we could have a closed modal feature that um, redirects them to, to all, you know, or something like that. What do you guys think of that? So now when we close, close modal, we'll literally just um, window.location.href equals view package inserts path. What do you guys think about that? Close modal. Okay, so now let's look at our show page. Hit escape. Nothing happened. Something should happen. Oh, and again, I added it to the wrong spot. Oh, I added it to the wrong spot. Okay. Because that's how it's going now. Set thumbnail as primary image. Okay, this is what needs to be in here. <laughs> and here's what needs to be in the show. All right, let's try that. Hit escape, redirects to all. Here we go. Okay. Go to, let's say, this one. Grab this site, go directly to it, hit here, goes to all. Okay, I think our um, I think our show and SEO for individual ones is pretty good. Now we can work on SEO for the whole collection. Um, export to get reviews is not doing anything yet uh, in terms of our other app, get reviews, but um, uh, I think I can just make this a simple mail to for now. So this like export to, export to get reviews. Where'd that go? Yeah, like, let's see. Download or export to get reviews. I'm gonna make this a partial, as insane as that sounds. Get reviews, export button. So that I can just change this one time. Um, render partial. Shared, get reviews, export button. And then I'm gonna to go to that and let's see if that does the job. This is in show page. So if I go here, I want this to look the same. And it does, okay. And then let's also put that on our modal thing, export. There we go. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna make this now just email. When they click this button, um, is there even an href? Yeah, let's just make it a mail to. Mail to support at get reviews. Subject equals import. Let's make sure that kind of does something. I can't even click the button. <laughs> this thing needs to hover below. How can I make this hover below? Ease in, delay, group hover, transition, absolute, bottom four. Maybe if I do like bottom 24. Okay, sweet bottom 40. I just want to make this hover below the button. Okay, that's good enough. 48. There we go. Cool. Bottom 50. Okay, now I can click the button. I can hover. If they click this, it's going to try to open up an email 
Um, let's see if my browser actually does it. Pre-fill in a subject line. I can't show all my calendar and everything. Okay, bye. All right, that's gonna work. Subject, import, and then I'll pass in this slug, right? Import. Um, e. But here we don't have it server side, so importing. Importing, uh, yeah, insert booth design. And body equals link to design, take from insert booth. So this is a placeholder, but this will kind of get us part of the way there. And uh, at least it does something. Yeah, we'll take an email and then they'll go, huh? And that's fine. All right, so we've got individual SEO. Now we want to programmatically create all of the combinations for our industry and type. I figure um, type probably maybe industry first instead of type. So if we go back to our package index, look at all of them the way I did it up here, maybe it should be industry first, like food, you know, wine discount package inserts. Right, I think that might be better. Mm, so let's do that. So we go back to our routes. If someone wants to grab get uh, industry, right? Let's try. I don't know. Mm. We already kind of took this ID here. But we could do just slash p um, or designs or categories or mm, hmm. So now we can do this. It's easy to change. Well, let's do industry type, something like that. I have no idea if this is going to... Categories and industry. Let's try apparel and discount. Apparel, discount. Now, let's see if they came through the server the way we intended. Industry apparel type discount. OK, great. So what we're going to do here is go back to our package insert controller where we grab all the data. Right now, we're grabbing all of them. And uh, we're going to say, you know, if there are params industry uh, are present, and params type uh, are present, then uh, we're gonna try to grab them by that, you know, by those specifications. Otherwise, we're just gonna grab them like this. And uh, um, package inserts equals package insert where industry, uh, params industry. Now, this is not secure. This is not secure yet. We're gonna have to, <laughs> we're gonna have to tighten this up so that they can't just type in anything. But in theory, it doesn't really matter. We'll only find it if it exists, right? Um, here we go. Um, what we can actually do is say, mm, category params. Return nil unless these params are at least present. Um, and then we do uh, industry um, could be uh, params industry if package insert, you know, uh, industries includes um, 
that param. So in other words, package insert industries, right? We should probably do down, we should down case all that. Mm. We want to sanitize. I can't really type. <laughs> this new autocomplete in uh, in in Rails is kind of slow and weird. All right, we have to do something like that. Include. Now, of course, this still isn't going to be good because if they type in, um, here we go, parameterize, okay. We're going to clean that up too. We're going to make all that done in one spot. Um, include params industry. and then insert type is going to be insert type. So here we're just making sure that we don't try to search for something that the user is not allowed to search for. And then here, okay, same concept, insert types. And then that's going to be the category params. Um, so here we'll just say if category params search where Category params. Okay. Um, now I want to see them showing up in our logs before we worry too much about whether it's working correctly. Let's go here. Apparel discount. Industry apparel. Insert type discount. Okay. Wonderful. And uh, I guess there's no apparel discount. Uh, are there apparel uh, free offer? Industry, hear that? Apparel free. So um, this is complicated because now it's making this as one param um, and we want to programmatically generate. So we're going to have to be a little bit smarter with um, our double slashes. Maybe we do like a double dash in between is probably the smarter way to do it. So let's do that for now. Industry dash dash type. Apparel dash dash free offer. Apparel and free offer, okay. Now if we actually go to all of ours, we have discount and apparel. So let's try categories, apparel, discount. Oh, sorry, double dash. We should be seeing some of them, but we're not. Whatever params. I think it's because of the down casing. Yeah. Did you get reviews for the micro acquire asking? Actually, we paid more than the micro acquire asking. Yeah, good times. Very good times. Rails unparameterize. Reverse parameterize. <laughs> Titleize. Eh. We could just try that for now. Let's try this for now. That's why it's not finding them. Clean all this up later. And there we go. Now we're finding ones that are apparel and discount. Great. 
And likewise, let's look for another one. Uh, apparel and free offer. Apparel dash dash free offer. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Um, that I think is failing because our free offer is like that, but maybe we wrote it all caps in our model. Yeah, we did. Okay, we're gonna just keep it titleized. Review request, brand building. Same with this, fitness and health, food and beverage, home goods. Uh, I don't like sports, we're gonna have to figure out another one because fitness and health is kind of too similar. Apparel and free offer. That should be getting it now. Apparel and free offer. Industry type apparel, free offer, which is how it looks. Okay, maybe we just need to restart the server. All right, will you keep that domain or will you fulminize rebrand? The deal took uh, a few weeks to close, maybe four or five, simply because I was going on a business trip for FOMO to, uh, to Portugal. Uh, so we kind of shut everything down for like 10 days. Otherwise, you know, we would have closed in maybe two and a half or three weeks. We also decided to raise some money from investors to get the deal done. And uh, we, they, you know, they needed a week or two to send wires in to us. Really wanna make sure we're not missing on anything on these searches. Free offer. Ah, got it. Ah, got it, got it, got it. Package insert where? In, uh, insert type. Free offer. We just changed everything, so we have to change everything. Where insert type equals review request. We have to change that too. Okay. Brand building. All right. I think our search is, is now working fine. We'll do a little more testing. All right, great. That's all of them. And if I wanted to search for uh, apparel free offer, those are apparel free offer. Apparel discount, great. Apparel, did we do brand building? Great. So the search is working. Now we wanna show that on the page. Uh, package index in these little dynamic spots, which is incredibly easy. Um, let's look at, let's look at, um, let's actually make those visible. Category params. Do parameterize industry. A lot of ways we could do this. Industry, yeah. Category params. Industry. Insert type. There we go. Oops. Why is that deleting both lines? All right, industry, insert type. Okay. All right. Let's see. Apparel brand building package inserts. Apparel discount package inserts, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Apparel brand building, <clears throat> apparel free offer. All right, now let's try to spell something wrong, and this is going to break. Let's split. Um, that's because it couldn't find it. So let's just quickly handle when they're when they're broken.
apparel package inserts. All right. Um, yeah, it's just going to not work, I guess. Apparel. Uh, that's fine. We don't want to try to index pages that don't exist. So for now, that's fine. Events 404 results will simply be zero. Okay, and then of course in here, we can have it sort of say like X results found, right? But yeah, now our search is working. And then lastly, we need to actually make this button do the same thing that, um, that our URLs are doing. Okay, let's go down here to to our search, which is nice, right? We have just one search section to update. This needs to be kind of like a form, but we can we can kind of hack it. Uh, okay, let's do that. Let's try that. On click. Uh, Execute search, something like that. Script, function, execute search. Um, and let's grab each of these select inputs. Um, ID, industry, search. Let's just see if that is even the right one to grab. I think it might not be. When you grab a select getting the value, you don't necessarily grab the, uh, the topmost parameter. Uh, let's see, selected. Right, right, right. We need not selected at all. Let's research. JavaScript, select, get, select, boom, boom, boom. Value, that's why. Something like that, let's try. Fitness and health. There we go. Okay. Um, so when you search, I want you to grab the value of each of those. And insert type should be insert type. JavaScript parameterize. Let's get somebody who's already done it. Yeah, nice. Nice. Function parameterize. Great. <clears throat> and then we're going to visit window.location.href equals, and we have our categories, which we might change um, hmm, for now. Okay, categories, and we're gonna then do, let's try it this way. Industry, industry dash dash, is that our order that we're doing? Insert type. And we're going to parameterize those. No idea. No idea if this is going to work. Okay. 
Niche Guru Apparel Discount. Search. It goes to Categories Apparel Discount. And we're done. <laughs> okay. So that was not too bad. And that should now work from the home page as well. So on the home page, let's go to fitness and health. Oh, we didn't have any fitness and health. Apparel free offer. And we're on apparel free offer. All right. Our consumer facing app is really done. Um, and it's not bad. There's not really too many hacks. We moved some stuff to the back end. Um, yeah, I actually want to grab this line of code. I want to move one more thing. Let's call it sluggable. So all of that SEO kind of logic, um, I want to put in one spot so that we can safely feel like we can, you know, modify that from, you know, independently without having to f look at other code. So we do that, we just move it here and then, you know, we just put it all in one spot. We haven't actually changed any functionality, but now if I want to adjust how the whole SEO thing works later, I'm really going to be comfortable doing it because I'm just going to open this file and know that I don't have to look at the front end. I don't have to look at controllers. I don't have to look anywhere else. I can just go in here. So there we go. Uh, like Let's say fixed parameter, you know, and that could be even that fixed parameter. And even this now lets me modify, like maybe we don't want to call it package inserts anymore, or we want to call it package insert template. I can just modify this, which will modify this, which will modify this, which happens when the person submits. So kind of nice. Um, and actually we're going to want to do um, this a couple times before update as well. Uh, before update, regenerate slug, right? And now we're gonna add alias regenerate slug. Because when we go in as an admin and we fix their typos or change the categories, we don't really like the industry that they chose, we need the slug to be updated again. Um, so let me just make sure that that works by adding our package, getting our last package insert. pi.slug. alias I just did the syntax wrong alias method Let's see if that works Our last package insert. No, it doesn't like that. What am I doing wrong? Alias underscore method. Out, just grab it again. Hmm. Oh, duh. They didn't include it. All right, cool. Include sluggable. So I might have done it right the first time, actually. All right. Method joint slug. Oh, I need it to be underneath here. All right. Ooh, by method before creating. Put these over back in the package insert. There we go. PI generate slug, regenerate slug, same thing. But um, again, separating the concerns, Rails literally calls them concerns, but it's just a concept in coding, separating your concerns 
is a, is a good idea. Um, but actually, you know what? Regenerate slug does need to be a different method. <laughs> it needs to generate slug. No, 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 no. It's before save. Package insert. What you don't want to get stuck in is an infinite loop where you are trying to update something and then the update calls a, con a callback that then retries to update it. So that's a common kind of rookie mistake. So what we're doing is generating the slug. We're not actually saving anything. We're letting the create function that's happening or the update function that's happening finish the save. So we should be good to go there. Um, so for example, if I do slug equals ASDF and now pi.save, pi.save, it should actually be fixed back to where it would. Okay, wonderful. Now we've got an admin panel to build. We've got an admin panel to build. So we need to log in as a user, which should already be uh, possible because we have a user's table. Um, don't know why we don't see a button. Let's go to that sign up, register new, user new, register new. Uh, why we don't see a button here. Maybe it's just BG black. I don't know. Maybe it's it's there. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, let's do admin at insertbooth.com. Password is password. Sign up. Okay. Logged in. Uh, we don't need any type of Stripe stuff to happen. So this billable module after create setup customer. Nope. Don't need that. Onboardable. We don't need to send them welcome emails. Sign upable, sure, we can keep that. So we don't need onboardable, buildable. Um, cool. And let's now go back. Did we create our users? Did we create a loose user? We might have shut down our server from all of our errors. Yeah, we didn't even create a user, so let's try that again. Sign up. Admin insert booth. Password is password. Finished onboarding. All right. These are all things I have from um, from the speed speed rail. Dashboard index path. Oh, we just always want to. Admin. It's going to log them in as admins, and we're going to disable the ability to sign up. We do that through this device feature called Registerable. We literally just remove it. Now nobody can sign up. All right. And we want to start building out our admin panel. We go to routes to set up our routes. We already have a way admin dashboard. Uh, we're not going to be doing any of these impersonations, users, whatever. So I'm gonna go in here and start deleting that. We need the admin. We don't need users. Uh, our dashboard, this is gonna be something we don't care about at all. We're gonna rip this out and take the design we got from our designer. And let's go to controllers admin. We don't need to impersonate users. We don't need to search users. Admin, it doesn't need to grab users. This is actually gonna grab package inserts, right? So to do, grab package inserts. And we're gonna make sure the person is logged in. So that before action. So we kind of clean some stuff up, um, admin dashboard, and that's about it. And nobody can sign up. And you'll have to be an admin to use it. So admin dashboard index path. Let's see if it even goes to that page. Dashboard. It is just add more dashboard index path slash admin slash dashboard. That's what we're doing. Cool. And dashboard index path. And we're going to make that the redirect. Admin dashboard index path. Okay, great. Views admin dashboard index. Testing. Okay. Maybe we're not really signed in. No route matches admin dashboard. Ah, because the user has to be admin, so we have a proc here. So let's grab our last user and make them admin. 
and now that route will suddenly exist. All right, so now we're logged into the admin panel. Let's kill this server, and we're gonna boot back up our other server that has, uh, that has the admin panel. So we're gonna go to that other code base, shuffle, um, and it looks like we're gonna be looking at admin, admin.html. So let's grab this whole div like we've been doing and then start deleting stuff. All right, let's go to admin dashboard index, paste it in here. We know we're not gonna need the header, right? But uh, maybe there isn't one. So we can go to admin on this tab, HTML. This is what we're trying to recreate, basically, so that we can view the ones that have been submitted and you know make changes to them, that kind of thing. All right, we've got the code. We know what it should look like. Let's shut down that browser and boot back up our Rails app. Here we go. Nice, look at that. It just keeps getting easier and easier. Um, I don't really care that much about pagination right now. You know, we could have hundreds on this page before we really care about pagination. So um, I'm gonna just change a few things around. First, uh, admin dashboard, let's call this insert boost submissions. Let's put that up here in the title. Now we can get rid of kind of this whole area. That big div. We also don't need this next one, this kind of empty gray thing. Or is that this? Okay, we don't even need this. Yeah, I mean, the gray thing's fine, but py8. Uh, let's go py2. Uh, and actually, let's do pat them bottom two, pat them top can be zero. I don't know if we really need that. All right, cool. Uh, and then, you know, these are rows of a table. Let's just get rid of like all of them except one and then make it dynamic, right? So table row, if I do that, it's kind of a cool tip to get rid of a lot. Table row, where's our last table row? Table row, let's see what happens if I get rid of that. Looks okay, right? And then this is pending, approved, rejected. Okay, great. I'll expand this again. And now let's flesh this out. So this table row is gonna be a partial. Right, we're gonna say package inserts dot each do package insert, and let's put this table row inside of there. And again, our syntax highlighting got messed up, so not sure why this has been happening to me lately. But in the meantime, I just grab the page again. Admin dash index. All right, all right. And now this should actually kind of just like show one fake row for every um, package insert that we have. It won't show their status or anything like that, but package insert dot all, right? So that means we have like seven or eight and it's just showing us fake data eight times. So that's cool. Now let's keep working on it. Let's make it dynamic. Um, so let's have the created at, right? Submitted at, uh, so package insert dot created at and of course this is going to look gross let me just show you that's kind of gross right so we can do a thing called strift time that lets us uh, you know we can do like month year something like that month B maybe it's maybe it's D it's a little different not what you'd expect um, right there we go. And then lowercase b might be the short version month. Okay. Uh, okay. That's not bad. We don't really need time 
you know. We could also do time ago in words, like 37 minutes ago, 80 minutes ago. But for now, these are going to be ordered most recent to, to oldest. All right, let's keep rolling. Submitter email, which is not required. So sometimes this will be blank. Submitter email. And then these avatars. We're just going to gravitarify it. Gravatar email endpoint. I think we MD5 hash the email. MD5 hash something like that let's see let's put the source here this hash should be the uh, submitter email but hashed so let's do Ah, oh, shoot. I do this all the time. MD5 digest, yes. And then we can type in an email. Let, let's try that. Let's see if that does the job at all. There we go. Cool. So now we've got some avatars without uploading avatars and it just makes it a little bit nicer when you're going to be reviewing all this stuff and then it can be blank when we don't have anybody. Cool. And you can also do all kinds of other stuff to make funny avatars when they're blank. Um, since this is a little bit gross, we can even, the same way we've been moving a lot of stuff to partials when we reuse it, we've been moving stuff to the, the back end to the package insert thing when we want to um, have a more complicated function. We can also have application helpers that allow us to, uh, you know, use backend twice on the front end. It's under, sort of like a, a middle ground. Um, so here, let's grab this, and we'll say like grab a tarify the package insert submitter email, right? And then in here, we'll just have an email address. And since we're already in Ruby here, we do it like that. Cool. Now it's a little bit cleaner on the front end and back end. And uh, we can reuse this anywhere. We, need, we now made a new function that just accepts an email and turns it into an image. Great. Uh, now we need to keep copying over these other dynamic fields. So this review request means this must be the type field. So let's grab that. Insert type. And then we've got one more. All right. These were all apparel, right? <laughs> For our Ray-Bans, but we do have our types loading, so we know that's working fine. Status. If I were to say that this is selected, is that going to work? Okay, that will work. All right. Um, we're going to choose that uh, it's selected if that's the status, right? So this is, again, kind of janky. We're going to just get it done and then we make it look better later. Selected if um, package insert dot status equals pending. So let's actually make another sort of fixed thing here. Let's have statuses. We don't want to have a bunch floating around the app, right? Um, and actually these don't need to look friendly. They don't need to be like title case. We can just approve, you know, pending. And I'm doing this. It's going to create an array. 
but since I don't need to worry about spaces, pending approved, rejected. All right. In fact, I just insert status equals pending. Approved, and that could be lowercase. Approved and rejected. All these really are nothing. Yeah, pending or um, set default pending. So let's go back to there as well. Before create, generate slug. Before create, um, let's make a new thing called submittable. And all we're going to do is set defaults in there. For now, the only default I can think of is um, or contributable, since the page is called contribute. Contributable, module, contributable, and you know, we're gonna have um, set defaults, and we can make this say like, you know, self status equals pending, right? So it's not a blank status. Include contributable, We'll even load this lower or higher. It doesn't make a difference, just feels better. And for create, set defaults. And that's going to invoke the method in here, contributable. OK, now if we look at all of our package insert, dot all, or dot last, status, dot first, dot status, it's all nil. Right? So update all. Yeah, package insert dot all. Yeah, update all. Pending. Okay, now they're all actually pending. If I make them all actually approved, I want to see if that updates here. Yeah, all actually approved. And I would also like different colors, right? I want probably maybe pending to be yellow, approved to be green, something like that. Uh, I also want to make sure that no one can somehow screw this up. Um, so what we're going to do, in other words, is we're going to make sure validates um, presence of status and that it's inside of these uh, statuses. This might not work my first try, but we want to make sure that no one can say like, hey, the status is ASDF. Not statutes. Statuses. Oh, I'm going to do, let's see if that will go up a layer. Did I not call it statuses? Statuses, yes. I think maybe I need to restart my server again. Am I blind? Huh. Constant. Let's just put it up a, up a package. There we go. All right, package insert. Hmm. Rails validate from selection. Time. Obviously, a good track record. How is raising given the microeconomic turbulence? Uh, we got very easily. We got very. We got very lucky. Sorry, um, it was very easy. Um, 
There we go. In statuses. That's the syntax we were looking for. Yeah, it was very easy. I think, I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, this is just before create. Validation failed. Status is not included. Okay, great. Status ASDF, not included. If I say status is pending, great. That would work. We just have uh, too many missing fields. Great. So now we're making sure that you can't accidentally like set the status of something to something that, that shouldn't be in a, a status. And that's important because now we want to make something called scopes. A scope is going to let us grab all the ones that have certain things in common without rewriting SQL queries everywhere. So it's sort of like prepared statements in SQL. So we're gonna make a scope called a scope called approved, and that's gonna grab all of the uh, inserts where status is approved. And you can imagine we probably want a couple more scopes. Let's make pending, let's have approved, and then let's have rejected. Now, back in our admin dashboard, admin dash controller, we can say get all the ones based on the type of filter that someone wants. So by default, let's just say get all the ones that are pending. So now we go back here. We get all the ones that are pending. See, none of these are pending, right? Because <laughs> we just updated them. So let's update them all. Now this tab's going to work great. And I can make this where when I click, it gives me ones with that different status. So let's do that search filter real quick. If params um, filter dot present, then we're going to grab the package inserts that have that filter. Otherwise, we're going to default to pending. And we're going to do send and then pass in that filter. So send is going to convert a string into a method. So let's say like this, params dashboard, filter equals approved, none, right? Filter equals rejected, none, filter equals pending. So that's kind of a cool way to do it. And then back over at our dash index, we're gonna um, have this thing where they're nice and underlined, right? We can try to figure out how the designer added that blue underline so that ours can dynamically change the underlined color as you click around the admin panel. And lastly, yeah, we got, no, we got really lucky. Uh, sorry, I wasn't trying to sound like a, like a jerk. Um, we asked for very little money, in my opinion, and the valuation was very good. And we do uh, distributions, cash distributions every 30 days. Um, so, you know, investing with our model, I'm not saying investing with us, but investing with our type of model makes, uh, it's just, it's literally lower risk. You know, you're not waiting five years to get paid. Um, you get paid every month. All right, this all, let's see where this, this blue thing came from. Is it leading 10? Font heading, text blue. Oh, is this, is that the blue? Oh, well that's annoying. Let's see. We wanna just make like an underline or something simple. Border top. Come on, we don't have, oh. We could just do that as well. Whatever one they click on is blue. <laughs> Simple, right? Text blue. Um, no, but let's grab it a little bit. 
tail end border. We're really, really almost done. This is about a six and a half, seven hour build. Border, border B, ah, I see. Border B4, border blue 500. Oh, let's see. Yep, cash flow is king for sure. Yeah, this is just, this is sort of obnoxious. Why would we even bother with? Let's get that back to gray. Border T. I'm not even going to mess with any of this stuff. Um, text blue if it's selected. If I were to add that white to that. Okay, we should add it to the, add it directly to the link. All right. Okay. Great. Um, I'm gonna get rid of. Eh. Yeah, all all is fine. Okay, <laughs> all is fine, and we'll make package insert at all. That will that will just work already. Okay. Admin. Yeah, let's actually get the, the border working first. We're gonna make the color and say params filter equals, if the params filter equals uh, pending, then this text is gonna be this color. Otherwise, the text is gonna be this color. Let's see how that works. There we go, filter pending. Filter all, great, it's not, great. That's what we're gonna do. Let's make another one. If it's approved, then that, and then we're gonna make it approved. And all this can be cleaned up by having just one sort of Ruby method, right, that generates these links. If, sorry. Filter equals rejected, then we want the button to say rejected and we want it to be blue, etc. All right, pending. Oh, and then we have to make the link. <laughs> filter pending, filter approved, filter rejected. So now we're running the searches and we're updating this nav to, to match. Um, now let's make the actual links and let's just go ahead and make it the Rails way. Link to uh, pending and we're gonna do uh, no link to yeah pending and the actual link will be admin dashboard index path filter lowercase pending class is gonna be this stuff up here oh maybe I shouldn't have done it twice already but all right and since we're already in Ruby here we don't need this. Okay. Let's see if the pending link is working. All right, great. Okay. That's really the, the one we want. Approved, approved, approved. <laughs> you can see we're, we're definitely duplicating some work here, but uh, you have to choose your battles. All right, okay, pending, approved, rejected, awesome. 
Okay, and now I just need to add it to this last one. It can stay all caps, I guess. All, all. All. Pending. Okay, this is all. This is pending. Now we need to make it so that we can update some. So over here in this uh, this pending dropdown, this select class, let's go here, select, ID, or really we can just do on change. Uh, let's have it uh, update status. We're going to put a little script down here. Update status. First make sure that this is firing. Status updated and make sure that's working and that's that's working all right um, and we're gonna pass in the insert to it so we actually know what to do uh, we're gonna update it which means we need a new route this is our final verb right it's editing we now have viewing inserts we have creating which is submitting inserts if you remember from our nouns and verbs from step one step two now we're updating resources, we're going to make another package and search controller and we're just going to have the ability to update and search controller. Grab this one because I want some of the authentication. Update. After we update, we're going to redirect back to um, admin dashboard index path. And uh, private, uh, we're gonna say do the same thing. Def package insert params. We don't want to be able to let someone try to hack it and update everything, even if they are an admin. Permit. Let's let them update status for now, and that's it. Let's see what happens. All right. Um, and then let's do some Ajax admin package inserts path and it's going to be the inserts ID Okay, let's look at what that even looks like. Scrap our code, dataset.id. All right, so now this drop down we need to add in. Um, we have this select on change thing. Yeah, package status insert. What's this thing? 10 15. Oh, it's pagination. Ending. value equals approved rejected all right we're gonna pass in itself and we're gonna do what we did before uh, ID all right and let's see if this is gonna do anything We're not updating anything yet, but we're just double checking. Rejected, all right. We should be working with the insert here. Dot data set dot ID. It's insert with ID of 15, which now means it's gonna generate that URL. Um, we need a method, so HTTP, update or put. Let's see which one will do the best job. Um, package insert, and then we need a add in what's going on. Status is going to be um, insert.value, right? Yeah, we chose rejected. Okay. And then on success, we don't really need to do anything. Uh, we're actually going to reload the page. So we're going to actually do this all in 
all client side back to our our uh, admin package controller we're gonna actually just just assume it worked <laughs> um, same thing we need to know what packages that we're working with line by um, ID and params ID set package insert so package insert dot update with the package insert params now this controller will kind of work for all kinds of updates we'll just have to whitelist more parameters here like we did before when we whitelisted for the user facing submission form package insert controller we whitelisted um, title brand all that stuff We'll just need to whitelist whatever we want the admin to be able to update. So let's see if this will help at all. Let's reject this one. And I think it's going to give us one error because um, I'm not using the rail security. So it's going to say it rejected it. So there's a way around that. So let's see. Let's go to our server logs, clear them out, hit enter, look at them, and the route matches update. Now let's try put or patch. Already patch. And then package inserts controller. Let's try put. Package inserts controller. Oh. I didn't change this. Okay. Right, here we go. Can't verify CSRF. So all you have to do is say we're going to skip the security stuff. And you do it before action, skip authenticity token. So you'll run into this guaranteed. Um, run guaranteed, guaranteed you'll run into this. Now it's gonna go in this order. So it's first gonna make sure they're at least an admin, and then it's gonna to try to find the thing, and then it's gonna to try to uh, um, verify the security, but ignore it. All right, here we go. Update the insert. Render JSON status. Okay, there we go. See if we can get that to run. There we go. So now we've we've done a sort of uh, AJAX request. So now, since it's going to reload our page, let's go here, remove our debugger, and what we should see is that I'll reject something, and then it's going to reload this page, and it will get one shorter. So let's reject it. Boom. Let's make this approved. Now let's click over to approved. We see the one we approved, rejected, all the ones we rejected, all we see everything. Now we see these different statuses. And lastly, let's make our color. Green, I don't know, BY, BG yellow. Yellow isn't a thing, or maybe it's a thing. BG green. Let's call this like drop down color. I don't know. Status drop down BG color. <laughs> kind of kind of verbose, but let's try that for now. Status drop down BG color. And we'll go back to our helper where we added that Gravitarify thing. And we'll call it that. Okay. We'll look at what the stat package inserts status is. And we'll say different things. When it's this, when it's this, when it's that. Okay. When it's approved, when it's approved, I want the, the color to be that, right? When it's uh, pending, I want the color to be, I don't know if this will work, but we'll see. When it's uh, rejected, I want the color to be um, red. Look at that. 
Look at that, pending, rejected, great. And we also want the color of the text, I guess, to be different. Um, so, where do we have BG green again? Each of these options is like BG green, or the text color is green. Okay, here we go, text green. We have to do this again. Status, drop down, text color. Again, there's a there's a cleaner way, but we can't exactly use the same code because we're using text versus BG as the prefix, and we're using 700 versus 200. Um, so you know, again, I can I can make it cleaner, but yeah, status, drop down, text color, and. Uh, Throw this in there. Text 700. Again, a new one would just be like status drop down color. And we'd at least just get, we'd just get red, green, blue, yellow, you know, whatever. We could actually just do that. Okay, we could just do that. Status drop down color, pass in the package insert. We could even try it on this new one, status drop down color, package insert. Um, 700, we know this is gonna be text, like dash green, dash 700. Let's see if that works. Yellow, red, green, yeah, that worked. And then let's do the same thing up here. And we'll, here we'll do BG and 200. And now we can get rid of all this. So sometimes you have to just like write it the gross way to then kind of see an opportunity to improve it. And we'll see if this, we'll still see if this even works. Might have done it wrong. Oh yeah. This needs to go outside of the Ruby. And there's double closing. All right, there we go. Let's uh, let's approve another one. Now again, we really want better stuff here. We want to know like the title. Uh, I'd rather know the title. I'd like to have inline edit instead of clicking edit. Um, so let's add at least a couple more fields. Mm, first, we have to add the the title up here. Maybe we do. Submitted user title after user. Okay. Submitted user title. And then down here after the user email. Okay, that's better. Title. Um, and then images, it'd be nice to see the images, right? So let's grab this user one because it seems to have a different kind of format. And let's try to add a bunch of images in there. No idea how this will look. Package insert dot images. URL. And then we need one more column, of course. Title. We don't even have to give it a label. We just leave it blank, but we just need it so it creates the column. All right, right? Those are those are huge. <laughs> Image. Uh, I don't know. Width. 100%. And then width max. Okay, let's go back down to here and actually just use the same kind of thing reason for the other ones. I think the email one is a little bit different because uh, we wanted it to stretch long enough for the email. But let's just see what happens if instead. Yeah. 
email title. Might have screwed it all up. Okay, not as bad. Better, still huge. Div, let's make it flex and make each email a div in there. Here they're kind of getting smaller. Is there like a little hack? Max height. You know, something like that. Um, With, I don't know 300 pixels height 100 pixels we're just we're just messing around here okay this is not bad let's see the one with four images it's one image two images we had one with a few right I guess it might have been okay this one has yeah four images this is the one one two three four not amazing uh, but it's actually not not horrible and then let's do gap X 2 so that there's actually a little line between them no space let's see I forgot that. Uh, tailwind flex gap between yeah good gap for gap X 8 Oh, that's grid. What about flex? Uh, flex we want. Flex space space X four. I don't know. We really just need a quick preview of them so that we can do all of the administration from one view. I think that would be a lot nicer. Ah, and there actually is a gap between them but these other ones are bleeding over. Okay, so that's what's happening. Um, okay, for now let's just do like max height 80 on these images. Okay, cool. Yeah, I should've just done that to begin with. Some of these are bleeding over. Ah, uh, cause has a bunch of extra white space or something. Okay, it's not bad. Oh, th this is too tall, that's why. I see. Okay, now we're able to really see the whole thing that someone did. Obviously, I can make these click to blow up, but it's just not that important. And I'm even going to, um, yeah, edit. Hmm. It would still be nice to change typos though. So let's get that done. Let's remove this action item, last column that says action. Okay, and let's remove it down from here. Okay, gives ourselves a little more room. And then we're gonna add inline edit. So there's this thing, best in place, which is an awesome way to do inline editing. You'll see it, you just click and edit and then it's, it's done. Let's 
shut down our server, bundle. I'm gonna even open up a tiny bit of code I had from another project called Spacebot. And grab it. Grab the same way I did it here. Import JavaScript packs application data. Okay, we're done with our default code sh from Shuffle. Um, okay, where else do I need it? App JavaScript packs best in place. App JavaScript packs. Let's see. This is not exactly the same kind of code base, so. see best in place okay and lastly we need to load it on the page itself which is something like that which means we're just going to put it on this admin index page down here. Okay. Uh, let's see if that gets it loading. Okay. Now for the actual usage of it. Best in place as, okay. What this is going to do, uh, I already described sort of what it does practically. It lets you edit things in line. But what this does literally is it creates, like how we had to create this Ajax request down here to send up the status and we had to grab the drop down item that was selected and we had to whitelist it at the controller level. We had to do all that kind of manually. This will sort of spin up all of that for you, uh, which is nice. So let's try it here. Best in place, uh, then you pass in the thing you're modifying and then the title of it as an input, okay. Yeah, this is a lot, okay. We're gonna try with the title. Admin, package, inserts, path, ID, package insert, dot ID, all right, and Title, the attribute is title. There's no autocomplete kind of thing. I'm in package insert path. Yeah, there you go. Title. Oh, duh. Package insert dot title. Let's go back to the package insert docs. Ah, got it. Got it. Okay. Now, here, look at this. I should be able to click. That's in place, not a function. Okay. We're going to see if this makes it a function. And then this will, all the madness will make sense. Now look at that. New Wayfarers. Boom. That's sending a ping to our server. But our server. Um, package insert 16. Great. Okay, great. So now we need to admin package insert controller. Uh, we need to whitelist some more things. So let's whitelist title and brand and see if we can get that going. Admin package inserts controller. 
um, dash index admin. We're almost there. Best in place admin package insert path. Great. Okay. And then we want to actually load in that whole JavaScript thing. So we're just going to call it best in place. And we're going to grab it from here because it didn't load it from there. We're going to delete that unless this could work. Yeah, that's okay. We'll do it our way. Okay. And we want to load it before our other stuff. Render partial. Shared best in place. All right. Look at that. It would be fair. We hit enter. Admin package and search doesn't exist. That's because the route is Rails info routes package insert. Admin package inserts at slash admin slash package inserts. Huh. I am doing admin package insert path. Interesting. That's fine. Admin. Okay, let's see if that does the trick. Kill some tabs. Mm -hmm. Don't need this. Parentheses. I'm in package inserts. I see. It doesn't like that I'm using a, a nested route. It's trying to point to our, uh, here we go, look at this. It's trying to point to package inserts. We need it to be slash admin slash package inserts. So search the code, path, custom path. URL, maybe that's it. Admin package insert path ID. Yeah, our controller is ready to go. The code's loading. Um, it's just trying to point to a different place. Let's see what happens now. There we go. Look at that. Now we refresh and it worked. Wayfair for images, and it just worked. So it kind of reloads in line, and you're all done. Now let's add that to uh, brand. We need another brand drop down, and now this is going to be back to kind of easy mode. We just copy paste, change the word title to brand, and then we add a, a header up here. Let's grab the title one and change it to brand. And we wanted to expose these fields anyway. There we go. Title brand. There's no Ray Bans, right? Uh, reject it. It's gone. Go to rejected. I can always update things. Lastly, we probably just want to change the industry and the type. Industry, I'm noticing, is um, nice and gray down here. So let's go. Let's go down to that, and let's actually. Make them both the same gray for starters. Okay, I kind of prefer that. And then uh, we need to make it a drop down. We need to make a drop down. So, best in place, package insert. We're going to be changing the insert type. 
and we want it to be a drop down. So there's probably a way to do that. As as drop down. Okay, collection. Let's just see if this works. Um, path. Admin package insert path. Let's see if that. Um, I don't see it at all. Are we not using an equal sign? Package insert, insert type as drop down or as select maybe. There we go. Okay, cool. And uh, the type is, which one's this? Insert type, okay. So package insert. And see how like, it's so useful that we put all of our in, you know insert types here? Because now we can add all these later. We don't have to update anywhere else in the code. Okay, so type, boom, review request, right? But I want it to show what's already there. Okay, default, we'll have the default as what it should be. Let's say default testing, see if that did anything. Or label. Maybe over here. If we're not able to uh, to do this, then we might not want to add this feature because uh, obviously we want to be able to see what's going on. So let's go over to the docs here and search issues. Select. Oh, maybe we just do that value as a, what we want it to be. Nope. Hmm. This is a long time ago, but it's possible. Select drop downs. As select, we must select the collection and uh, as a hash where values represent the display text and keys are the options values. Label. Default HTML attributes. Okay, let's try it that way. I'm just trying, trying, trying. This is working and updating things. Well, it will be. Let's uh, admin package insert controller. We have to whitelist this, right? Industry and insert type. Now we can edit title brand status industry insert type. For now, I guess that's okay. We could make it so we can edit the user's email, but I don't know why we'd wanna do that unless we looked at it and it said gmail.net and we thought, okay, that might've been a mistake against something else. All right, we're really just wrestling with this. HTML adders. Default value. Okay, let's also make sure it's sending through brand building. Did it send through brand building or did it send through um, and did we have to do the path the getaway up there? How did we do path up here? How did we 
we do it in the title? URL, got it. Okay, URL. That's part of it. Okay, now let's see if it's even getting. Okay, updated it. Oh, did these not have types? I don't know. Because now we're getting stuff. Okay. Let's update this one to discount. Reload. And Wayfair for, okay, let's do 7th Wayfair uh, discount. Okay, and let's click to update it to discount. Reload, 7th Wayfair discount, yeah. Okay, maybe we weren't choosing. Okay, cool. And now uh, let's grab the same, the same thing we did here and set it for industry and then just swap out the word industry. Industry. And here we want to choose from our group of industries. It's kind of weird though. Value. Something's still funky, but uh, we're able to update it and it's working fine. Unless we weren't saving these before, which is also, no, we were saving these before. Did we somehow set these nil? Cancel placeholder. Ah, look at this. Otherwise, it will show me as that. Okay, let's try that. Place underscore holder. In uh, the Rails way of forms, it's just placeholder. There we go. Look at that. We can probably get rid of these HTML attributes and do the same thing here. And it's insert type. You just have to read the documentation and it all works out. <clears throat> okay, now we're seeing everything we wanted to see. We're not overwriting our stuff. Great. Accepting, rejecting, we can see images. Brand building, brand building. And we can uh, approve stuff. But you'll notice our background color, I guess, changed. It should be, it should be uh, yellow. And then up here should be BG yellow 200. We did that correctly. The problem is this is how Tailwind works. The way that Tailwind compiles in order with Rails, it's uh, it's screwing up our ability to have a cool background, um, or it's a, it's screwing up our ability to merge in a background color dynamically. The way we were doing it in our application helper, I've run into this before. So our code should work, and I actually commented on this and uh, DHH and the other people involved in uh, Tailwind and Rails said they're not gonna change it, so what are you gonna do? All right, I think our, our app is done. We, uh, we don't have the pagination yet. We don't need any pagination yet. Um, I'm gonna actually just comment out this section because it, it looks good. It'll be useful later, but for now, you know, we don't need it. And we can sort. Only admins can can change stuff. Mm, I'm pretty pretty satisfied with it. And even our admin panel, we don't need all this stuff on the bottom. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and make. We could make another. We could make another uh, layout that's only for admins. But then we have a lot of copy paste code, so what's the point, you know? All I'm gonna do when I'm not on the webcam or when I'm not on the screen share is update these environment variables. If I update them now, you'll see my Amazon Web Services API key, which we don't want. Um, I can also obviously get this deployed to Heroku if that would be interesting to you guys and make this feel more like a full, um, a full end-to-end -end project. I'll create an app and I'll transfer the username over to, uh, here we go, over to get reviews. Yeah, great. And uh, insert booth. 
See if this works without Git itself. Might not, probably have to have a master branch. Let's see. Let's see if this deploys. The images won't upload until, again, until I go into here and uh, add new uh, environment keys, uh, map them over. Figaro has a cool tool to do that. Figaro, something like Figaro. Yeah, Figaro Heroku set. I can actually give it the development keys um, because I don't have production keys yet. But if I hit this, <laughs> even this will print out those keys and then you guys will be able to see it and then I'll be mad at myself. So um, actually I can do that and then just try to not come back to that tab. Let's try to do that. Okay. And then I'm gonna try to close the tab. <laughs> okay. And they're now in there. <laughs> Let's give it a, a dyno when it finishes deploying. Seven dollar dyno. Looks like we need to modify our proc file to uh, make sure it's, uh, this is space bot, these rails to be migrate, okay. Okay. Ah, yeah, it's only pushing our latest thing from, uh, from Git. So I need to add everything to Git. I'll say this is the live stream commit. And then repush. See what happens. Done with those docs. What we see here is what I had at speed rail. Does anybody have any questions? You can also ask questions as comments and I will uh, reply to your comments days, weeks, months, years from now. I check YouTube and I'll see your comments and I'll get back to you. Uh, what I need to do next, that's more business logic, is just to determine more industries um, so that we have more than four or five drop downs. And whenever we add a new industry, that adds you know several more uh, pages, right? Because we've programmatically generated all the combinations of industries and uh, insert types. See if it's deploying the new one, it is. What is the domain? The domain is going to be insertbooth.com. Uh, to, to hook that up, I'm literally just gonna go over here and, uh, and add a domain. And then this is gonna give me something I can paste into DNS. And, uh, and then it's gonna be at insertbooth.com. Thought I had it right there. Might be another login. Let's see what else we got. What's the app for? <laughs> kind of late to join, but this is a microsite. We're trying to uh, help people, help DTC e-commerce brands who are looking for package insert inspiration. They want to request reviews or offer discounts or whatever. We're going to be aggregating those inserts. And then when they come to our site, they can optionally start using our core platform, which is getreviews.ai and they can um, you know, use that insert or redesign that insert in our app. Sure, the admin is, um, is a field. If I look at our database schema, this is something I added with the basic users table, just admin, true, false. We did not build that today. That was literally just a database migration I set up in the template we used called SpeedRail, which is free on my, on my GitHub. And then I just set it admin true. And then when you look at routes, uh, because we have this proc here, those routes of like slash admin slash dashboard, they only even are recognized as existing if someone is uh, an admin true. So that's why when I made the account, we were struggling to figure out why we couldn't find our admin panel. It's because I added this. 
Uh, you can add this in different ways. You can let anyone try to go to slash admin and then just redirect them if they're not admin. But by doing it at this level, you're a little bit closer to the metal and they get sort of not even redirected. It's like, hey, this doesn't even exist. So they'll never even know that it's there. Tweeted about building sites. Uh, you tweeted about building sites and the thought of transferring them when sold. Do you do anything specific and different with that in mind? Mm. Well, I definitely keep everything on separate accounts. So if we needed to upload images, you know, and it was a site I'm giving away, I'd make a whole new AWS account. I would make maybe, you know, a few new different logins and accounts just to keep it clean. Otherwise, I don't do too much differently. Um, I try to make everything bundled and packaged up for the new owner. And just transfer the files, transfer the code. Maybe I would write more comments in there. Uh, or maybe I would not write tests. When I'm doing something and I want it to work in my sleep and then there's payments, I would write tests. But I've found from previous experiences that writing tests on live streams is not very fun. There's a certain type of people who love testing and those people just go watch testing videos. They don't watch build videos. And I think the same is true the other way around. What's your strategy to get your first users? For this great question, for this project, um, I can't say we don't have a strategy. But what I'll say is this is supposed to be an inbound project. So of course I'll write about it. I'll get it a few backlinks to kind of kickstart it. I'll set up Google search console, make sure we have a sitemap and everything like that. But this project needs to stand on its own. I'm not going to try to drive traffic to this manually, you know, week over week. This project uh, is designed to, you know, to rank on Google. And if it doesn't, then, you know, then it's a fail. And that's why we're building it in one day and giving it a week or two, you know, and see how it goes. Do you miss doing these live streams mm, considering your pop career? Yeah, I miss it. Uh, today was, has been rough. You've been here, I think, several hours or almost all the time. I had some technical difficulties figuring out my mic to make it left and right speaker, figuring out my monitor so it, you guys could see it. I think I went five or 10 minutes not showing uh, my screen. So I've had several issues and now it looks like our server is, is hanging. It's not uploading at all. So possibly the server thing, um, adding, adding this to Heroku is, you know, maybe not necessary. Um, I'm actually gonna remove the git file, make a new one. And because uh, I don't want to override my my speed rail code. Let's go back to speed rail, make sure I didn't already override it. Uh oh, <laughs> I completely overrode speed rail. That's fine. Let's uh, let's go fix that. But I think we're, we're really we're done. Uh, if Heroku is deciding not to, to, to push my stuff right now, then, you know, that's not really related to, to the live stream per se. Heroku, get remote add insert booth, get branch. Device backup. All right, we're going to try to get force push this. <laughs> and now we've kind of gone back. Great. So now we've overridden that mistake I made and it's gone from there. Um, the app, git branch, git log, git push Heroku master. If it doesn't push this time, then you know, no big deal. The page is still titled speed rail, not enter booth. Yes, that is because these environment variables, if I were to show you, uh, let's actually just look at the ones in app and not the ones in app asset. Jeez, just trying to show you something simple. Assets. Okay. If you look at these environment variables, uh, company name is defaulted to speed rail. 
And that find and replace app we used earlier to rename the app, unfortunately does not go into these hidden files. I've tried to modify it a little bit, and that's why if you use SpeedRail, you'll see that the rename gem is pointing to my own modified version, um, but it doesn't go in there. So you actually need to go ahead and open up this file under config and then application.yaml, but that has all of my AWS credentials. So I'm just waiting to end the live stream and then I will change everything. Those last couple things that say speed rail, I'll change them to insert booth. All right, we've attempted to deploy. <laughs> Our styles are not, are not playing nice with us. That is okay. I'm gonna get this wrapped up on the, the production side, uh, but we're just using Heroku, which is super plug and play. There's really no server configuration. You just do what I did. You hit make a new app and uh, you deploy the app and then you need to make sure you have a cheap $7, uh, what they call dyno, sort of like a little bit of uh, server power. And, uh, and then you're up and running. Uh, again, I'll go through Cloudflare and I'll paste in this DNS target as my C name and then it'll be live at insertbooth.com either in a few hours or maybe tomorrow. I think I'm gonna take a break after this stream, recover my voice, have, have some dinner. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks especially for those who stuck with me through the technical difficulties. I'm gonna be doing a few more live streams uh, in the next couple months. I have a lot of new projects to build. They're all very, very different from JavaScript widgets to uh, marketplaces, to white labeled apps that you can put on your own domain, sort of like, uh, you know, an app you'd use to, uh, you know, geez, Shopify, that, that kind of style. We're gonna have all that coming. It's all gonna be here on the channel. Yeah, thank you all again. Later.